Hello, 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 hello. How are we, chat? Oh yeah, you're never supposed to see this. That's back end shit. You're not supposed to see that. That's behind the curtains, chat. <laughs> You're not supposed to see those things. Show back end. Chat's always asking me to show the back end. <laughs> um Welcome everyone. Happy Monday to you. We have a big art show today. Mucho's great. He's been fun today. We had a really nice little chill moment pre-stream where uh, he really, he wanted to hang out. He let me know. He's like, I, I really just want to hang out right now. <laughs> and I said, okay, all right, let's just hang out. I will enjoy you. Uh, basically, right from like waking up today, I'm just checking my phone. I see Russell Westbrook is going to the Clippers and Mucho won't have it. He just knocks his head against my phone. He knows what my phone is, I think. I think he has a pretty good impression about how destructive cell phones are. And so when he sees me in bed reading my cell phone, he just kind of like... Obviously, he loves to nuzzle his face against objects, but I think at the on the other side of that, he also doesn't like me on it, you know? Do I have to wait till Halloween to show my Spider-Man costume, or can it be art? Mm, when we play a Spider-Man game, it could be art. I think today it would be irrelevant, so you'd have to wait. Happy birthday, learned fingers. Now, if you're wearing a Spider-Man costume and you're, like, kicking a chair in the photograph, that we would consider video game art and would be allowed in the art show. You ever watch the anime Sunny Boy? <laughs> I got mucho hairs flying all over. I just watched it for the first time, and I think it's something you'd appreciate. I've never heard of Sunny Boy before. It doesn't sound like something I would watch. 
Are you still in on the Clippers winning the chip now? More than ever. Westbrook is the missing piece. Bossy's bog now in 86th place. Uh, you can't look at those returns too much, uh, obviously, because um, a lot of teams don't have one game that has a review yet. But uh, 3.5 points is pretty good, chat. I got Atomic Heart, and you might recall many at the time were like, big mistake. It's coming to Game Pass, so obviously it's going to be mid-80s at least. It's like, okay, all right. Big Turkey, thanks for being a 27-monther. Hey, Kyle, are we getting a remake for demo? No, I guess not. It's coming out soon, right? Am I surprised to see it review well? Chat? Chat? We need a reality check here. Hi-Fi Rush reviewed well. Atomic Heart is reviewing poorly. Can I get a cookies and cream for counterpicking you on Atomic Heart? No, it's reviewing poorly. Thank you for the 100 bits. Oh my God. Get a grip, chat. In what, in what world is 74 a good open critic score? Get in touch with yourselves. Oh my God. You should be ashamed that you counterpicked that. <laughs> Look at that face. 57% of critics recommend. Seems pretty good to me, says chat. IGN gave it an 8. <laughs> Fine. Scoring higher than Blanc for Spoken and SpongeBob. Uh, I think this might dip. I think it might dip throughout the day, but uh, chat, it's not a bad pickup for the Toxic League. In fact, I'm going to go on and say it's still a good pickup. It's not, um, shit, Wanted Dead which got a 61. Obviously, if you picked up Wanted Dead, you picked up the best possible game this season. Um, but uh, yeah, this is the kind of shit you're looking for in the Toxic League. It's going to get worse, chat. Do I trade much in the EZA League? No, I don't think we'll be doing any trades. Did you watch the TCM Dick Tracy special where Dick Tracy portrayed by Warren Beatty interviews Warren Beatty about the 1990 Dick Tracy... Film Dick Tracy directed by Warren Beatty and starring Warren Beatty as Dick Tracy. No, but I was reading about it on Reddit. Apparently he puts up Dick Tracy's specials like once every 10 years so that he, Warren Beatty, can retain the rights to Dick Tracy. Some sort of weird contract thing as long as he like makes a TV special and they air it at like 4 a.m. He tries to bury it. He doesn't want people to watch the TV specials, but he's just doing everything he can to retain the rights. Wanted's now at 59.8. Yeah, that's obviously the best possible pickup of the season so far. Early season, chat. No, this game did not review well. If you're stoked about the 74 for Atomic Heart, I won't hear it. I won't hear it. I have no patience for that. There were some subs before you came online. All right, let's check those out. Oh, a bunch. Yeah, Mr. And Mrs. Wilson, thanks for being a seven-monther. Skip Sandwich, thanks for being a 32-monther. FYI, the e-reader levels aren't very good. They're like proto Mario Maker levels. Thanks for the streams. <laughs> That's funny. I saw um, a YouTube comment say that they're super good, and what's interesting about them is that they add power-ups from before and after Mario 3 to Mario 3, which I think is kind of cool. Uh, Bam Bam, thanks for getting that sub. Big Turkey. Oh, yeah, we talked about that. The Remake 4 demo. Which I just don't think is happening. Sorry, talking about Resident Evil 4. Uh, because Resident Evil 4 comes out so soon. And then Ty, thanks for being a 12-monther. Uh, congrats on the year. 
Excited to start my personal Legend of Dragoon Platinum Bells journey tomorrow. Winglies! <laughs> Shabello, thanks for gifting three gift subs. I actually don't remember what the Winglies voice is. I have to imagine it's like the teacher from Fairly Odd Parents saying fairies. But I do think there's a different accent put on it. Demo drops Thursday. It'd be cool if there's a if there's like a PlayStation state of play. And they do a little uh demo out today. Revolver Ethan, thanks for being a two monther. I love a two monther. Did a PSVR get pre ordered? Not in this house. What are you doing back there? Get out, get out. He's in a mood. He's in a mood right now. He gave me the eyes. He gave me the what are you going to do about it eyes. Um, no, I feel like uh, oh there he is. I feel like there's a <laughs> That fucking cat. Uh, I feel like there's a good chance I order a PSVR 2. I talked myself out of it on last week's delayed input, but I feel like I, I haven't quite uh, shoved the boulder in front of the cave's entrance, you know? Oh, yeah, I'm not going to look at the uh, Tears of the Kingdom leaks. That's just crazy. You'd be wild, too. An art book leaked. You know? Like, what? That would be... What a wild thing to for that to be your first exposure to any of those things. Would I try to figure out the stream setup for it? That I can almost guarantee would not happen. I do not like streaming VR. Just as we were talking about during the uh, emote contest, we had an emote contest on Saturday, uh, which is why you see in chat the uh, Red Eyes Mucho uh, from Tatris. That's our new follower emote. All you got to do is follow if you want that emote. Um... I hate emo only chat. You know what I mean? I get nothing back from it. And so VR is even worse. I get nothing back. And so it really is just me isolated. No feedback. No technical feedback, but also like no vibes feedback. It's uh it's very isolating. It's a very weird feeling. I don't like it. The e-reader levels for Mario 3, I think I'm gonna do Switch Online Plus, but I'm still I haven't initiated either plan. Speaking of stream setup, go ahead and confirm you didn't touch the link to the past thing yet for me. Woojack, Sunday is my day off. <laughs> I didn't touch it on Sunday. Sunday's my day off I also work on. I also do my Patreon posts every Sunday. I'm not going to touch a, touch a link to the past. How would one follow? I presume it's just right there on the Twitch page. You said you would maybe do it Sunday, but I knew you wouldn't. Yeah, I, I in fact did not do it Sunday. Your hair is still pink. Does that mean it's staying? Um, it will become lighter and lighter shades of pink uh, until it grows out and gets chopped off the top. At this point, uh, that's the color. It'll, it'll become like blonder and blonder. It'll never be full blonde. It'll be like blonde pink. Uh, but my roots are already growing in. It's going to be a very weird thing. It's going to be the, the half and half is what I'm most worried about. I kind of like it now, but the half and half is going to be a situation. What if we do Elder Ring situation where you show us clips? Clips of VR isn't that fun. Well, you want to see somebody, you want to see their expressions and you want to see them react. I get why you would want to watch me streaming. I'm saying from my end, I don't like doing it. There's some really cool setups where uh, VR VR clips can look like AR. You ever watch somebody play Beat Saber and they're like, welcome to my digital realm. And for, so they have like a camera over their shoulder. That stuff's crazy.
Your what? Pardon me. Welcome to my world. You know what? Now we gotta do a VR stream. <laughs> Clips of VR can cause a lot of motion sickness for people. As I was watching trailers this week, I hate like uh, a lot of VR footage comes off like a little cocked. You know what I mean? It's always like a little sideways. And like, I guess in that person's mind, it looks right. But like watching the video footage of someone walk just slightly crooked is so weird. I, I, you're right. You want to watch, you basically, you want to see the person with their headset on. It's not that fun to watch their video feed. But like, uh, we had some fun, um, easy allies VR streams, no doubt. Group VR streams are fine, right? You don't have that isolation. You know that there's somebody checking chat at all times. You know, you know what I mean? You're, you you're in contact with other people at all times. Those are all right. If you had VR, would you VR chat? No, no. I have RL and I don't RL chat. <laughs> There's not enough room in my office for VR. No, 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 no. When I talk about rotating the couch, it's because I'm like actually thinking functionally, if I buy VR, how do I set it up? And uh, it'd have to be in my living room. There's not enough space here. You wonder if there's some chat software that'll read chat for you? Yeah, no, I hear that chat. I see a PC, PC VR has like, you can still see the chat inside your headset as you play. Not for me. Not for me. Few games require standing. The standing is shit is what is my favorite thing. Just being able to elevate yourself so easily i think that's that's my favorite shit being able to duck take a knee a literal taking a literal knee is pretty nice in vr crawling over chipotle counters hell yeah the actual fantasy Do I think they'll make a new aim controller for VR too? No, I think they might, we might be fully past that. I feel like the aim controller was a holdover from PlayStation Move, which is obviously ins directly inspired by the Wii Zapper, right? So I feel like there's no chance at them creating a controller that you can s snap the two controllers that they already created into. It'd have to be its own separate controller, right? It, you wouldn't be able to just be like, Ch -ch 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 -ch. confused shy guy. Thanks for being a 31 monther. Will we open a market for docket bets? Or are we suggesting at random? I want to double down on the family guy game bet. Uh, basically, I realize the best bets come where I disagree with chat on something big time. Chat's wrong about some dumb shit as usual. And I take that moment to say, you're wrong about this chat. Obviously there won't be Pokemon in the initial release of Game Boy games on the Nintendo Switch. And then I get to reap the benefits. Obviously it goes the other way occasionally, but... It's only fun if it's something that we're really disagreeing with. You know what I mean? If it's just some goofy, like, uh, no real stakes or situation there, um, not a big deal. Not a fun bet. Do you see yourself using the cinematic mode and playing non-VR titles on headset? Because that sounds awesome. I remember trying that in PSVR. It's actually not that cool. <laughs> Basically, the idea is like 
there's a giant screen in front of you that stays in place. And so it's it's like you're in a it's like transforming your uh living room into a movie theater, but uh it's not worth wearing the headset for, you know. Did I see the prize pool for the Street Fighter 6 next Capcom Cup? Yes, I got to watch the finals of the uh the Capcom Cup. And then yeah, Street Fighter 6 prize pool is 2 million dollars. The winner of Capcom Cup 2024 will receive 1 million dollars alone. The best Street Fighter 6 player in the world will be a millionaire. That's fun. That's fun. That's simply fun. Happy about it. Growing a beard for six months is a big investment. I would have to lose a big bet. Ugh, Luke winning? I won't hear it, Tatris. I won't hear it. Tatris, why don't you have the, uh, the little paintbrush? Lennington, thanks for being a two-monther. I won't hear it. Mena RD is playing out of his damn mind. I simply won't hear it. And he also did play birdie in the same tournament. Birdie when necessary. You know he kills with birdie too. It doesn't let me select it. Huh. All right. Weird. Sounds like a bet. Will Luke win? That's not a bet, chat. You don't care. Nobody can guess who's going to win Street Fighter 6. We haven't seen half the characters like actual gameplay from them. Not a bet yet. A bet is when you and I disagree. The PSVR 2 has OLED 120 hertz screens and is way lighter. Are you Mark Cerny? Do you think that would make it better for you? No. <laughs> You're still wearing a headset to watch TV. I wouldn't do it. Seventy four is a good score. Open T bets. Oh my god. Now, all right, chat, 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 chat. Okay, here's where I need to be though. Here's where I need to be. If I developed a game that got a seventy four on Open Critic, I would not be upset. That is true. You know what I mean? In some ways, seventy four is pretty good. But I feel like, for the sake of like, aha. Don't you feel a fool? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> Atomic Heart did not review well, is what I would say. Will I ever do something like that chat fighting tournament stream again? Remind me what that was. I don't recall it. We have tournaments every week. <laughs> We're having another one Saturday. What's, what was the fighting tournament stream? Zangief winning the million would be so cool. Oh, that's funny. That's, uh, okay, chat. This is pre-baseball. Pre-baseball, we had, we did Smash Bros. We did Tekken and we did Street Fighter. And that's what we used to gamble on. Yeah. That's really what we used to gamble on. And then, um, Virtua Fighter. We we're going to gamble on Virtual Fighter. It didn't work out. And I said, hold on. I got an idea. I think I know what we can gamble on. We gambled on baseball that night. And uh, baseball became my new hot shit. I much prefer that. <laughs> it's not easy to do tournaments in that structure. I don't think any of those were tournaments. It was just us like betting on who would win. Uh, winner stays on, basically, is how those would work. Been a while since the Soulsborne fights. Yeah, we're not doing it in Elden Ring. It's annoying. And I already deleted Demon Souls. I'm good. I'm good. Until until it's convenient. Until it's as convenient as just setting it up and letting it rip. Hell yeah. Uh, the PvP arenas do not make uh, watching two people from chat, two random people from chat, compete 
easier in Elden Ring. It's still like a lot of like, what I hate the most is like a lot of like, okay, everybody be on your best behavior here. Don't kill that person. You know what I mean? There's a little bit of that. There's like, don't start until the bets are completed, you know? So like, they're not built to accommodate that shit. And uh, that's why I like the other stuff better. But Street Fighter 6, when it's the new hot hotness, yeah, we'll probably do some gambling on it. You honestly think PvP and Elden Ring works the same as Demon Souls? Uh, the big difference was Demon Souls, you could fill so many people in. So we could have me, two people, and three people. Uh three blues three reds basically it was nice so you could you could have like a longer queue in demon souls which helped out a lot with that today happens to be the 10th anniversary of the playstation meeting where sony revealed the ps4 and deep down <laughs> thoughts i feel like that's incredibly pointed that you had a deep down onto that tiebreaker um I would love to watch that again. Should we do that today? Maybe after Digimon. Maybe we watch the uh, PlayStation meeting. It would not be a live reaction. I've seen all of that before. <laughs> yeah. It wouldn't quite be live. Uh, but uh, yeah, I think that would be kind of a fun thing to watch. All right, but let's let's play our games first. Let's do art show and uh, act surprised. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because I did not remember that Deep Down was one of it. And I do remember being underwhelmed. I remember being let down by the release of the, the, uh, the announcement of the PlayStation 4. Uh, because uh, it, was, it was a pretty, like ham-fisted presentation particularly thinking about the infamous guy so uh yeah that might be fun to go back and look at it was like b minus and then xbox one was revealed yeah i think that's what happened i feel like after xbox one was revealed it's like oh PlayStation 4 is cool. <laughs> but really, I feel like... We'll have to see. We'll have to see. We'll have to see. I feel like Powers is mentioned in the PS4 reveal. I feel like PlayStation Studios and Powers is mentioned then. It might be an E3 announcement. But um, yeah, there's. I feel like there's a lot of BS during the PlayStation 4 thing too. Powers the TV series. God, it's so funny. It's so funny. They like, they're f finally getting it right. They're finally there with, uh, uh, Last of Us. Uncharted made money. Uncharted is a successful movie, but, uh, they're like, I feel like they're like finally like, Gosh, this might be a whole delayed input episode. Maybe maybe I should wait till Last of Us is done and then we can just like talk about it, dude. But like pretty impressive adaptation. Yeah, we should wait till it's done. Let it cook. Yeah, and you know what? They might botch it. The last episode might be a twist. That might be something entirely different from how The Last of Us game ends. Remember when everybody was like, that's not what I would do. I wish I could have made the decision. Uh, I, I wonder if it's like, okay, everybody, here's what happens if they did made the decision that you wanted him to make, Brandon Jones. Here's the Brandon Jones ending of Last of Us. Let's see how this plays out. We'll see how this goes. Here, here. You thought this was the way the narrative was going? Here, here it is. You happy? 
You oh you do, you like this. Okay. Bill Cobb, thanks for being a two-monther. <laughs> Love a two-monther. Missed the emote contest live, but thankful my banned emote won a few rounds. Hell yeah. Beef crumpets, thanks for being a 13-monther. Did Jones not like the ending? I feel like that was uncalled for because I cannot confirm whether or not Jones liked the ending or not, but I can easily see him being one of those people I had a conversation with. Who was like, the ending of Last of Us is bad because I didn't get to make the decision. I wouldn't have done that. <laughs> All right. Jones would, yeah, I know. We got to call up Jones. We got to call him up. We got to call him up. I had no patience for that conversation at the time. I couldn't deal with it, dude. I could, I just couldn't. <laughs> that was Isla's issue? Oh my god. Oh my god. Isla and Naughty Dog, I can't hear it. I've got no patience. <laughs> Makapi, thanks for being a 27 monther. Those are a little, they so, those seem small to me today. Let's jack them up a little bit. And bring you back down here. It was each Last of Us Hall of Greats presentation, and she brought it up every time. Oh, man. Oh, man. Okay. Here we go. Let's let the art show begin. Ah, chat, it's good to see you. Today, you finally begin your adventure as a Pokemon trainer. Before you leave, however, you will need to choose your very first Pokemon. I caught these three myself this morning. Take a pick. Easy, easy choice. Oh, I, my apologies, chat. I forgot that Pokemon was banned under the Kyle Act. Well, still, you have two other fine Pokemon to choose from. It's time to be choose and begin your Pokemon adventure. Did you hack it or animate over it? The text matches. I feel like you hacked it. Yeah, Bidoof is not banned. Uh, I forget which one was in the middle. It was a banned Pokemon. I created it using Pokemon Essentials. What is that? We got to talk about this. What is po Is it like an easily moddable Pokemon ROM? I love the emote contest. Getting knocked out by that dumb whisk cash face in round one was the funniest thing that happened to me all week. <laughs> That's what I promised, right? I promised. I I was like, chat, you the you will get destroyed by things you would never predict. <laughs> It's an RPG Maker tool set to make Pokemon games. That is really cool. Yeah, we got to stream that. All right, we got another draw pile. Obviously, I love that. We did we did sell Patamon's shield for 11k last week. Draw pile session with Play Gundam Evolution, LKB, Eskaden. Eye on what? Learned Fingers, Mediocre Apple, Woojack, and EGP Noodles. That might be the most people ever in one of these, right? Ooh, I like that a lot. Yeah, that's good shit. <laughs> yep. Yep, this is nice. Probably that Biomon stands out to me the most. I love Biomon a lot. Pretty sick. No, I, what stands out to me the most is, is this great mod. Let's be real. That's the good shit. You sure we're not lost, Beat? Fuck, I don't even know anymore. I miss my daddy's tacos. 
We both miss your daddy's tacos. I love your daddy's tacos. It's just not the Laser Choppers World Tournament without your daddy's tacos. No, come on. It's probably this w Oh, man. Really? Did I just stuff in anime style shit? Wow, wow, boys. Looks like we got a couple of outsiders. Welcome to the digital world, Chekofax. <laughs> Very good, Eskadan. And then look at all those little pink shits. <laughs> Wujak, thanks for gifting that sub. I love that look. On Guillemon. Holy shit. The dub cigarette. Yeah, that's really good shit. Just give him a knife. Just put a knife in his hand. Five years from now, by Learned Fingers. Name yourself! I got a delivery. Open up. Hurry up. Holy shit. I think that's Silver Tingle. What are you waiting for? Open it! Don't you know who that is? He made it. That idiot. Garth Spader. Don't call me that. I'm Silver Tingle. <laughs> Chapter one end. All right, chat. You might need some context. Actually, this is going to be good because we got a lot of art for the commune this week. So... We were just hypothesizing last week about the commune, the post-apocalyptic commune, and my role there, and how the reason I'm allowed into the commune is that there's a former patron of Easy Allies who recognizes me and Huber and says, I can vouch for them. They're good people. Uh, but like before that point, I was going by Silver Tingle. Um, my post-apocalyptic name was Silver Tingle. Um, but then I got recognized and then had to be Kyle Bossman again. Michael Huber is Michael Huber. Also, you should know that Huber on the commune is a hunter class. He's sent out to hunt. One day he came back with a mutant, uh, a mindless mutant named Zigzag. <laughs> and everyone begged Huber not to bring Zigzag in. <laughs> But Huber thinks that we can fix Zigzag. He's certain we can fix Zigzag. You told Huber about Zigzag? <laughs> Did Huber like the bit or was he offended? I was worried that like without proper context, he'd be offended about the bit. Gosh, it's so crazy. So I was thinking about I was thinking about this bit like all week long. I was thinking about it as a pilot, right? So, like, the post-apocalyptic commune um, is a really good, like, half-hour comedy. He said something like he'd have to ask you about it. That means he chat. That means he was offended and you did not explain it well. If, he's, if that's what he said, I'll have to ask Kyle about it. That means he's offended. We messed up. Um, all right. So... It's like a it's like a situational comedy, right? It's there's no drama. It's just understood life sucks on the post apocalyptic commune. You know what I mean? There are mutants. We barely he was smiling when he said it. I don't know. I don't know. I've seen Hubert smile through the worst of times. <laughs> um anyway, so like every episode people are just like they just talk like they do. You you know, they're just living life on this horrible 
commune where you're scrambling to survive and if there's not enough food you have to kick someone out and they just die um like huber finding zigzag happens in the pilot episode it happens in episode one and like it, it's a nice it just kind of depicts his character and also the threat of the mutants it really depicts that well too uh and then like the hapless my hapless character uh who has to tell stories at the campfire because he doesn't have any other skills he also has to take care of zigzag uh begrudgingly right he would happily kill zigzag uh but at the very end of the pilot episode uh zigzag this mindless mutant sings at the very like the very last thing is like kyle's gotta like he's gotta go like take a bucket of slosh to like clean zigzag and zigzag goes like <laughs> and then of course kyle says shit cut to black because now like now it's like what is this if zigzag the mutant can sing what does that mean about all the other mutants we've been slaughtering what does that mean and it means it means now i actually have to take care of zigzag who i was ready to knife you know so now it's like this whole situational comedy where you got to take care of Zigzag. Zigzag learns to become a good singer every episode. Eventually, by the end of season one, Zigzag's a great singer. But also, it's really conflicting, like... The whole commune's... Like, the commune starts to split pro-mutant, anti-mutant, you know? This should be a delayed input in between her. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we should do the pilot, the backdoor pilot. Zigzag is not cute. You'll see. You'll see. Zigzag is not cute. Um. Anyway, we got off track. I can't stop thinking about Zigzag, honestly. So this is an example of something that is disqualified. Now, this is a amalgamation of the eight Pokemon who are on the block list. I wouldn't say they are portrayed favorably here. Except for this heart. If it weren't for that little heart, Blepisaur would be fine. However, you included the heart, which to me makes it a favorable piece. This is disqualified. You can't do shit like this. You can't. Disqualified. I don't want to see it. Oh, this is funny. You know what they all said. I was like looking for the subtitle, but we all know they said say the line. Or say it. Uh, I think they say say it. Grenade! It's say the line Bart is what the line is. Okay, good shit. A meme repurposed by Mary McFrumples. This happened. At only one crash, though. It was only one crash, but it happened mid-grenade explosion. Based on a true story. <laughs> I like this one for its size. Here we see Red Eyes Mucho atop the Joker. Victor of the emote tournament. Like, 74 is, chat, 74 is closer to 61 than it is to a game that has reviewed well. Oh, we're here at this part of the show. Here are our Twitch events for the week. Sorry, here are our Discord events for the week. Uh, these are events happening on the Robot Party Discord. You can see the link to the Discord in chat. Uh, the Art Club meets 2 to 4 p.m. Eastern every Tuesday. Not a good time for you? Let us know in Art Club work on stuff, seek and share guidance, and talk about art. All are welcome. Meanwhile, the Digimon Card Club Beginner's Night is a special Digimon Card Club night. Um, 
It'll be February 23rd, 10 p.m. to 12 a.m. in the Robot Party Discord. Play the Digimon TCG on Tabletop Simulator. Use custom decks designed for learning and get a look at the new stuff in BT11. Um, that means the new card set. The card sets are all called BTs. And uh, it's beginner's night this week. Official allies to the Twitch streamer known as Kyle Bossman. These two Pokemon, as much as I tried, were ultimately not block listed. So this kind of thing, with their little heart in the middle, look, note the heart, is unfortunately permitted. You're allowed to do that. Yeah, I would have really loved to block these two. I really would have loved to. The wheel has spoken. Yeah. This is a nice piece. This is karaoke night from Wanted Dead. Wanted Dead doesn't get enough credit for its karaoke. Uh, maybe one of the most reali realistic karaoke scenes I've seen depicted in a video game. Uh, Jupiter of the Moti, thanks for being a 20-monther. Double decade anniversary! <laughs> Um, and that, uh, you know, it was sloppy and fun. It was a sloppy, fun performance of a song. Um, whereas I feel like even in Yakuza, they're just kind of crushing it the whole time. And I have seen that, um, at a karaoke experience before too. And it's not very fun. I don't like to see somebody singing karaoke well. It means they've done this too much, you know? Somebody walking up like, okay, here I go. I'm doing the song I always do. Uh, okay. <laughs> All right. Hey, so I noticed you guys weren't giving Zigzag his portions. <laughs> Not enough time to polish these. Apologies, Rachel, a.k.a. LKB. It's a good take on, on Zigzag. Yeah, that was a line from Huber last week. I noticed you guys weren't giving Zigzag his portions. <laughs> I was like, yeah, Huber, we don't give portions to mutants. <laughs> oh, it's good shit. But the thing is, like, Huber is not in control over his own portions. Hu because he is hunter class, Huber is fed his milky cheesy soup. Uh, he doesn't, like, he doesn't get the option, like, because if he could, Huber would not, he would give his portions to someone else. He would give half his bowl to someone else, you know what I mean? He wouldn't eat his full portions. So, for Huber, it has to be mandated. They have to, they have to, he has to sit there and accept all of his soup from the matron. <laughs> This family is our fortress. Polly stick together. <laughs> Avatar, the why of water. Jocko, this is great. Um, This thing in the lower right-hand corner, I don't fully comprehend. I think it's a cross between Genesect and um, Diggersby. Oh, I see the Whale Lords now. Now that we've zoomed in, I can see the Whale Lords as well. As well as the wheel, of course, which must be abided by. Um, but yeah, all of this is indeed permitted. Polyrath survived the wheel and was not added to the block list. So unfortunately, that is cool. This is permitted. This is great from Big Frog. This is our main character to Digimon World 3. And our little, uh, I forget what they call it. Our Navi. I forget what they call him. Diggersby and the Crab Mechs are an amazing Avatar sequel by James Cameron. Okay, so if I, if, if I had appreciated the mech design of Avatar more, that correlation would be stronger. I get it. <laughs> yeah, that's nice.
<laughs> Mr. Brownie, this is really good. So I spent a lot of time in the claw machine in Wanted Dead. A lot of time. A lot of time. We did even pick up a cat, but of course this cat is Red Eyes Mucho. <laughs> Yeah, that's really nice. <laughs> uh, <laughs> just Tommy Pickles saying, oh, bro, I got to take a piss. <laughs> Days of Future Podcast. This really, bro, this really gets me. You need context? All right, I'll give it to you. I feel like this is good without context. Uh, I use this joke a lot. Um, I was talking about in a stream, a Tetris stream from the game trailers days, sorry, Easy Allies days, where I said whiz instead of piss. And chat's like, why? Piss isn't even a bad word. And I'm like, yeah, you're right. I mean, they say piss on Rugrats. Um... So this is them saying piss on Rugrats. But for sure I use like they swear on Rugrats. I've I've certain I've used that word with that joke like 10 times. It's one of my faves because I do indeed love to imagine what you're looking at right in front of you. You said piss is a swear word. It is. You can't say piss on Rugrats. You can't, chat. <laughs> Try as you might, you can't say piss on Rugrats. <laughs> Didn't Doug say bastard? Oh, that might have been the joke I did, that Doug said bastard. Similar thing, we're discussing whether or not bastard is a swear word. And I'm like, well, they said it on Doug. Uh, Trooper, this is great. This this is as well permitted. We see uh, Illumise, who has just forced Volbeat to eat shit. <laughs> that's the other funny thing is he's saying oh man I gotta take a piss he's wearing a diaper <laughs> he's got a diaper on this is nice this is an um minimalistic rendition of our current party of Guillemon, uh, Kumamon, and Patamon. And I like that Guillemon we have min maxed for speed, so you added little speed lines. That's nice. That's nice. Two thousand three. Love this shit from AFB. Now we are playing the two thousand two version of the game. So we will never become this champion. I gotta know what's being referenced here. It does feel like a JoJo pose, yeah. It might be the baseball kid. Whose name always escapes me. The slip through walls baseball computer baseball kid. Emporio, yeah, it might be an it might be an Emporio pose. It's good shit though. <laughs> I like this a lot. This is from Wujak. This is our two primary party members training at Leo Mon's gym, while Patamon receives zero training. <laughs> our most expendable party member. Yeah, it's nice. It's a nice piece. Oh. <laughs> we can fix him! <laughs> Huber, we can't fix Zigzag. We can't. We can't. He's gone. He's not thinking anymore, Huber. It's a creature of pure instinct. <laughs> But he's like, in the middle of the night. <laughs> Shit. 
Zigzag, why'd you have to sing? Fuck. <laughs> uh, Mending Mendum is the uh, artist here. Oh, look at these details. If Huber actually saw those holes, he'd be out. That's the thing. Huber hates those little holes. If you're covered in little holes like that, you will not be his ally. <laughs> All right, this I love a lot. There's a lot of there's a lot of context here from Yule Scum. Um the Wario emote got super far. I think Wario emote was top four, right? Um, you, of course, see Red Eyes Mucho. Uh, Wario emote with the Joker face. So this is, this is basically Yule Scum's recap of the uh, emote tournament. Minimize Jokerness. Yeah, it's really nice. It's actually nice. <laughs> It's beautiful. Huber puts rice in those holes. Now you're grossing me out. That actually, that grosses me out, chat. Honestly, it might be the first Yule Scum piece that could be considered cute. This might be it right there. It is cute. Yeah. This is this is a uh, an occasion. This is momentous. Yule scum Q era. <laughs> yes, the restraint of not putting a Joker face on Mucho, I think, is a big factor there as well. Cute scum, hell yeah. And we're all the way back. <laughs> what sucks about this, it's unattributed, and it's actually a really nice illustration. That's what sucks about this. You could have drawn nice Pokemon. <laughs>want to submit any art to the art show send that to dearbossman at gmail.com put your name on it if you want it to be attributed to you if not really no problem it's no problem I'll, i will just be racked with curiosity <laughs> if it's a song or or video try to keep it a minute or less and then, yeah, just do not do not depict any of the blocked Pokemon in any positive manner. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was part of why I was so late today getting the, sh the stream together. So the art show was huge. That was a huge art show. I didn't expect. I mean, gosh, it's five ten already. Holy moly! Yeah, that was wild. Are there other streamers that have this amount of user-created content each week? I wonder. I wonder if even the big-timers do. Uh, I'm sure there are others. There are art streamers, you know? Not art, but did you see my email about NBA Jam a couple of months ago? Oily. No. No, I don't, I don't think so. What are you talking about? I'm about, I'm about to control F... NBA Jam. And this is where I'm racked with curiosity. <laughs> oh, about betting on NBA Jam. I do remember this. Okay, I don't think... Well, no, I, you're right. I didn't give this, a, I, I should look at it. I should look at it. I should look at it. There's a ROM hack for NBA Jam that allows CPU versus CPU battles. NBA Jam is two person teams. It'd have to be, we'd have to like modify it in some way, I think to truly own it and make it truly fun to gamble on. You know, you can't make seasons or edit players like in baseball, but the hackers seem to have added a lot of other players to the roster. Yeah. There's a lot of particulars in making the perfect gambling game. It's got to be perfect, you know?
It's a little wonky, but pretty dumb. Gambling tryout stream? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We were planning. I mean, I'm content with baseball. The thing is, I'm not thinking about what's next while there's still so much baseball ahead, you know? I, and I know I, I enjoy the game jam way too much to limit it to gambling games. I would never want to constrict the uh, game jam like that. That'd be messed up. Then we wouldn't get a first person shooter where you can throw a spear and teleport to where the spear is traveling to at any moment. You know, you simply wouldn't get shit like that. a challenge try to gamble on somebody's spear throwing maybe but I, yeah man so i still think about some of the game jam games you know what i mean there's just there's some good shit in there really really good shit in there and baseball is lightning in a bottle it is because that's the other thing is just like so many random stupid things happen and that's actually what makes the game so enjoyable to watch you know if every game was normal, we would have stopped doing it a long time ago. Top five integral parts of the perfect gambling game. I think I actually listed them before. Because we did the search, right? That's when I bought Godzilla and I bought that wrestling game. And I was like, we'll try these out. Um, I did I did figure out the criteria. You know? Uh, like, what makes a good one and like what it absolutely needs. Like, it needs an element of bullshit randomness. It's so necessary. It needs it. It needs... Uh, Gigabash was alright. Yeah, Gigabash has some good bullshit randomness. I think that might be a factor in it. You know? They go big and then they just like do a super. It's like, no, 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 you weren't supposed to win. I sent something for the art show, but you didn't show it. Oh! Spooky Pixel. I think I know what that was. You sent a PDF. And for some reason, PDFs don't go with OBS. So please send that as a PNG next time. Um, if that's who you are, if that's what that was. I tried to drop it in and it didn't work. All right. Let's, uh, you know what though? You know what though? Stand by, stand by. That's an easy thing to fix. I can just do window capture. Stand by, stand by chat. I'm not thinking. I'm not thinking straight. I got a little caught up in my pre-stream pressure, but like that's actually easy to fix. Here we go. Wishing you love, wishing you luck. Did you know there are zero Google results for shower fuck? Love story time with Gabe. So no, that was not spooky pixel. <laughs> oh, it is. It is. Look, pixel at the end. Uh, it is. Okay. 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 Wait. So story time with Gabe is somebody in chat. Pixel, did you just pin that poem on Storytime with Gabe? How dare you? I wrote that poem. I just wrote what you said. Oh, you're right. You're right. You're right. I pinned that poem on Storytime with Gabe. I remember now. I remember now. I remember now. I remember now. Storytime with Gabe was in chat saying, Whew. I just finished writing a poem on a Valentine's Day card. <laughs> and then I recited out loud what I believed the poem to be. Okay, so truly I am the villain in this entire scenario. And Pixel is here to uh, point that out. Got it. Yeah, I remember now. <laughs> when are you not the villain? Good question. Uh, Shabello, thanks for gifting that gift sub. So. 
M. Night Shyamalan shit going on. Oh, oh, it was me. It was. Oh, my God. I just realized that I am the ghost, bro. Oh, my God. All right. Let us uh, play video games. Ooh, it's actually really close, but not quite. Oh yeah, lots of headroom too. Okay. Cool. Stop that. All right, and you get even more me. Even more me. I laugh more often now. Uh huh. Let me close that. What is it? There we go. Can you go over how much guidance you want with this? Yeah, because it's confusing. I want a lot of guidance for... Uh, what to do to get Digimon, but not what Digimon I'll get. If that makes sense. I love being surprised by the Digivolutions. I love being surprised by the Digimon we run into. I love seeing what my Digimon turn into. But if I have to grind... <laughs> it was Peter Bjorn and John. Um, if I have to grind a particular stat, I love knowing that ahead of time. Like, Kyle, if, if you're going to want, like, Digimon C, you're going to want to grind speed. You know what I mean? Um, also, we talked last week about how there's a missable Digimon, and I have to keep all my, like, levels beneath 30 to get that Digimon. Um... Stuff like that. Uh, there's been a few times where I just want to know where to go. And I'll ask. Don't tell me where to go until I ask you where to go. Otherwise, it's kind of fun to explore around. Will Digimon ever make a comeback? Digimon is bigger than ever. I feel like... um, How's the volume, by the way, with the music? Uh... Gimma needs defense. Okay, you're doing it right. That's good. That's good. My understanding was I'm going to get Gimma's best Digivolution um, if I just get Growlmon up to level 30. But I think it is good to get all four possible slots filled. So yeah, we might as well kill a f several birds. Uh, Chu Hai, thanks for being a three monther. How can it come back if it never left? Yeah. I feel like um, Digimon Survive did well, right? Um, so crazy thing is, in this game, you play a very unlikable, arrogant child who doesn't seem to have any particular attachment to his friends. And I figured that's just where we're starting the story. But throughout the week, the more I thought about it, I'm not convinced this kid's character will ever change throughout the entirety of the story. <laughs> There's no sign up to this point that he will be changing. Um, so that's kind of exciting. We're just playing an unlikable child. Junior. <laughs> yeah. I forgot. I did forget his name is Junior. <laughs> what is it? What's the name in Japanese? Why did they choose Junior? Moms don't know what Digimon is? Okay, so when you say... When will Digimon... Have a comeback? The meter is moms knowing what it is. I don't buy it, though. I don't buy it, though. Because the thing is, like... Moms knowing shit, to me, in my book, doesn't mean shit. This goes back to me saying that Roblox, the success of Roblox has no actual weight. You're not going to hit. You're not going to hit. Watch this. Blocked. Oh, okay. All right. What's the damage? It's 
not great. I think of, um, you know Jerry Seinfeld's dumb show, Comedians in Cars Drinking Coffee? Oh, come on now, come on now. All right, well, that, that's a speed. Um, and Jerry Seinfeld has, like, this YouTuber on one episode, this YouTube character. He doesn't bring the YouTuber on, he brings on the YouTuber's character. And he's like, everybody knows about, I don't remember her name. It's like, Shelly Belly. It's like, everybody knows Shelly Belly. My kids are crazy about Shelly Belly, and now she's in the car with me. And it's like, no! Just because your kids love this shit, doesn't mean everybody knows this shit. It was Miranda Sings. It was, it was. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was Miranda Sings. And so it's like, no, Jerry Seinfeld. Just because your kids love Miranda Sings doesn't mean that she is insanely popular. <laughs> so what I'm saying is that even if moms don't know what Digimon is, that doesn't negate Digimon's popularity. I got a question, actually. So, like, Miranda Sings the human, the person performing the character, is she still doing okay? Colleen Ballinger. Yeah, it's like she doing okay. She's on TikTok now as not Miranda. Hell yeah, dude. Hell yeah. Jerry, I don't know what you were thinking, bro. <laughs> Inviting a YouTube character onto your let's just chat in a car for a minute show. She's a voice coach for Ariana Grande? So cool. I, I did that for a little while. It's not an easy gig. Um, chat, the digi- So I learned what Digimon we have to stay under level 34. And... It's Vmon. I'm okay. I'm okay. I'm no longer stressed about staying beneath level 30. Vmon's better than Patamon, but Vmon is not our number three. You'd like to hear more about my voice coaching gig? So I would just like, I would just tell Ariana like, a little too high there. You know what I mean? I would just be like, you gotta, you gotta drink some honey in your tea just to keep your vocal cords flappable. Just shit like that. It's like, it's like about hearing somebody sing and then like telling them what's wrong with it. It's not an easy job. Ariana, no more gravel, okay? Did Jones ever seek out your service? No, he was too proud. He was too proud. I told him, like, Jones, I've done this for Ariana Grande. He's like, I'm good. You know, okay. Um, What did I press pause for? Oh, to talk about Vmon. All right, so I'm no longer, Chad, I'm no longer stressed about the level 30 thing. Vmon is not our third party member. Uh, I don't remember what happened in the story, actually. We go in here, we're too scared to hang out. But I think we can do this now because we've learned the truth about this creature. Category still says just chatting. Good looking out. I mean, up to this point, we basically were just chatting, but now we are officially gaming. You picked a good time to tell me.
Just need to keep exploring the area. Okay. I mean, we're leveling up. Yeah, this is the stuff I need help for, you know what I mean? Like, this game can be a little obtuse. A little old school obtuse sometimes. Yanmaman. Yeah, I don't see Giamon leaving this party. I don't see Kumamon leaving this party. Patamon's gone. But, like... Patamon's replacement is not Vimon. Vimon is too much of a poster boy. Grandmon. Digivolve learned Metal Mamemon. Oh my god. We'll look at it. We'll look at it for a second, but my priority priority is still to grow Growlmon. We'll look at just for a second. I do like Metal Mamemon. That's sweet. But we gotta get Growlmon up to level 30. Mamemon? So that's another thing I would do for Ariana. Is like sometimes she would say like the word Mame like a little too much like Mami. I'm so I'd be I'd have to be like this is the hard part is you have to be like Ariana. You you said Mami again. And she'd be sweet. She'd be like, did I? I'm like, yeah, you said mommy. So try not to say it like that. Anyway, I had that job for like 20 minutes. Uh, Tentative tail. Thanks for being a two-monther. Mame. Thanks for <laughs> love a two-monther. Um, C Digivolve. Giamon. We want to set you to Metal Monomon. Yep. Just for one. Just for one. Just for one. Just for one. <laughs> okay. Press the analog button on your controller. She was really sweet, but she fired me immediately. Dude, I love the portraits in this game. So cool. Ooh, good damage, little one. Recent test screening says Aquaman 2 sucks. What do you mean? The What do you mean? That kind of shit doesn't leak. Who says? Aquaman 2 is like the only one I'll watch. Alright, that's all we're looking at for Metal Mamemon, unfortunately. That's the only one I'm in for, man. I don't want to see Flash. I don't want to see Shazam's. I just want to see Aquaman goofing around. Did you have a nickname for Ariana? I was actually mid pitch when she said you have to you have to go. <laughs> I was actually I was actually right mid sentence being like, "Hey, so I thought maybe I could have a nickname for you." And it was right then that she said you you should go. <laughs> Would Stratagem World go on comedians in cars drinking coffee? Oh my god. Yes. If Jerry Seinfeld's daughters loved a VTuber enough, he would find a way to get that VTuber in the car with him. <laughs> <laughs> Let me know if I'm going too far away. Okay, so according to this chart, you got Metal Mamemon because you have Growlmon level 20 plus, defense plus a hundo. Okay, so chat's saying that we needed to get our defense up 
it was actually already high enough. Um, I'm worried about his health, dude. This thing could chop him down. Look at Musiamon. By the way, I swear we have this card. Oh, blocked. We might die here. This might kill. Unless we block as well. Good shit, Giamon. You want to stay in there? Yes. Okay. All right. We're going to push our luck. There's a hit. Let's see what the damage looks like. Oh, you got to go. You got to go. We got to take you out. The only Musiamon is BT5, which we did not open. No, I think I started at like 8. Oh, no! We gotta go. <laughs> Patamon, go for it. We gotta go. We gotta go. Okay. All right, all right. All right. Okay. Okay. That's 3,000 damage. Uh, all right. Now, I wonder if Growlmon has a better chance of running away than Metal Mamemon does. You do need to progress in this area a bit. Stop saying this area. <laughs> if you're talking about this area with Musiamon, no, I need to run away. Um, Growlmon's got this. Pick the higher speed. We don't know who has higher speed. Bro. Curtains. Warpipe. Thanks for being a 33 monther. curtains that's it that the game can be like if you step into the wrong screen if chat just tells you go explore just explore and you walk into the wrong screen game over <laughs> cannot escape you just die all right all right chat maybe be a little more specific then <laughs> Left is where I went. I went left. Left killed me, dude. No permadeaths? You're looking at it, man. Brutal. Loads your last save. In that timeline, Junior and his team just died. Permanently dead. Never to return. So brutal. It's so brutal because there's no escalation. Um, these dumb Yanmas, you know what I mean? They can't do shit to you. And then there's like a guy who just one shots you. That's rough. You have to go left for story, but you just have to run from that specific Digimon. You're telling me I was in the right area? My God. That's a bit much, brother. Trophies confirmed for Legend of Dragoon. Very nice. Just some dude camping low-level Digimon. That's who he is. Yeah. So what sucks is uh, Guillemon's speed is super jacked. And we still couldn't run. We just got to luck into it. We just need a good luck run.
When I was younger, my friend and I didn't have a memory card, so it was actual perma for us. Damn. <laughs> Damn. Are you the person who said you'd seen the beginning of this game several times last week? Um, very, very, very late last night. Uh, I was playing, um... The Jumping Robot Rabbit game. The name I cannot recall currently. <laughs> jumping Flash, thank you. Jumping, I was playing some Jumping Flash. That game's got some fun trophies. But uh, it's actually weird, there's like uh, visual errors. I'm like straight up like uh, busted pixel art. Don't know what's going on with that game. The HUD. Okay. All right. So it looks like you, we just got lucky that time. Seed Wharf thinks we got 33 a month. -er. Zombamon. Hey, wait, wait. I'm not gonna let you pass through here. You gotta be kidding. I need to go over there. Then try to beat me. Of course, I never lose. <laughs> yeah, right. There's always a first time. And you blamed Chad. I needed to hear it. I need, like... All right, chat, if that happened to me naturally without the guidance of chat's hand, I would have figured, oh, I'm in the wrong part of this game. I need to go somewhere else right now. That Pokemon, sorry, that Digimon one shot my entire team. And it was just bad luck, it turns out. <laughs> okay, this is also bad. Keep on running away. I didn't tell you to do that. That might be scripted. You're running away in the middle of battle? You're no match for me. Man, what's going on? Just watch. I'm, I'm going to win. I'll be back. You're all talk, kid. <laughs> Cool. Scripted defeat. <laughs> Can I get no ya because a local Panda Express is now on DoorDash near me? Time for a pile of orange chicken tonight. Now, I'll give you an oh ya if it goes successfully. Having Uber eated Panda Express in the past, it no normally goes extremely poorly. Panda Express, for some reason, hates third-party delivery services. Often, when I just want white rice, they'll give me, like, brown rice with eggs in it. And they'll, the, the receipt will just say, no rice. <laughs> and I'm like, yes, rice! <laughs> I say, yes, rice! <laughs> so I, I ended up just making my own rice that night. Which, well, you know what? If you just order meat from Panda Express, you can't lose.
junk Geomon. Yeah, I feel like we should be grinding these Digimon a little more, dude. They're hurting me. They're hurting me. Ice Power 1, baby. All right, so I'm wondering if we go back to the ghost house to now convince the ghost to give us more power so that we could defeat that Digimon that we're not strong enough to defeat. Ooh. Why are you so bad at this, Guillemot? Oh, because we got ambushed. It's I'm not Digivolved. We got a Digivolve. What am I thinking? Look at our tiny little dinosaur. Is there an Oya equivalent for I don't know how this makes me feel, but here's a tidbit about my life that's occurring? No. There is none. It's Oya or oh no. No in between for me. Come on! Digivolve 2! <laughs> this is a funny comment. You don't need an oh yeah to tell us about your day, chat. <laughs> yeah, I like that comment. You don't need an oh yeah to tell us about your day. There's my growl on. This is a PS1 game. I'm playing it on a PS2. It's looking a little sharp because of the... Uh... Don't tell me. No, 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 no. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pluck this out of my own brain. Don't even tell me what it's called. It's called... Uh... Tiny... It's called Tink. Retro Tink. It's called the Retro Tink 5X. I got there eventually. I got there eventually. Tink is very close to Tiny, you stupid chat. <laughs> you don't even know. You don't even know it's only one letter off. You don't even know how close I was. Overall thoughts on this game so far. So, um, I actually like how much battling there is. There's a lot. And it's not quick. Uh, I don't care much for the adventure we're on. I'm not intrigued. I don't care much for our character or any character in this game, really. Um... But, I like being here in the digital world. It's weird that we have to pay to be here. Currently, they're doing system maintenance, and all the time we spend in the digital world is free. <laughs> oh, this is where we came in. Okay, that's our south station. We've been reimbursed for our time in the, in the digital world. So that's a little different, right? It's a little more fun when you get sucked into the digital world than, like, you're paying a company to be here. Um, but I assume there will be more context to this whole scenario. It's like the opposite of when it rains in an amusement park and they make it free when they kick you out. Yeah, I mean, this happens in MMOs, right? They would kick you out. They're like, hey, sorry, we have to do emergency maintenance. Why don't you all hang out in here? But obviously, you know, like, we're sucked in right now. If you die in the digital world, you die in real life. 
So it's not like they can just get everybody out in an orderly manner. Something bad is happening. The hacker known as Lucky Mouse is up to something. There's hearsay that Lucky Mouse is hacking the digital world. You can come on up. You can come up. You can come up. You can come up. Come on up. Come on up. Come on up. There you go. Yup, no one here. No, 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 I need you to teach me, voice. Teach me. No, that's not a monster, child. Okay. Oop. All right, if they did a remake of this game, what should they add? Um. Talk to Gatomon. Sure. We need to heal up anyway. Um. I think an important part. I what I what I really like about uh, Cyber Sleuth is silhouettes and having goals to achieve those silhouettes of Digivolutions. So right now, you know, we just got Metal Mamaimon by dumb luck. Sheer dumb luck. Um, but it would have been nice to have a silhouette of Metal Mamaimon. And it's like, hey, if you get your defense up here and you achieve level 20, you will get to see what this Digimon turns into at this point. So I think like clear trees that way, I think would be fun. Um, yeah, everyone's annoyed by Zombamon. Me too. Me too. And then, you know, making the hardest Digimon, the coolest Digimon harder to achieve, I guess. Can I get an Oya for eating healthy and feeling good? Yeah. Oh yeah. Sepikmon is in Shaman House, should be able to do something, but we haven't seen him in a while, I wonder why. Oh yeah, that's the house with a ghost in it. You're being sweet today, bro. See a Recore Instagram posted today for the first time in five years. What appears to be a half-completed knitting chart. What? What's a knitting chart? That looks, this looks accidental. I don't know if we can read into this chat. This seems like somebody made a mistake. <laughs> It'd be cool if this is some like uh, AR game, right? Where like, if you do knit that thing, it turns into a shape that implies there's a sequel coming. That'd be a neat way to do it. I think my dream Digimon is a small, hyper-detailed world like Yakuza or Hitman, where minute changes and in interactions can influence your Digimon's path. I like that a lot. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I love the idea of you being assigned one Digimon. And like, that's it, man. That's your Digimon. You wanted an Agumon? Too bad. You're an Elfmon guy. You know? That's not you. You're not an Agumon person. So, like, learn to love your partner Digimon.
And then, of course, that partner Digimon can turn into a bunch of different weird shit. Uh, still no place to buy stuff. We're actually running low on potions. <laughs> Who is you in Digimon Survive, though? Is the entire game first person? You're just mostly an omniscient observer? Yeah, chat. Not the same, chat. Not the same, chat. You play as one of the teens. And then those teens have already been given their Digimon. It's not the same. What is Gex doing in this game? You forget what Gex looks like. That thing bears no resemblance. I won't hear it. We went through this last week. Everyone gets their own. Yeah, but it's like... Which of the original Digimon Masters do you want to be? This is funny. This is the second time this has been brought up today. This doesn't count as news, chat. No, don't say holy shit. I don't want to see that. Rayquaza salmon. Yeah, it does look like a dragon salmon. Which Digimon would I be most disappointed finding out as my partner? It would be Agumon. It'd be like Agumon or Vmon, you know? Shoutmon, one of the cover boys. You must be Sepik Mon. Ooh. <laughs> yeah. Ooh, what do you want? Yeah, what do you want? <laughs> hey, can you uh can you tell me how to beat Zombomon? I can, but first I have but one request. Okay. I lost my precious mask somewhere. If I don't have it, no one can see me. So if you find it, I'll tell you what you want to know. All right, fine. I'll go and find your mask. Okay. I had it when I was with Baron Mon. So I must have dropped it after that. Okay, thanks a lot. Okay. New auction item available for Giamon. Also, the Eldorado ID you got for being cool enough to attend auctions lets you access the black market within Asuka City Item Shop. Cool. So we're going home. It sounds like you'd have to go home anyway, anyway, uh, to find that mask. Armadillomon would be really fun. Thank you for saying Rayquaza. I don't understand people why people say Raquaza. Raquaza? That must be some YouTuber shit. There's some wholesome guy with glasses who says Raquaza. <laughs> and then it just spreads. All it takes is one wholesome guy with glasses. And then that becomes the way to say it. <laughs> do people wish a happy President's Day? We do not. I have, I think, never been wished a happy President's Day in my life. I do think I used to get it off when I was in high school. I don't know if people get it off anymore. Can I get an oh yeah for my student canceling their 6 p.m. appointment and leaving me free to watch the stream? 
No. Because now your student isn't receiving education. <laughs> they needed that education. What if I'm a terrible teacher, though? <laughs> You're not. Would it be random, or would you take a player-like personality quiz and give them a Digimon based on the results? Uh, we check their social media. There's a background check. We call your, your, you have to give us three references. And then based off of that, you get your new Mumon. <laughs> Here's your new Mumon, you piece of shit, is normally how it goes. Posting about musical theater and panel shows? You get a new Mamon. <laughs> it's gonna it's going to be like majority it's gonna be a strong majority. It ninety nine percent new Mamons is what we're handing out. Okay, so we're going back to Starter Town to do some dirty deeds at the auction. Splatoon Twitter also posted it, but without the giant red circle. So someone felt like adding a clickbait circle to the post. Yeah, I'm telling you, chat. Nintendo Europe is weird. I feel like I say this every stream. Nintendo of Europe is strange. I don't trust them. They are curd eaters. You know? <laughs> Nintendo of Europe... Walking around the offices eating curd. <laughs> All right, come on, keep growing, baby. Keep growing. How about Nintendo Australia? Good people, good people. Terrible people, but good people. This is the town that you said has a black market? Not this one. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's Asuka. So it's the same town. We're going to one town that's going to have the auction and a black market. Break time? Um. All right. Let me uh, Let me go to the inn, buy some potions. In fact, we can skip the inn if I just buy a lot of potions. And then we'll uh, save, and then we can take a break. Yeah, now I can't imagine a bunch of weirdos walking around the office, peeking over each other's cubicles, eating spoonfuls of curd. <laughs> um, you know what? I'm not going to buy that many because we might get an item that gives more HP soon, you know?
slurping the curd. Oh, we don't need to stay at the end. My bad, my bad, my bad. Nope, nope, nope. Not worth the money. Because what we can do is just item. <laughs> Slurp in the curd. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Can I get an Oya for working my first tattoo convention this weekend? Yeah, that's cool. That's really cool. Oh, yeah. Post curd euphoria. I don't want to see it. I don't want to see what that looks like. Woojack, thanks for gifting that gift sub. Chat, I'm not saying all Europeans eat curd. I'm saying all Nintendo of Europe employees eat curd. <laughs> and I know it. And I know it. I just know it. Check out the Sea of Stars demo. Really love that game's look. No, you know I don't play demos, especially for RPGs. Um, but yeah, I'm liking how it looks. I'm liking it. I'm not a... Uh... It looks better than the uh, the mech game that came out late last year. Um, but still, I'm not... It's, to me, like, not... Distinctive, I guess. Chained Echoes. I think it looks better than Chained Echoes, but still not distinctive. Do you know what I mean? You need, you need a fucking look to pop. You need an aesthetic. And I feel like Sea of Stars doesn't quite have it. For me. For me to be all over it. I'm not all over Sea of Stars. Alright, alright, alright. So, you know what it might actually be? More than the look? Is the character designs. That might be what it is. Oh my god. Stop this. Bing is the worst. If you if you Bing a Sea of Stars, you're going to see a bunch of absolutely irrelevant images. <laughs> okay, 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 okay. So here we go. Yeah. I think it's the character designs. I think that's what I'm not vibing with. This trailer's old. This is not the newest trailer. This is like the reveal trailer. To me, this pops. Then I... Honestly, chat, I feel like anything would. If this pops to you, I feel like these could be any three characters and you'd be like, yeah, that pops. You know? This pops to you? Designer fake, thanks for being a 14-monther. The clock just turned 12 here in Germany, which means I'm officially 30 years old. Fuck. Happy birthday, designer fake. And yeah, fuck indeed. 30's pretty nice. It's pretty nice to be 30. This, this shit pops, no doubt. Player characters look like NPCs to me. That might be it, man. That might be the intent.
There, there we go. There's a, this is a good character art portrait. Zale's not doing shit for me, chat. Zale pops for you? Your chat, you're dead serious looking me in the eyes and telling me Zale pops for you. <laughs> they have anime hair. What more do you need? I think there's sometimes you can just tell like somebody's drawing anime hair who doesn't draw anime. You know? Which, in that case, it's like, you know, combine both styles. Adapt anime to your style, you know? Any upcoming JRPGs that have your attention? No. I mean, you know, Final Fantasy 16 has my attention. I'm basic. There's the trash game. Okay, what was... what? It's, it's on the docket. What's the trash game? It's like Adventures in Trashland. And that's like, I guess that's the case of like, oh, this pops for me. Kingdom of the Dump. Yeah, so here's an ex This shit pops, dude. It's so simple. You're a fucking trash can. Hell yeah. To, like, this is it. You're asking me what the other game is missing? Like, here's one screenshot. Boom. Easy. The trash can has a sword. Yep, this pops. So this art is, le oh my God, I mean, that looks really good. So the art is less defined than what you see in Sea of Stars, but uh, this to me sparks, this pops. This is different, this is unique. This is a reason to use an old style, visual style, but uh, add your own mix to it, as opposed to like, it's a really, really good looking 32 bit era RPG, you know? This crackles. This snaps. This crackles. This pops. This is my shit. So, yeah, I understand both, right? I understand the market for Sea of Stars. I'm telling you, if you're asking me, like, what I like, this is my world. This is not my world. This is my world. The dump. This is my world. That boss right there. Right? I, I like Cranosaur, chat. I like Cranosaur. I don't like... Big thing. <laughs> Fuck this thing. <laughs> big antler golem god. All right. I actually think this is probably, you're probably in that pod and it probably is like you fast traveling to another part of the map. I don't think you fight this. I actually don't think you fight it. I think this this guy's like, you'll need to adventure to the land of Wandazar. Once you get to Wandazar, look for Palem. Once you find Palem, he shall tell you where to go next. Now, hop aboard. And you're like, I don't know about this. Trust me, it'll be okay, Zale. And then everybody gets into this little pod and this thing throws you over there. Easy. You're right. Wondazor is suspiciously close to the word Wondagore. <laughs> um, but you know, like you got to me, you got to be different, dude. You can't just be like inspired by the classics in my mind. Because, like, the classics are still good. The classics are still there. You can still play them. Sorry, I didn't realize I'm off cam this whole time. So, like, you can still play Chrono Trigger. So, in my mind, you have to be a weird twist on Chrono Trigger or significantly better than Chrono Trigger. You, you gotta be like, this is what Chrono Trigger wanted to be but couldn't. Not just, like, here's... Here's pretty Chrono Trigger, you know? Zero Blade 3, you wit chat? And, oh my god, no. No, 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 no. You're making me upset. Zero Blade 3 is not Chrono Trigger. <laughs> Show me the frog. 
Um, oh, that wasn't to me. Okay, thank God. Thank God. Uh, Shogun Rock, thanks for being a 19-monther. Kyle, I'm officially tired of soft character designs. Thanks for these streams as always. Yeah, we're calling out Zale. Zale, we're calling you out, bro. You're not a walking trash can. You're soft. No pawns are not frog. Not even close. <laughs> Solar Blade Dancer. We're about to block Zale. <laughs> I have beef with Zale today. <laughs> I have beef with Zale. Some characters have wings on their heads. That's kind of like a frog. <laughs> <laughs> the accents are similar. Yeah, in your defense, the accents are very similar. Yeah, 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 break time. I'm glad we had this discussion. Because I feel like Sea of Stars will continue to pop up, right? Because it's a genuinely cool looking game. This is genuinely high effort, laser focused vision kind of game. Where lucky people are willing to make this kind of game. But when I have to explain why I won't be playing it, now we know why. Now we know. Now we have our locked and loaded response. I mean, that looks like the fight against um, Larva. What's the what's the boss's bad name? The bad boy, a Chrono Trigger. Larvesta. Lavos. Lavos. This looks like the Lavos fight right there. Um, chat's saying Earthlock 2 doesn't look better. Done. Done. You lose again, chat. Once more, you lose. <laughs> uh, Bots and Kaito says a one and done Friday game. It, we'd have to have a completely open Friday. I don't feel like starting an RPG for eight hours is that fun for a stream. Like starting like Wanted Dead for eight hours is fun. Uh, a 3D platformer, hell yeah. Um, but an RPG, especially one that's kind of old school like Bots and Kaitos, I don't think that'd make for a good Friday. We need to get to Sonic this year? Adventure. Sonic Adventure is on the docket. Yep. Did Want a Dead pop? Absolutely, yeah. Popped in the trailers, popped playing the game. Ooh, Earthlock 2 isn't going to be turn-based. That's interesting. I don't know too much about it. I mean, it's still, it's still a way away, chat. It's still far away. Earthlock 1, still available. It says action RPG in the description. Got it. Damn. Probably the right call and probably also why it's taken so much longer for them to get that sequel out. They have that early access Earthlock survival game to finish too. Yeah, I thought it's a farming game. So it's a survival farming game. Yeah, they probably figured like, hey, we can make this in one year just to get some revenue in um, while we're waiting for this massive action RPG to develop. Makes sense. If you're pushing off that, you know, six year project by one year just to get some revenue up in the middle, that makes sense to me. I get it. Gotta keep the lights on, yeah. All right, chat, let's take our quick break. We'll be right back. See you soon.
We're back, baby. Star Fox 30th anniversary art from whom? Man, all right, chat. This piece of art is cooler than Fox McCloud in any of his games. I'd play the game with this guy in it. That's cool as shit. But he's a massive dork in every single one of his games. Okay, let me just scroll down a little bit so you can actually see how cool his face looks there. He's an absolute wimpy loser in every single one of his games. Including Smash Bros. It's the original artist who made that. Yeah, that's cool. Retired from Nintendo a couple of years ago. Bummer. You ever seen Jimmy and the Pulsating Mass? Is that a band? Your cam is overlapping. Right, because we did window capture there. HD cam there. Uh, so let's do... Uh, this, there. Okay, I got it figured out. Good looking out, thank you. Appreciate that. I guess when I say bummer, you're right. We should be happy for anybody to retire on their own terms. Bummer to lose that talent. Bummer that the one person who knows how to draw Fox McCloud looking cool no longer works at Nintendo. It's an ARP, it's a JRPG? 
All right, let's let's see if Jimmy and the pulsating mass pops. <laughs> let's just see if it pops. Willitpop.com. Here we go. No. Yes. It's. Very earthboundy. Honestly, it's more Undertale than Earthbound. I'm going to say. No pop. I'm going to say no pop. Close. Close, but no pop. Okay. Now, here's the thing, chat. You know I hate how Pizza Tower looks. Pizza Tower pops. Pizza Tower pops. Pizza Tower pops. This shit pops. It pops too much. Yeah, it pops too much. <laughs> too much pop, brother. <laughs> yeah, that's too much pop. This one's like easy lock for the next AGDQ, you know? Lock it in already, dude. Was that the baby bottle pop jingle? Yeah. <laughs> it was. Wario Land, I just finished it. I finished that very, very late last night, too. Um, all done with Wario Land. Three. Um, those developers got some nerve, dude. That game kind of stinks, level design-wise. Because every single level is designed around, like, making you do more laps. Like, okay, do this crazy platforming section, and then if you drop, do it again. But then also, like, here's the treasure chest, here's the key, right? So it's like, okay, there's a treasure chest, you got the key, now do another lap. It's like, oh, okay, all right. Do it again, gamer. Every time. Every time. It, that game is actually called Do It Again Gamer. The final boss scared you as a kid? I took a screenshot because I loved how it looked so much. Menacing final boss. Who can one-shot kill you, by the way? The boss grabs you once. Game over. Nothing can kill Wario except for that one boss grabbing you. been playing through Mario and Luigi's Superstar Saga. So fun. Yeah, I've actually never played the first one. I've never played that. I didn't feel like I needed to because I love uh, Bowser's Inside Story so much. You know what I mean? So I, I feel like I wonder if it'd be just going back to play like a worse version. But um, I do dig that stuff big time. Man, Kuwagamon used to be so scary. I'm looking forward to the day that we see that Samurai Mon again and just uh, chop him one shot, you know? That'll feel so good. I need to know if you think Shining Force 1 pops. Picking Claw. Cool, dude. That's new. Send me a screenshot of Shining Force 1. And we'll go to doesitpop.com. Okay, 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 okay. Here we go, here we go, here we go.
That's not fair. You picked the best possible screenshot. Obviously it pops. Obviously it pops. That's not fair. But I do remember, I remember what we, we did Shining Force 1 with, was like the mini Genesis night. And, um, I do remember, I do remember, uh, being taken aback by how good that game looks. Shining Force 1 looks legitimately good. Holds up. Fantasy Star? No. Fantasy Star does not pop. Yeah. I would love to play Shining Force, actually. I think it'd be fun. After the massive disappointment of Fire Emblem Engage, I need something. Yeah, I love permadeath games like that. I love that uh, that archer died and we just lost access to that archer. So fun. Does Fire Emblem Engage pop? It does, unfortunately. I think it is a good-looking Switch game. I think the character designs are pretty weak. But I think the game pops. Chain Echoes pops? It doesn't pop. It doesn't pop. Obviously, we all have different pops. You know what I mean? We all have different densities of our bubbles and different soft spots on our bubbles. My bubble is strange. Some parts of my bubble are iron. Other parts are, are pure soap. Just a little soap bubble. And you know, just like the wind could pop that part of that my bubble. Death Stranding pops. No question. Death Stranding pops from trailer one. Is Madden 2001 on the PS2 pop? I think it does. We'd have to take another look, but I'm gonna I'm gonna guess it does indeed pop. Which Final Fantasy has the biggest pop? It has to be FF7. We're talking about something looking immediately iconic. Immediately above all else, you know what I mean? M immediately unique. I hear you with nine. I hear you with nine. Ninja 5.0 box art does pop, but for all the wrong reasons. The pop list. <laughs> Yeah, and that's a, that's the thing with Chain Echoes. It's it's like I don't know. It kind of uh, do, does this game look different from every other game? Or is this like a very good version of this game kind of game? MDS Veritas, thanks for being a 30-monther. Thank you for that deck Prescott bit on delayed input. Couldn't help but full-on cackling at the donkey ending. <laughs> Same, obviously. <laughs> Wild Frost almost pops. Ooh. All right. I'm going to have to move this up. Check out Wild Frost. No, I dig it. I think it does pop. This is this has a look, dude. It's like to me, it's like a little adventure timey, but like, I love a a cohesive aesthetic happening here, with the style of creatures. 
And it works really well for this card game. The art is clearly communicated. This looks nice. Fun pick. Yeah, that pops. Porky Pig's Haunted Holiday does pop. All right, so this is going to... The Hazard Shield is for our beloved Guillemot. I'll pay any price. Does delayed input pop? Some seasons do. Denim season pops. Hat season doesn't pop too much. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm 800, I'm in for 800. Easy. Easy win. Do we start having to uh, bid more the later the game goes on? Who pops more? Mickey, Donald, or Goofy? Oh my god. Okay. Um. Shit. I'm gonna say Mickey pops. Mickey's head is iconic. You don't need shit to recognize Mickey's head. He just pops, chat. Goofy's head shape is weird. <laughs> if I asked most of you in chat to draw Goofy right now, you wouldn't get it right. All right, all right, all right. Here's the thing. I'm gonna. I'll try. I'll try to draw Goofy's head for you right now, and I'll show you how hard it is to get it right. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. No. 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 So the tweet from delayed input is stuck to my notepad right now. It's just stuck. <laughs> oh no. Okay, I'm going to have to deal with that later. I'm going I'm going to have I'm gonna <laughs> That's a deal with it later scenario. saw a weird drawing on the back of that drawing. There's, I think, three... Oh my gosh, goof. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> All righty. All righty. Whereas opposed to Mickey Mouse, who's in All you all you need for Mickey Mouse is two huge ears. You're done. Nothing else needed. And then Donald is tough because uh, bills are tough to draw. It's not easy to draw a duck bill. So like Mickey is just easily the easiest to draw.
And then even if you do kind of get Donald out, it's not iconically Donald. You can't be like, that is Donald for sure. Which of these is closest to the source material, chat? <laughs> <laughs> What's funny is to draw Mickey, just draw Sonic the Hedgehog. <laughs> just draw Sonic the Hedgehog. Nobody chat, if you look at if you look at Goofy, he is absolutely that lumpy. My Goofy doesn't have a hat because I'm used to Goof Troop Goofy. I'm used to Goofy Movie Goofy. He's not going to wear that silly hat. Uh, status. We got to put that new shield onto our Guillemon. Sounds like it was a shield. Hazard shield. Legendary shield of the wild. Yeah, it's pretty nice. Our special defense goes up so high. That's nice. Cool. Um, I wonder if he can actually hold two shields. Nope. Adita N64, thanks for being a 31 monther. My middle child is working on a video for his nascent YouTube channel. The phenomenon of the successful single-person small team game. Tetris, Minecraft, Stardew Valley, Undertale, Chained Echoes, Hollow Knight, Don't Call Me Mama, etc. Other examples? I'd probably put Don't Call Me Mama higher up in that list. But no, I'm trying to think of, I mean, I hate it, but I feel like Five Nights at Freddy's is one, a one guy, right? Five Nights is a pretty big, a pretty huge one guy phenomenon. The first Ultima, is that true? Celeste is a small team. Yep, and Celeste was like nominated at the Game Awards. Zero Vandal, thanks for being a 32 monther. A pretty shitty one guy. Yeah, I mean that that's the <laughs> that's the other thing too, right? Is like when it is a small team, if the one guy turns out shitty, it's like, well, there's the there's the joy of that game. Cave Story is a really fun early example, I feel like. Cave Story is a really, like, before, like, even, like, uh, Xbox Live Arcade took off. I feel like Cave Story is, like, an indie hit. I like that pick. Doom team was small, but so was every team at that time, you know? And, like, small teams were normal. At Black Market, check all the weapons descriptions. So is Black Market the same as the regular one? I just go talk to that wizard mod? Sorry, chat. I got. I've been. I've been heavily. You've been successfully distracting me quite easily today. Child's play. Yeah, I love the props in this game. It's cool stuff.
Pop's not here, so I'm in charge of the store. Let me through. Cool. There we go. Cool. The black market. Yeah, if you were loving the props earlier, check out all the props here. Stacked up on that side of the store. So cool. So nice to talk to Kyle like this. <laughs> That's something I really do like. So, like, Wanted Dead, uh, I was pretty engaged with the game. Um, and, and, like, an RPG like this, a turn-based RPG, you can tend to have a lot more conversations. You can really chill on a stream like this. The Black Market. Hell yeah. Show me. This is what I was talking about. This is why I was holding out and buying too many power charges. Hell yeah. You were in that shooting gallery for a long time. Yeah, and I was like just looking at the targets and only reading comments that were helping me at the shooting gallery. <laughs> if it chat if you ask me if an old genesis game pops while i was in the shooting gallery i would have flipped here in a in a uh turn-based rpg yeah let, let's talk about it what pops? All right, so you told me to check the descriptions. I love the shotgun. <laughs> a unique rod from a bone. Hmm. And then some good armor too. Kabuteri horn. I feel like I might be missing something. You want me to like buy a particular thing? Oh, we gotta see like what we could even equip to anybody. Whoa, look at that leap. Look at that leap. Hell yeah, hell yeah. Oh, nobody can hold the shotgun. We gotta, we have to find a party member who can hold the shotgun. Look at that fucking leap, dude. Oh my God. Is that speed up? What's the jumping um, icon? If it's speed up, we might do it. That bad boy is all about uh, speed. I do, however, like the idea of this Vi Honda. Ravenbow. Oh yeah, we don't need more defense. We're pretty good there. Look at the price. I'm looking at it. We can afford it. We can afford it all. We can afford it all. We can afford one for Kumamon and one for Giamon. And then unfortunately we can't buy anything for Patamon. What's the booger stat? That's what I'm curious about. I see a jumping man. Patamon is paying for this. It's true. Yeah, we're buying these two items with the money we made from selling Patamon's shield. <laughs> I think I'm getting Cerberus Fang and the Power Arm. Zvihander is really cool, dude, but we can't take a hit to his speed. Yes, we can. We can afford that, dude. We can afford that, dude. It is speed. Chat confirms. Speed and evasion are tied together. So not only do we sometimes get two turns twice in a row, but it also affects how frequently uh, we dodge. 
You know what? That's right. If we used Vihanda, we won't be able to use that shield that we just got. Our exclusive uh, Guillemon shield. And that thing is too precious to me. So we're going to get the Cerberus Fang. I like the speed boost, though, dude, of the Wing Sword. What's the true dragon smack? What's the true dragon smack? So, upping your speed gives you the opportunity sometimes to get to attack twice in a row. There's HP drain on this bad boy? Oh my god. The true dragon smack is the Vihander. Oh no. You know what sucks? Is I know you're right. I know you're right. You're right. This is the true dragon smacker way. You're not wrong. Oh boy. <laughs> That's a lot of power. That's a lot of power. And then a little something for Kumamon too. I can buy two? Oh shit. He could have had two. Oh my god. Well, we gotta raise some more money. I know how to raise some money. Don't. Don't. Let's just take a peek. I know how we could raise some money. I mean, we're already we're already using both hands. Now, here's what I'm thinking is we might eventually get a better weapon than the Zvihander. So, like, it might be worth it to hold off. We might... There might come a day where I wish I had the Hazard Shield. That day is not today. Not today. That hurts though. The problem is, I think I gotta stick to my scheme. I think I got to. I gotta stick to my scheme here, chat. No, no, because you watch that samurai kill you. All right. Okay. All right. All right. Fine. Can you sell other stuff instead? I'm super short. I'm like uh, 2,000 bits short. All right, we're going to do some training. I don't know how much we've actually leveled up. Probably like one level for Guillemon and then nothing for Kumamon. TP15, that's nice. Going hard on speed. 337, brother. If you pawn off the shield, they won't sell it back to you, no. Nice. Kuma can get to 80 spirit, it gets a new Digivolution. Okay. We're close.
Here goes nothing. If we, uh, if we nail it, uh, 69... Oh, okay, chat. <laughs> you stupid chat. Um... If we have a good run, we should get enough XP to get us to 80. Good yoga! Good yoga, dude. Is that what yoga's like? Hell yeah, brother. And now we gotta go really hard on speed because we're holding this Vihander, which is hurting our speed. Good training. Good training. You're doing great. Good, 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 good. Uno mas. You got this. Hell yeah. That was nice. Now he can he can honestly mess this one up. I'm so stoked about how well he did there. No, I've not seen Ant-Man. I'm going to try to see it this week. We'll try to squeeze it in. No, that was good, though, buddy. That was good. That was good. Honestly, that was great. Okay, so we're pretty stoked about what our team looks like right now. 447. Uh, the attack has grown. Does chat recommend Ant-Man? Um, I've seen people in chat love it and revile it. <laughs> I've seen both. I've seen both. Nine thirty six now. It was worth it. It was worth it. That's a crazy amount of damage. Do you want a hint on where to go next? Oh, I do actually. I'm so sorry. I was about to go back to that ghost that needs a mask. Yeah, where are we gonna find that ghost's mask? I will need more hints than protocol ruins. I don't I don't know what that is. Is that where the mummy was? It was that. Okay, so I think that was in the bone zone, right? No. In the uh the jungle, the maze, the hedge mage. So we're going the right way regardless. Right this way. Yep, 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 yep. Yep, 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 yep. Might as well save. J hey, man, just in case. Can't hurt to save. Sometimes you gotta save. I never got the kicking boots. The thing is, though, I'm not even uh, dabbling in the card game. We're going to let the card game slip from this playthrough. Yeah, uh, uh, Sumiamon, I forget its name. The Samurai Digimon wiped my entire team earlier in this very run, this very stream.
Hey, chat. Kumamon's speed or spirit is over 80, and we did not receive a notification that he can digivolve into something new. Maybe on our next level up? Spinning Toaf, thanks for being a 15 monther. Can I get an oh no for finally getting COVID after three years of escape? Sure. Oh no! Yeah. I don't know. You lied to me. Let him fight once. Okay. He gets one. So Guillemon now having our highest speed and highest attack is pretty sweet. That's a nasty creature. So let's get Kumamon up front. Feels nice. Have I talked about it or do I have an interest in the double fine, Doc? You're halfway through, it's a 10. It's not a 10, come on now. Come on now. My teacher, the octopus, is a 10. How are you gonna say the 36 hour double find documentary is a 10 the whole way through? Come on, man. Save 10s for 10s, chat. Oh, there it is. Cubimon. I feel like I've seen Cubimon. Like, I should know what Cubimon looks like. Ben Hansen said it was the best documentary on the creative process ever made. Then he hasn't seen the uh, sushi documentary. Somebody dreams of sushi? Jiro. Hansen skipped Jiro dreams of sushi, I guess. We gotta switch to Gyuubi. I guess he skipped... Gift shop on the exit. <laughs> uh, status, Kumamon. Digivolution. Keep going. <laughs> Name one more, Bossman. Name one more. Keep going. I can't think of another famous documentary about the creative process. I simply can't. I tried, chat. Oh, um, was I meant to come into the temple looking for the mask?
Indie game, the movie? Oh, that's Cubimon. Right, 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 right. Yeah, I don't love it, chat. Not interested. Cool evolution for Renamon, though. Nice logical evolutionary chain. But thank you for telling me that if we got our spirit high enough, we'd get that Digimon. Why did the bear become a fox? Um, we jacked up his spirit stat too much. Once your spirit is strong, you become a fox. Grismon at 30 will get a new one. Okay, so same thing like what I'm doing with uh, Guillemon here. This should one-hit kill now with this, with this Vi Honda. Hell yeah. Looking for a ghost mask out here, chat. Let me know if you see one. Ooh! Sepik Mon had his mask on when he was with me. The strange thing is, last I heard, he was at Asuka City. No! It's another one of these? Okay. Okay. We're okay, we're okay. Baron Mon looks cool, by the way. I see one. Good looking out, chat. <laughs> All right. I think there's no child on Earth who was like, oh, nice, back to Asuka City at that moment. I was hoping for another excuse to go back there. What sucks is like, hey, there. I can tolerate some shit like that. But it was basically, we just did this before we got in that subway. Oh, we're close. Growlmon level 26, we're close. Baronmon is a Patamon evolution. Cool. This is going to be one hit kill, too. You're going down. Dokugumon. Dokugumon. I want to see its close up, actually, because I love that it's a. You normally, like, its front hands are grabbing its hair. I messed up. I attacked it too quick. I think that's a cool element of that thing's design. Dead. You killed Dokugumon. Asuka City is this way. <laughs> These poor beta mon. Asuka City is the first one. You're right. I'm going to Seryu City right now. You're so right. You're so right. My bad, my bad, my bad, my bad, my bad, my bad. Thank you, chat. Oh boy. Did you miss any cool Digivolutions? Metal Mamemon is cool. I actually like Metal Mamemon. 
Um, I just haven't been giving it any attention because I'm so focused on getting Growlmon to level 30. And then we got Kyubimon for um, Kumamon, but it feels too non-canon. Do I have a go-to theater snack at the movie theater? Hell no. Um, I'll do Icy's. I was thinking about becoming a billionaire who uh, trashes his Icy's after the, the three good sips. <laughs> The craziest thing about Ices, this is insane. Every single one of them has three good sips where the entire time you're sucking through the straw, you are receiving liquid. And then after that, you it's only worse sips from there. It's just, the the they just, it starts drying up after three sips, every single one. Doesn't matter what size you get. It makes me so sad. Um, Icy's, yeah, you know, it's like the chopped up ice and juice. You know, it's like, uh, 7-Eleven has them too, but they're not called Icy's there. Slushies, Slurpees. Yeah. Yeah, it just kind of like dries up and you get very airy sucks from there then on, you know what I mean? You're just trying to take a sip and it's like half air. And then you're just moving the straw around like an oil rig waiting to find more liquid and it's all good. The, the best liquid is already gone. Doesn't matter how much you move that straw around. It's tapped, buddy. You had your three good sips. So me as a, by the way, secret billionaire. I get my Icy, I take my three good sips, hand it off, and then they hand me another Icy. <laughs> Next, please. Next. In Australia, they're called slushies. Yeah, you know what? Slushie might be more universal. I should say slushie. Explain why you have to be a billionaire? To buy multiple slushies? Just to take three sips from each? Come on, man. Even if you make $600,000 a year, that's irresponsible spending. I don't need to be here. This is not the city. Even if you're making, even, chat, even if you're making $700 million a year, it's irresponsible for you to be buying multiple slushies. <laughs> you must be a billionaire for it to make sense financially. Um. All right, so I'm at the city. We're looking for the mask now. It could be anywhere. Oh, around the gates? So I walked by him? There we go. Sepikmon. Oh, hey, look, I found my mask. Whoops. A way to defeat Zombamon? Sorry, no idea. <laughs> so anyway, I'm the one who found the mask, so I'm not going to tell you. So now do we go back to the haunted house? That sucked. Talk to a Digimon in the lower part of the city. Oh my god. This is this game is brutal sometimes with this stuff, man. Alright, so we're going here. Here. Dang. Hughes, thank you so much. I'm wondering if at this point I should just pull up the game FAQ. 
It, it seems like every 10 seconds, like once we get to another thing, I have to go ask chat. In your billionaire fantasy, are we at least filling the ICs up with the dome on top? Yeah, 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 yeah. I feel like that makes it worse even. Edamon was not here last time. I heard Sepikmon ran toward the Dabramon Lake, but he's one bad dude. I'm embarrassed that I'm the same type of Digimon as him. <laughs> I'm remembering now that in the uh, US dub, Edamon had an Elvis voice. <laughs> Go up and save. I love Edamon. I think his design is actually really cool. He made for a good villain for like an in-between arcs kind of situation. Obviously, Devimon is a better villain. But uh, Edamon was there for everybody to learn how to digivolve into Ultimate. Had the idea the other night to make a Game Jam theme would be a Chegduff licensed game. You know what's so funny about that? It's a great idea. I'm like so protective of like Chegduff that I wouldn't want to see it. I would be like, chat doesn't get Chegduff. <laughs> Chegduff wouldn't say that. <laughs> Besides, I do already know the theme for this year's Game Jam. Couple of months. What is it? It's like three months for this year's Game Jam? I already know the theme. And I think about it frequently. Would you hire someone to improve the icy machine or recipe to enable a higher good sip number? All right. So now we're talking about the very basis of being a billionaire, aren't we? Because no, I would not work to improve ICs for the world. I would simply buy more ICs for me. <laughs> I'm a billionaire. We can, we can work it out. We can figure out the science to create an IC that has seven good sips. We could do the R&D. What if the theme was unlicensed knockoff checked up games? Again, great idea. I already have the theme. I already know what it is. I am not soliciting concepts for the game jam. It's in here. How about in a future year, just make a licensed game for some IP you create with chat on stream. That's what we do every year. Uh, Ziv Chromebeak was made by chat. Uh, Divermon this way? That's a dead end. Divermon this way, though. I'm not sure I could remember any of the other names. Ziv Chromebeak is the one that stands out. And so funny to think that it was in supposed to be. The intention was Ziv Chromebreak. But Chromebeak took over. The typo that changed the world. Um, this is Divermon spot, right? One more screen to the Divermon. My god. Yep. Welcome to the game, my friend. Should we save? I'm feeling too confident. Oh my god. I should have saved. I should have saved.
Maybe a save. Too late, chat. We're in the wild now. Oh, 27. We're getting close. We're getting really close. You ever played or considered playing the Metabots RPG for GBA? Not the fighting game on Wii U Virtual Console. I think you'd love it. So I have played it, and I do not love it. The crazy thing is the game pops. Game looks good. I hate the battles. Chat, the battles in, in that Metabots game, they're so crazy. What you do is a turn, it's a turn-based RPG battle system. You target a particular part of your opponent. Like, okay, I'm gonna attack. You got, it's 3v3. I'm gonna attack this person's arm, right? Um, If you target a part that has been destroyed, your metabot's like, I don't know what to do. I guess I just lose this turn. Oh my God, it makes me so mad. I hate doing battles in that game. I hate them so much. They're so slow. Targeting parts of the metabots is not fun for me. It uh, very closely follows the uh, TV show style, which is cool. Yeah, man, and like at what point is that fun to you? When did you imagine that would be fun? To target body parts. It's just fun to like hurt a robot. Just hit the robot. Do I like the anime then? Big time. I haven't seen it, you know, since it came out. On Fox Kids. I have not seen the original anime. I've only seen it dubbed. But the uh, voice actor who did Meta B? Really good shit. Okay, everything is normal. Whoa, hey, who are you? Don't sneak up on me like that. You scared me. <laughs> uh, sorry, mister, but you're in my way. I'm not an old man. I'm Nick. I'm only 21. Okay? Okay. All right, I'm sorry. I'm sorry for calling you mister. Nick? Are there only rude people on this server? First, Edamon. And now you. Edamon? Hold on, did something happen? The Elvis monkey? I found this huge, gaudy shield. Then Edamon came and said that it was his. And took it from me without even saying thank you. Edamon? A gaudy shield. I wonder what that is. Uh... Hey, I'm pretty busy, so... Why aren't they doing their jobs? I wish they'd look at me in this example. Typical 21-year-old. Yep. Yeah. Absolute zoomer over there. Okay. So it is fine that we didn't save, chat. There was actually no threat. Nope, not here, not here, not here, not here. Ooh, is Edamon going to be back where we found him, or do we have to go to a different place to find Edamon? Is this game bad? No! No! Who said bad? No! Same place, okay. It's just, uh... Difficult in places. This game does pop, dude. This game pops the lights out. It's not just backtracking, it's like nonsensical backtracking. I came out here to find a mask. 
for a Digimon. And then I found that Digimon wearing its own mask. And then it's like, okay, I got my mask and now I'm not going to help you. And then we were just meant to know at that point to go walk around town and find a different Digimon to talk to. Does anyone remember Cubix? Cubix is still on the docket, I believe. We remember. I couldn't tell you what happens in a single episode of Cubix, however. Cubix robots for everyone. I do believe that they do battle. Everyone is assigned a robot, and then you battle your robots. Cubix Robots for Everyone is the subtitle. Is an Instagram account called Celebrity Breath where I just post a picture of a celebrity and then below them, one word I think their breath smells like? And when the picture was taken, what their breath smelled like when the picture was taken. Is that a good idea? I've seriously considered doing this. I would, you know, come up with three or four more ideas before committing to Celebrity Breath. You know what I mean? Just keep brainstorming. Put it to the side. It's on the whiteboard. <laughs> and then, you know, if, it, if it's still the best after you've written down three or four, maybe that's what we're going with. For me, I think it would have to be like very attractive celebrities and then like every single time it's something gross. It's like Elizabeth Hurley and then it's like wet slime. You know? Chris Martin. Hot dogs. All right, I'm scared Edamon's gonna come fight. That's why we saved. Edamon might wanna fight now that we're confronting him about the shield. Or this could just be more dialogue that leads us to another place. Really, there's no saying. Boy, am I excited today. Hey, Edamon. Uh, I got something I want to ask you, okay? Sure what? I'll tell you anything I know. <laughs> okay, so aren't you the one who was who has Sepikmon's mask? I don't know what you're talking about. No, 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 no. Don't just walk away. Oh, my God. We let him walk away. Oh, he's hiding something. All right. Where do we find Edamon next? Oh my gosh, you're right. It's 100%, 100% that would have been a, a sketch on Conan O'Brien. Oh my gosh, there he is. Okay. All right, I'll give it back, okay? Here, I handed over the sepic mask. No, you didn't. No, 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 no. Give me the actual sepic mask. He didn't hand me the real one. I know it. You handed me a dud, bro. 
Okay, so do I take this back to the ghost house now? Chris Pratt Bog Moss is really good, chat. Honestly, if the account just posts different pictures of Chris Pratt and it says Bog Moss every day. That's nice. <laughs> it's in your key items if you want to check. So the thing is, last time I got handed a fake ID card. And we knew it was fake the second it hit our inventory. So now I can't even trust our inventory, you know? Finding Edamon again right there took me hours in my playthrough. That's funny. At least in that case, you see him walking away to actually where he's going. But I, w I could see why you would never return to that area after the first time you've been there. Ooh, 28, dos mas. Mid Max Show Raiders, hey, hey, what's been happening? What's well, Mid Max streaming today? Yeah, we were just talking about how Ben Hansen doesn't watch enough documentaries about the creative process. <laughs> Displayed through all of FF14 in Theater Rhythm. That's cool. That's really, really cool. Welcome to Digimon World 3. Woojack, thanks for gifting that sub. Digimon World 3 is a wild game in that the story is loose. The quests are loose. But the combat is tight. That's 32 songs. Oh, so that's like a whole stream. That's cool. Wait, how many songs does Theater Rhythm have? Kyle, have you watched the Double Fine documentary? No, it's too damn long. Who's going to watch that whole thing? It contains Good King Moogle Mog, my favorite track. All right, so multiple people in chat are indeed watching the entire documentary. It's episodes, not one 22-hour event. That's that chat. That's true. I have a hard time looking at it without seeing it as the 22-hour event. But you're right. If you just you know nibble at it, I'm sure it's different. It's bite-sized episodes. I thought they're all one hour long. Think of it as a TV series. Yeah, that's what I'm doing. That's a big commitment. I could watch like a TV series with, you know, fantastical elements or a TV series about people making a video game that actually exists in real life. You know? Let me ask you this, let me ask you this. In the first, in the first four episodes, in the first four, in the first four, does anyone become upset? Is anyone visibly upset in the first four episodes? Eddie Kaylee, thanks for being a 22 monther. And the Black Rose, thanks for being an eight monther. Absolutely? Yeah, that's the thing is I do need drama. I guess my suspicion is that it's like vid doc style where it's maybe overly pro uh, promotional, if you get what I mean. That's my number one fear about its tone. <laughs> Kyle. 
Can I send you one clip and you can stream it with a reaction? One clip. If it pops, if it pops, if the clip pops, we'll consider it. If, if the clip dies, that's the thing. I will not watch this documentary series. It rides on this one clip. <laughs> okay, here we go. We got the clip. We got the clip. Let's do this fight. Let's fight this Yanmamon and then let's check out the clip. Okay, here we go. <laughs> here we go. Villains of Crunch Mode is the title of episode 27. So we're deep in. We're deep in. Here we go. Um, join the next meeting. I got a little Christmas Santa chair to sit here. So Friday was the team meeting where we were going to discuss some issues I'd brought up on Slack. Oh, no. About crunch culture. I was just letting them know that from a peon standpoint, this is what we're looking at. Like letting them know this is what, if you were down here where I am looking up, this is what it looks like. And I had made, I'd made a lengthy Slack post about some things that I saw that different people were doing that taken together had me a little worried. The music. And Ooh. It started a big discussion. That shot. Hi there. Lots of good thoughts here. I'd love to respond with the brilliant anti-crunch mode manifesto, but today is my one day of the week to write dialogue. So instead, I look forward to discussing this all with you at the P2 meeting this Friday. And, uh... Tim wanted to have... Two thumbs up. ...that discussion with the team in the team meeting. And I want to talk about, there was a, um, a discussion on Super Double Fine about um, crunch mode, and, and I want to make sure they're absolutely clear about how we all feel about that, and so I wanted to have that discussion here instead of on Slack, because I'm so uncomfortable. Yeah, this is the office, man. I'm so uncomfortable right now. I get it. Yeah, 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 we're in this room. Oh my God. I think it would be a little more productive. And, um, and first, I just want to open it up to people here. But my experience in the past is that crunch for me was something that was mandatory, that we didn't have a choice, yeah. that they brought in food because they expected that we would be there, and that if we weren't there, we got a lot of pushback from our managers and from coworkers. And I don't, for me personally, get that feeling here, that the reason they bring in dinners is because they know sometimes people work an hour or two late but not that they're expecting people to work late or that you guys even want people to work late. The things that definitely are true <laughs> this there, raised, I want to make sure this hand, that, so that like, we want to, <laughs> we care a lot about crunch mode and, okay. um, All right. uh, and not having it. To me, crunch mode is um, when a company knowingly hands far too much work for a team to do and demands it to be done at a certain time and knowing that it will take away the, the team's personal life and being okay with that and exploiting that. But has anyone here felt like that's the case? Yeah, I think Jeff does too much. <laughs> I think Jeff what takes on too much Jeff work. Sorry to call you out. I don't think Jeff comes here at night because there's food, though. No, no. I know. <laughs> <laughs> but what I'm saying Believe is, me, my waistline says no. Like. But the, the second statement about the more than five consecutive days, maybe we do have a hard set deadline. I don't think anybody on the project knows what that is. At least a lot of people don't. November 2nd. It's, it's been I've heard other dates. Okay, that November are farther, 2nd. That are farther than that. So I'm, I'm telling you, and I said it in Slack, oh. you're, you guys all need to be pencils down on your game on November 2nd. 
It is also about a year away, and it can slip because ga it's games not going to slip. Oh, people were feeling a squeeze, and sometimes I think you're going to feel a squeeze in development. We were having our most successful milestone over a year out from ship. It was kind of worrisome to start feeling a squeeze. It is one of those things where, from my perspective, it feels like a slippery slope. Uh, that's all. That's so, where it came so from. So to be clear, this project has already slipped twice. Yeah. So, it, and given where we are... This is tricky. Carol's wearing a double fine sweater. Carol's wearing the, the company logo stitched into her sweater. And this guy, oh my gosh. As a company and what we need to do, oh no. it actually can't slip again. Like, I'm, I'm here to tell you, like, I know what the next five years looks like. And this project will need to be scoped back, changed, altered. But that's the date we have to hit. Because, like, that's the agreement we made with Microsoft. I want to say something Ooh. to Amy, because I know it's, wow. not, it's not crazy to look. The first time I saw Working Meals be announced on a project, I'm like, Ugh. that is, does seem a little weird because we, I, we fought really hard against Crunch Mode, right? And so to buy Working Meals, I've always been against, oh, it's so great to work at this tech company. They do my laundry and da da da, da. I'm like, that's like a trap to get you to work, stay at work all the time. We don't really like that kind of stuff. But if after, you know, I've come to, I come to accept it because if after all those steps of being participatory in your scheduling, of, of, of estimating your own tasks and being involved in the scoping, someone's like, you know, uh, the deadlines, is, the milestones is Friday, and if I stayed a little extra, I could actually land this thing a lot better than I could have. And if, if Tucker wants to buy Jeff a new mommy burger, then that's fine. I, I, I accept that. I think it's great. I don't want to, you know, it's not like, you know, Tucker's going around and asking, are you staying late? It's so far hard that he's got to be the boss. He knows exactly what he's how what he is saying sounds like. This is wild. This is crazy access. And one thing I'm really surprised by is how many cameras they have in the room. Oh no, 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 no. you know, and like that's and the thing I just I kind of never want to hear again a slippery slope because I just want, I guess, I guess I want a little more trust in that because the reason we, we know about the slippery slope is that we, we like, as a company, climbed from the bottom of that slope. We didn't start at the top and mess up. You know, like we, my career started at the bottom with, with being the victim of crunch mode on Monkey 1 and 2 and then internalizing that and being a perpetrator of crunch mode on, on all my games after that until Psychonauts and throughout Psychonauts. I was a, like a, a villain of crunch mode. I was like... What do you, you know, I really, because I was mostly just True so focused, this game here. has to be good. You're yeah. either working with me to make this game good or you're my arch enemy. And I was very intense about that kind of stuff. And, and it was through by having the worst crunch mode of all time on, 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 um, uh, on Psychonauts. And then all of us just like, you know, most made more intense by trying to save the company. You know, we, we all stopped and we're like, holy fuck. And we like um, crawled up like the Windsor Waterworks of Crisco <laughs> water slides to get up the top of that slippery slope and then just don't Can't be the people the who shots walk by are and be like, careful that's a slippery slope because yeah I'm hooked yeah that's a good clip that's a good clip that's some good shit you're right chat this is it's way more real and raw than I expected I actually can't believe they published this I can't believe they published the line, like, we got to get it out November 2nd. That's the agreement we have with Microsoft. And yeah, I can't believe for what? What is it, like two years they had this many cameras in every single room they went into? That's so crazy. That's NDA level discussion. It is. Yeah, it's wild. Hit play for 30 more seconds. You get 30 more. All right. We definitely are very familiar with it, and we don't let that kind of stuff happen here. Uh, what I was hearing was, this isn't an issue. I was like, okay, well, I disagree. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and that was, that was the whole thing, but it turned into a bad, <laughs> a really bad back and forth. Mm. And I just burnt down, like I cried. There are many different things. Well. But all I've gotten in this conversation is that I did it wrong, that I shouldn't say it, and that we're trying, and that I should just have faith in. I've heard that so many times in this room about so many things. I think everyone knows your intentions. You had good intentions, and I know you're looking out for the team. Everyone knows that. I don't, that's not what I'm hearing. I don't think anyone said just have faith. 
And I don't think anyone said, don't bring this stuff up. That's well, bullshit. Well, you're the one who literally said that you don't want to hear about the slippery slope. I don't want, I, saying slippery slope to us is just doesn't respect our history as a company. Like we're going to accidentally have crunch mode. Whoops. Saying that it's a ship year doesn't have respect for me as someone who's been in this industry for 10 years. <sighs> for all of us, we went through this a lot ourselves. Like my blood pressure is off the roof because of the crunch I did on Psychonauts. And I understand its impact on our health, our lives, and what it has on the end product. So please, please, please have faith and understand this is something that we take extremely seriously. And I'm so <laughs> glad we're able to have this conversation because the first thing I said to my husband bro, was, bro. can you imagine this at EA? Like somebody speaking up would have that been man like, is asleep. Fine. You're fine. immediately, you're fucking gone. <laughs> Sorry, you don't talk like that. And the fact that we, we can do this here is amazing. That's all, that's all I want to say. So thanks for sitting here talking. Um, and that's all I have to say. All right. Sorry I ate into your lunchtime. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Palate cleanser. Okay, okay. Random post-credit clip of Penn Ward in the Double Fine Doc series. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Are we allowed in the universe? What? Oh, I thought you said, are we allowed in the universe? I was like, holy shit. <laughs> are we allowed? <laughs> are we allowed in the universe is a better question. Honestly, yeah, it's a way better question than are we alone in the universe. Did chat earn cookies and cream? Yeah, 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 yeah. My perception of what that was, what the documentary was versus what it clearly is, is very different. You got to pay your dues before it's all cookies and cream. You're lucky Min Max came in, chat. I got shaved. Now I'm nervous about getting shaved, dude. Getting shaved means, like, getting interrupted in a voice that sounds like it's solid reason, but is borderline hypocritical. <laughs> I'm scared of getting shaved. Wild how watching an uncomfortable work meeting feels exactly like me. I know. I, it legitimately got me on edge. It made me, like, tense. Yeah, that, that scene made me tense. Okay, so I mean, the question is, chat, you're the boss of the game studio, right? People are staying late. Would you feed them? Or do you demand they go home? People will act differently knowing they're on camera. I think um, generally that's true, but I think at a certain point, they say, they say like when they're recording documentaries, it takes like a few days, but generally people just kind of forget. They just start showing you their worst sides. They almost like forget, you know, to filter themselves. Ethically, you demand they go home. Any good boss I ever had told me to GTFO after five. <laughs> All right. I see it, chat. I see it. I watched that full 10-year highlight video of you yesterday. That was unbelievably good. Hats off to the editor for putting that all together. All that stuff. That was Turbo Chicken Man in chat, actually. Yeah, that was fun. That's a video I said was too damn long, but I got hooked. Honestly, I could watch probably like five hours of myself. I just find myself generally very entertaining. 
Um, but I think it was very well edited. It was good, good, good mix of clips. Nothing lingered for too long. Yeah, it was nice to like be able to pause and talk about it for sure. It's a huge topic in AAA development. How do you support the people as best you can and realistically operate under the circumstances of a deadline, but also make sure you're making a current, making a decent culture? In general, I think it's better to be a little over the top and saying, hey, go home if it's too late. A little over the top, you mean like forceful. Yeah. Get out. Stop it. Stop it. It's okay. It's okay if our meta score goes down by point one. Go home. <laughs> yeah. It's tricky. I'm a person who is very susceptible to uh, willing overtime. I'm somebody who probably would need to be shouted at, you know? Ooh, we're close. One away, baby. One away. A big aspect of crunch is also recognizing which groups get pushed into OT scenarios when most often. There's a big reason why it's mainly QA teams unionizing because they and CS roles are the most abused when it comes to OT. That makes sense to me. They literally say that at some point in the documentary, they literally say this will make our Metacritic score go down by one, but fuck it, we'll take it. Good. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Good attitude. What time did delayed input go up last week? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was a crunch time upload, no doubt. Pokey Clyde, thanks for being a 33 monther. This is my favorite Digimon World game. There's a really hard boss in the swamp somewhere. Don't know if you reached him yet. I reached a really hard random battle that one shot my entire team. Swept swept my entire team with one hit each each Digimon. Brutal. Yeah, and you know the stories I share about, like, QA crunch time chat was, like, this is toxic to admit, right? We were stoked because we'd be getting more money. When it when it came to crunch time, we're like, oh, crunch is up. We're coming in on Saturday. Hell yeah. <laughs> it was like, it, it sounds, it's really bad for me to say that out loud, obviously. But this is what I'm talking about. Like, I was so susceptible. It's like, I was stoked to get, like, a bigger paycheck that week. I appreciate when my coworkers get on a case about it. That's really, really interesting. I get it. Because, like, the thing is, like, the work, the healthy work you do will be better. I get that. You would stream during your lunch at GT. Yeah. But I would still eat at some point. <laughs> it's not like I didn't eat that day. All right, so we got Sepik Mom's Mask. So the Sepik Mon we found outside by the gate was not the real Sepik Mon? Was that Edamon wearing Sepik Mon's Mask? What's wrong? Put it on and come on out. Come on. Um, can you look the other way for a second? All right. Dude, Sepikmon's face. Oh, it's a paper bag. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> they made a custom paper bag Sepikmon head just for this one scene, which I truly appreciate. The gaudy shield is the mask. You don't see that, chat? They're one in the same. 
Did I extend the Pokemon Game Boy games to the NSO bet? No, I did not. Whatever happens on Pokemon Day, well, it's we're, it, none of that will matter toward our bet. Much more like it. I feel so much better. Look like at Boomerang. I'll give this to you. What's the smelly herb? So Zombomon hates the smell of smelly herb. It's great. He'll run away for sheer. Really? Thanks. You're a lifesaver. Okay. You too. Good luck. Huh. I was hoping to defeat that Digimon, not make him run away due to my stink. DMAC Gamer. Thanks for being a 21 monther. How you liking this game? Any Flame Germon? Also, Flame Germon is your fave. I, um. Did not make a lot of progress in the game today. I like it, but the stuff we played so far today, not solid. Unfortunate questing so far today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think it's about culture. So there are people who just work better with crunch. But if you allow that to flourish, if you like allow that in your office, I can see how that could make it bad for everybody. You gotta rein in the Crunchmeisters. Two kind of styles for OT and game dev. The super shitty death march crunch, which lasts for years, right? But then there's some limited scale last mile OT to get a project out the door that can be more ethical. Right. The death march shit is like the Schreier books. I'm an accountant. I definitely work better when the deadline is closer. That's funny. That's funny because I imagine people who are accountants are, um... Ooh. ooh. Alright, we might have to do one more fight. We got to level 30. I imagine accountants are very efficient. Very, um... Uh, I, I don't know, like self-reliant. You know what I mean? Like I, I'm an accountant. I got it. I got, I'm going to do this much work, this amount of days. I know exactly how much it'll take that time to do that kind of thing. I can regulate myself. That's a stereotype. hundred percent. I stereotyped all accountants. And where's my new where's my new Digimon form chat? Did I finally awaken my X gene? I did. My X gene is active. Unfortunately, my mutant power is just that I become excessively slippery. No villain can hold me. You need 80 electricity resist. Okay. So let's see where we're at now. How many uh, Leo Mon training sessions will it take? Just a couple. Just a couple. We have TP5. We could, we could get there with one good training session, but it'd be nice to get two. See pinned comment. Um, I think it's gone. (laughs) 
like Hakan from Street Fighter? Yeah, obviously it's just natural. It's my mutant ability. So I don't I don't need oil all over my body. I just become oily. Can't be grabbed. So like I'm really good against Juggernaut, but very bad against any like psychic mutant shit. Oh, okay. It was the thing about the electric resist. Okay, so as you can see, it's 66. It's our weakest stat. We will have to grind it at Leomon's, but I feel like it can wait until the next time we see Leomon. I do think it's time to bring Kumamon back up, actually. Oh, and there's going to be another gym coming up. Excellent. Yeah, you told me about that gym last week. Um, okay, so right now we're going back into the scary part where we can get one-shotted if we run into that scary Digimon with the sword. <laughs> Is Slipstream taken? As an X-Men name? Is Slipstream in the Marvel database? Because that could be my mutant name. Did I hit 30? We hit 30. Yeah. We'll see about that. Look what I've got. Oh. Ugh. Is it, oh, is that a smelly herb? I can't, I can't take it. All right, I'll back down this time, okay? But I won't forget this kid. Damn, Slipstream is taken. Davis Cameron is Slipstream. What are his powers? He can form a quantum portal or funnel transpatial energy that swallowed up him and any passengers to transport them across vast distances. Boring. Boring. Oh, I forgot your Cubimon right now. We don't need this. We don't want this. We don't. First Bakamon fight. How about Grease Hog? Yeah, chat, do a search for Grease Hog and see if that's taken. Love that hand. That was cool. <laughs> Jay Garcia, thanks for being a 13-monther. What about Brother Butter? Oh my god. Yeah, Brother Butter is really good. <laughs> we can make it work. We can make it work. No, I don't I don't want to work on Cubimon at all. Brother Butter, go! I got your back, BB. Break time? Uh, we should save. We should save before break time. Cubimon is cool? Hmm, Cubimon is not cooler than Grismon. Grismon is absolutely more of a canonical digivolution. And... The main reason we're going to grind Grismon is that we need to get Grismon to level 30 to get Kumamon's next Digivolution. So we got to work on our Grizz. Cool environment, man. <laughs> Yeah, 
Yeah, come on. Oh, dude, look at Demi Devimon. Good shit, game. Any Polyrath or Shiftry art? There was incredible Polyrath art this week, yes. Would they just say bro butt for short for brother butter? No, they say BB. They say BB. What did you think of the level 30 Evo? Blaze Akuno. You might note we did not receive an evolution at level 30. Apparently, I got to get my thunder resist up as well. We received some faulty intel. Are you actually greasy to touch or has your skin just become naturally frictionless? Um, all right. So have you ever touched that sand? That's like liquid and sand at the same time. It's like that. And so it's like, yeah, it is like my skin is my skin, but it like, it feels so slippery and it has the physics of a slippery object. Kinetic sand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kinetic sand. Get your grandmas to buy you some. Just get your grandmas to buy you some. Don't ask me what kinetic sand is. Ask your grandmas. <laughs> Do I need special shoes? So no, the slipperiness only... Professor X believes it to be a psychic thing where like... It's like a defense mechanism. I'm only slippery in the parts where villains are touching me. Except, from time to time, my nose might droop. That's the scene in the movie where they're like, oh no, our child is a mutant. They're singing happy birthday to me, right? <laughs> He's turning 16 years old. They're like, happy birthday to you. And like, so the scene, the camera is from behind my back and you see the whole table. You see everybody singing, but they start trailing off. Nobody, by the end of the song, nobody's singing camera spins around to see that my nose has drooped. <laughs> oh no. Our child is a mutant. Hell yeah, dude. What kind of wild way will the Marvel writers reinterpret this power in a very broken way? I guess that the slipperiness uh, goes beyond the physical realm. And so, like, if Galactus tries to, like, squish Earth and eat it up, I still slip out. If Thanos snaps you, you still slip out. It becomes a quantum slip. That's right. So we got lucky we did not run into that nasty sword samurai Digimon again. Or maybe just tremendously unlucky that we ran into him in the first place. This seems like it. This seems like the place to save. Jungle Shrine. This does not seem like it. Ooh, a purple Numamon. What are you? Just a new Lamont. <laughs> okay. <laughs> the
This place is dangerous. Leave, says chat. Uh-oh. Okay, 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 okay. We gotta go, buddy. Trying to flee? Numamon fled. Okay, 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 okay. We both fled. Go, 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 go. Okay. Yeah, that Numamon probably could have messed us up. We're lucky it fled away. Butter Brother wins again. BB slips away. BB, help! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, Butter Brothers unfortunate character flaw is that he is cowardly. Oh, there's our gym. We'll go to the gym. We'll go to the gym. But our first order of business is to save. Is it? Oh my god. Okay, we're taking a break after we train and then once we get to a save point. Let's just train. Okay, we'll train and then we'll take our break. Can we take Shelmon? We seem to be in too deep right now, dude. Yeah. It's been a while since they presented a threat like this. I like it. Good kill. Good kill. Good kill. Good kill. Ooh, we're getting those Grismon levels easy, dude. We might have two new evolutions after the break pretty quick. All right, so here we're crossing our fingers that Giamon uh, can get that lightning resistance up to 80 in one training sesh. With five TP. Thunder defense. Here we go. That's funny. That's uh, Elekmon. We recognize those tails. Bro, these custom sprites. Nice. Yes? No. Oh, shit. Didn't make it, chat. And our wisdom went down by three. That was brutal. That was brutal. All right, that's where we take our break. We suffered a big loss here. That was a big loss for us. Didn't love that moment. No, I let it ride. I let it ride. Giamon got two for three. You know what I mean? It was silly to expect us to get the three for three. Yeah, rewind would have been nice. I definitely would have done it right there. But no, 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 no. We can get an, we can get we can get Giamon to level up one more time, get you to level fifteen, then with five more TP, easy resistance training, easy, easy, easy. So uh, we'll get it. 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 No need to be dour here. Chin up, chat. All right. Let's take a quick break. When we get back, we'll have our chins very high up. Max chin height. And we'll, uh, we might just grind on the beach. Baby, we'll grind on the beach.
We're back, baby. Hello, chat. Are these super recent art submissions, or does it go back quite a bit? It goes back all the way to the birth of, well, my first solo streams after Easy Allies. Um, so it goes back to Legend of Dragoon are the first pieces in there. Mooch, what are you doing, dude? This is aggressive. You're being aggressive. You're being an aggressive cat. This is aggression. <laughs> He's purring. <laughs> He's purring the whole time, too. Is Legendary of Dragoon a good recommendation for somebody who likes Shining Force? I mean, the tactics won't be there for you, but it is such a good JRPG. Legend of Dragoon is nice. Hey, bud. Uh, something I like about it is that your party members kind of matter. It's actually... fun to pick your party members and try to optimize who you select on your team in that game. I like it a lot. Alright, so, first things first is we're going to put Guillemon back up front to try to level you up one more time, get five more TP to raise our... My bad. Hey! Aggressive. Raise our lightning resistance above 80. Was Shortmon a thing when this game came out? I don't know what Shortmon looks like. I don't know a lot about Digimon history. Pixel art in this game looks great. It does. Hey! Uh-uh. Aggressive. Yeah, you know what you did. He's going. Oh, the Shortcake one. No, that one seems new. I love Shortmon. Yeah, I got a card of Shortmon and the thing at Wedding Cakemon. Not a lie. Wedding Cakemon was real, right? Damn, Guillemon did not do a lot of damage there despite having the Zweihander. These Shellmon are worthy opponents. Hell yeah. Shortmon debuted in 2010. Yeah, I'd be curious if other people talk about Wild Arms 2, Ty. Is, uh, I feel like chat was definitely pushing for Wild Arms 1 when that first came onto PS5. Um, but I haven't heard anybody talking up Wild Arms 2. Wild Arms 2, I think, is the one I rented. And did not connect with. It was a regrettable rental. Wild Arms 3 is the PS2 one. I played a lot of that game. Dang, more Shellmon. And, uh... Mm, it might be the fire element on our regular attack that is making that so weak. Definitely quit like halfway through that RPG. Didn't connect with Wild Arms 3 either. I think I preferred Digimon names when they were Japanese and or made up. Like, Kabuterimon sounds cool to me. Shellmon does not. Do you think that Shellmon hasn't been around as long as Kabuterimon? Shellmon's old. You ever played Dragon Quest 1? Yes! I played it in college. I went to a used game store picked up a blank NES cart. 
that they were selling for dirt cheap. They said, we don't know what's on it. Buy this, buy this at your own risk. And I said, okay. And it was Dragon Warrior. So fun. Brother Buttermon was first. Okay, Jack. Wedding Cakemon or Alchemy Gigantamax? You don't have to send me an image of Alchemy Gigantamax. My answer, answer is Wedding Cakemon. Bro, this beach is all Shellmon. At least it's good XP, I guess. Good gains. But man... It is crazy, Guillemon's speed is so jacked up, has not dodged one attack from Shellmon. Will Dragon Quest 3 make the docket? You talk about the HD remix? Frankly, it's got a shot. I would love to start it because not a real level game. We need we need Guillemon to get level 15. I assume that beginning is not as drawn out as something like a Yakuza first eight hours, you know? You ever done Ocarina of Time or Majora's Mask on stream before? I would... No. Neither either of those. And I would actually love to do Majora's Mask, which I've never finished. I got the 3DS version and dropped off after... Oh my gosh. The cow mission. The UFO cow mission. Where I completed it and I felt so happy. But it turns out you gotta do two things. You gotta do something after the cow mission. So that meant that on a new day, I would have to do the UFO cow mission again to do the special thing that you have to do immediately after it. And I said, you know what? I'm good. And I just dipped out of that game. Majora's Mask legitimately annoys me. There it is, Guillemon. Love to see you blocking, buddy. Love to see you blocking. The N64 version would just be more annoying. I assumed you finished all Zeldas. Never finished Zelda 1. Never finished Zelda 2. Never finished A Link to the Past. Never finished Majora's Mask. But then I think you're right. After that point... There it is, baby. Okay, 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 okay. Let's go training. Let's go training. After that, it's pretty much every Zelda game. Just have Damiani guide you through Majora's Mask? That's a nightmare. You can go one TP at a time? He's only five away. He's only five away, so I think that makes sense. Let's do one at a time. Shit. This doesn't make sense at all. This was the dumbest idea Chad ever had. No, it makes sense. It makes sense. It makes sense. Okay, now we just need one more. We just need one more. Team Bounce, thanks for being a 27 monther. Yeah, Spirit Tracks? I love Spirit Tracks. I have nothing bad to say about Spirit Tracks. Nice try.
Brad finished Majora's Mask recently, but wasn't insanely hot on it. It's an annoying game. Straight up annoying. The Spirit Track song is your favorite Zelda song? Me too, Classy's Tobo. Best overworld theme. Hands down. Hands down. And? Gosh, I hate doing TP once. speed up though little by little a lot of games you play on stream are annoying <laughs> okay fair enough now I haven't picked up Metroid Prime remaster yet because I want to like I'll want to play it uh, I did just finish Wario 3 so to be honest with you like thinking it through it's between my next like off offline game uh getting trying to get back into bayonetta 3 i think i should do that first i bought bayonetta 3 but never got into it dude um like stopped after level one just couldn't vibe with it so it would be nice to try give it another shot you know um, but then, yeah, I, I'm, I might be pretty into, uh, picking up Metroid Prime. Thoughts on Wario Land 3? It's, the structure of the game is so fun. From the basis of, the treasures that you collect can unlock new areas of previous levels or unlock new levels. And sometimes two different treasures from two different levels combined to create something that then unlocks new levels or new areas of old levels. I love that. A lot of the levels um, are really well themed. You, they feel like active environments. They feel like sensible spaces that would exist. But uh, I hate the mechanics of that game so much. The game's just designed to annoy you. And it's like, it becomes unfunny. Are you mentally done with Engage? Oh my god. Yeah, I guess so. Didn't even come up. I'm right there. I'm two chapters away from finishing that game. Okay, here we go. Now we should unlock a new Digimon. Stingmon? That's the evolution of Warmon. I don't know, Chad. I think we'll stick with Growlmon. I think we'll stick. Max for the game is being a 32 monther, a few days late, but congrats on the 10 years. Been there since day one, and I look forward to the next 10 years. Thank you. Thank you very, very much. Total deaths for Engage has gone up. We've lost a few. But I, like, don't care anymore. Yeah, we know what Sting Mom looks like. I was honestly hoping for more of a freak than Stingmon. Um, alright, and then I think another reason that I have not clicked at all with Bayonetta 3 is I put it on baby mode. Where she auto-combos. And I think that... At that point, you almost actually become too disconnected from the game itself. She auto combos and auto dodges. Yeah, look at Stigmon here. Cool freak. Cool freak. But if we wanted this freak, we would have gotten Wormmon, you know? Give us a final death count. Yeah, I'll have to give you a death count.
the problem was there it's it to me unofficial there was one run where i could have succeeded i could have won but three people died and i reset thereby tarnishing the deaths of everyone who had come before so at that point like it's like game over already it's like what's the point anymore Yeah, I feel like we gotta stick with Gralmon. So, chat, am I to understand that those are the three options? For the entire game, those are the three things that Giamon can turn into? What kind of bet would you have to lose to do a legendary run of Halo 1? I never want to do a legendary Halo ever again. <laughs> Playing Halo Infinite on hard mode was just rough. You get lots more. Okay, 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 phew. I don't want to explain without spoiling. Okay, copy that, chat. Copy that. So, um, Metal Mamaimon gets an evolution at level 40. So it does sound like it makes sense to now invest our time into Metal Mamaimon. Sure. Good shit, chat. Um, but before that, we should get Grismon up to level 30. Yup. Okay. YouTube! Thanks for being a 33-monther. Sort. I'm always looking for the word order. Sort. Yeah, man, that, that, I still think about how miserable that run of Halo Infinite made me. <laughs> still think about it. Still salty. Kumamon is not as good as taking down Shellmon, dude. How smart is Kumamon? Oh, are we going to have to uh, train intelligence? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm so sorry that I keep forgetting it has a cool ability, Jack. My bad. EA Sports is reportedly considering Madden 24 a make or break game. If the public disapproves, the game leadership will change. Madden 23 has been really awful with bugs for gameplay and modes for context. That is very interesting. Do I have a game that is near platinum for a future platinum bell stream? Do I? April 1st, Marvel's Avengers. The platinum is coming. Oh man, we're so close to Grismon level 30? Hell yeah. That'd be so cool if uh, Madden takes a season off. I'd be happy for him. They played Fire Emblem Path of Radiance. Just started it after enjoying Engage and I can't put it down. Story is 10 times better than Engage. That's the GameCube one, right? I started it in college and didn't have patience for it. But I bet I would like it today. Have you heard of Ship of Harkarian? It's a PC port of Ocarina with modern camera controls. 60 FPS, up to 4K resolution. It runs off an Ocarina of Time debug ROM. No. That's pretty cool. You've been near for how long now? Just, well, I've been just two trophies left for years. But I haven't been attempting to get those trophies this whole time. Hammer rush! Oh, man. When they don't have a custom animation, I'm disappointed. Oh, that killed, though. 
Good God, buddy. Chat promised. Grismon 30. Here we go. Here we go. Digivolve learned. Digitamamon. Ooh, there's our freak. There's our freak. Tell me about investing in Digitamamon. Do we need to get this bad boy up to, like, level 50 or something? Quick summary of the story is three kids uh, got enough money to finally go to the store where they transport your body into the digital realm to play a game called Digimon World? No, I forget what the actual name of the game is. Anyway, it's like a massively multiplayer online game, but your body is in there. Um, we, are, we adventured around as we would, but we learned that there's a hacker named Lucky Mouse who's up to some shit in the digital world. Look at his little butt dance, dude. That's so cool. Um, they put the system down for maintenance. Nobody is allowed to leave the digital realm right now. But we're just continuing our, like, MMO quests. So far, on our end, basically nothing bad has happened. Um, so Digitamamon does get evolutions. So I should, I could, I should work on this little bad boy. He does not. Oh, he gets no evos. I'm sorry. I read that completely wrong. Oh, shit. A dead end. So we should go back to Grismon. We're stuck in a game, but almost everyone is just pumped about it. Right. Because we're, we get free minutes in the digital realm right now. Oh boy, that's a bummer. QB if you want more. Nah, we know what QB turns into. Yeah, alright, okay. Bummer, dude, bummer. We finally got our little freak, but that's a dead end. Dead end freak. So, I guess we'll grind Giamon. You said we had to get Giamon. One of Giamon's up to level 40. Metal Mamemon. Yep. Alright, so we'll be working on Metal Mamemon now. Okay, so it sounded like you said Mommy? I did not say Mommy. I didn't say Mommy. I didn't say Mommy. We're going to play it back and you're going to hear mommy or we could just continue on with this session. <laughs> and 190 machine defense. That's crazy, dude. Let's see where we're at now. Where are we at now with machine defense? Can we get a list of banned Digimon? It would be a lot of people. The list of banned Digimon would be too easy because I think we would all hate the same Digimon. <laughs> Oh, 136 we're at. So we need to we need to we need to pump it up, no doubt, but it is one of our higher stats, so we're okay on our machine defense. That's nice. Yeah, 40 is a long way away. I bet by the time Metal Mommy Mon is level 40, we'll be way above that defense curriculum. That's not the right word. Uh, <laughs> mandate? <laughs> What's our noun here, chat? What's our noun? 
You know what? I'm stoked to do a train uh, Metal Mami Mon. Nice. Uh oh. Oh my god. Brutal. You have no tech. I would love a stream where you look at and judge obscure fighting game characters like the Pokemon stream. Ooh, that speed. Nice. Speed paid off there. That Woodmon was going to suck us for more. We're stoked. There you go, little buddy. 38 to go. Requirement. I like requirement. Yeah, 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 yeah. All I had to say was the word requirement, and we all would have known what I was, what I was talking about. Weird little nook there. You know there's going to be some NPC later on who's like, I didn't take the shield. That'll happen. Um, it's a, it's a hobby. I love to look at rosters of fighting games. Bro, that's just regular attack. It's not even tech. Metal Mami Mon has a Wolverine Claw. Do note. The mainline Evos that are mainstream are the ones that receive further evolutions that lead to weirder Evos. Unfortunately, those side branches all have large requirements like 40. Eventually, you need to get some Evos from 0 to 99 to get their highest evolution. How come Metal Mami Mon's got one? Gosh, I hate that. It sounds like, um... It sounds like you should really just stick with your canon evolutions. Tatsunoko versus Capcom? Yeah, but I've seen it. I like to look at, like, a Super Nintendo arcade... Like 1994, 1995 fighting game that I've never heard of before. Just look at their characters. It's so fun. Evo lineup getting announced tomorrow. Now, Evo's in August. Street Fighter 6 will be on there, baby. You heard of Primal Rage? I have, of course. One of the coolest arcade games at the... Indoor soccer field my sister played at. <laughs> they had, um... I think it was Marvel vs. Capcom 1 and Primal Rage. And so it was worth it to have to go to my sister's soccer games. No big whoop. Just give me a few quarters. I'll just watch the intro screens. I could compete in Evo this year. I could do it. You think I'm not going to be excellent at Street Fighter? Come on, chat. You know better than that. Dark Force, thanks for being a 30... Oh, three, thank you for being a 33-monther. Big fan of the fart attacks in Primal Rage. Okay. Uh, I do not like those. You're a giant ape. Crazy thing about Primal Rage is that you're all gods. You're dinosaurs and apes that are gods to these tiny, regular-sized humans. And you can, like, eat them for health. But uh, you can also fart if you must. Then while that's being a six-monther, I believe in you. Thank you. 
what was my enjoyment level for the finals last night? Hi. Um, it would have been nice to see Idom in there, who is my fave. But uh, Mena RD, probably my second fave. So seeing him take it was pretty sweet. Pawn shop. Waku Waku 7, yes. Bio Freaks, no. Um, Fighting Vipers, yes. Fighting Vipers is definitely one that I was on the Wikipedia page for. Like, who's in this? Chat. Do you see what I see? They're expensive, but you don't have to level up. No TP required. Cool. Permanent stat upgrades. That's nice. Ending Walker making it to Grand Finals would have been crazy. Yeah, but also, like, I'm so glad... Sorry, so Ending Walker is a 17-year-old kid who showed up just started playing Street Fighter V, I think, like two years ago. And competing at a very high level. I kind of like the reality, chat, that he didn't make it all the way to Grand Finals. You know what I mean? It's like the, it's like the chaos everyone's rooting for, you know? It's like all the people who are just, like, rooting against Mena RD because he's using Luke. It's like, okay, but, like, accept this reality. <laughs> Bad finals because Luke won. Like, all right. No, I'm going to keep Patamon in the party. Ooh, let's look at our chart. Show me the chart. Learn machine techniques. Ooh. Oh. E? So weird, dude. So weird. So I guess at some point we're gonna learn how to digivolve, digivolve into ultimate. I guess that's just gonna be a different thing. At least it wasn't Bayonetta. Okay, you know what, chat? Fair enough. I think that Bayonetta, the final year at Evo for Smash Bros. 4, was an unfortunately broken character that did ruin the game. <laughs> Check if you can load any text. Okay. Fair enough. That's a good example of uh, the limit. The line. The line was drawn there. Load text, you say. Um... Uh... What would, where would I load text? What are you talking about, load text? Load technique. Metal Mommy Mom. Can't load technique. Can't load technique. No. I think we're not at that kind of point in the game yet, chat. You heard about Sakurai's frame counting skills. Chat was talking about it before the stream started. But I have not watched the video. I would love to. Kaboom! Um, this shit's gonna suck because we've seen the ultimate. We've seen the pinnacle. I don't even want to spend any money because I want to spend it all on the pinnacle, dude. Worthless, worthless, worthless. You can load a tech to share it with other Digivolutions. Got it. This is where it becomes like Fire Emblem. Looks like a Metal Slug character. Top 8 was really diverse. There were two Lukes and then you got Laura, Colleen, Dalsim, Bison. Yeah, that was really cool. And yeah, Mena RD used Birdie earlier. 
and Fong. The most worthless character, the joke character of Street Fighter V showing up. Top 8 was really sweet. A menace, an actual menace. Take the poison. Every character is from a different country, too. Sorry, player. Every player from a different country. Really? That is just wild. Hey, you. You over there. What? What? No. Who, me? Hi, I'm Lisa. Nice to meet you. What's your name? Oh. Oh. It's Junior. Junior, okay, I'll remember that. By the way, Junior, have you seen a Keith Green Digimon? Well, I don't know. What do you think it is, Junior? I know. It's Ogremon, it has to be. So, I just have to go look for Ogremon right now. See it. Nice talking to you, Junior. Brother Bamboo, thanks for being a brand new subscriber. What's up with her? Oh my god, what a scene. This place is cool, by the way. Norway, France, China, Japan, US. Dominican Republic. But that's not eight, chat. Was it really all of the top eight are from a different country? Expensive hotel. Prepared his name. The uh, budget of that production was pretty high. They definitely had a lot of goofs. Technical goofs. <laughs> right up there till the very end of the show. But um, I'm pretty impressed with what Capcom's doing to promote uh, Street Fighter. Why didn't we get me nominated for Gamer of the Year at the Streamer Awards? The Streamer Awards? I think it's a good idea for me not to have that kind of platform. <laughs> yeah, so I don't have enough notoriety in the card game to really draw attention to myself here with these people. Look at that little table. You could, you know, have a little tea, beachside tea with your Digimon. Notably, no Japan in the top eight. Damn, that is wild. God, the sprite work in this game is actually really nice. I'm glad it's not a lost art. I'm glad people like still do it, you know? So it's Korea, Spain, UAE, Great Britain, France, US, China, Dominican Republic. Eight. Wow. That is so crazy. Seriu Suzaku. Yeah, help me, Low Rezzer. What am, what am I not getting about the names of these cities? I'm 
ready to step into your arena. Let's do it. You sound really confident. But don't underestimate me because I'm a girl. I wasn't. I wasn't. Oh, we're doing this. Okay. Shit. That's not an ambush. Well, I do feel a little ambushed, to be honest. Would I ever consider making a webcomic? I definitely had ideas for webcomics in the past. Today, I would not. That would be um, very time consuming. It's not a thing you just do, you know? Yeah, we need that Grauman speed. Come on, did you vote too? Grow mine. Um, Chinese Divine Beasts. If you ever played FF11, they were the bosses of Sky. Cool. Attack and steal items. I don't know if that'll be worth it right now, buddy. We just need to fight that wood bomb. Hell yeah. Taking out Digimon. Vegemon! Ooh, red Vegemon. Hell yeah. You're hopeless. Gimon too fast, dude. Die. Oh, it's up. It's up. Block this, block this shit, block this shit. Yes! Who next, who next, who next, who next? Word mom. <laughs> yeah, you're dead, bro. <laughs> I think the, um, oh, sick. Shogun Gekkomon. Um, I think the fighting, the Smash Bros. Digimon game came out. You don't get a free attack. Yeah, right, you're faster than me. You're cheap, bro. Nice block. Nice block. Don't let them cheap you out like that. Um, I think that came out even after this. The Digimon series just loves the PS1. Okay, all right. Respectable tankage. Get that belly, dude. Don't you just want to smack that belly, chat? All right, let's see what this does. We're up. Okay. And then to end this with a little panache. DNA Digiball, baby. This is the night. When two become one. Rip them apart. So cool. Oh, he got back up. Oh, that did less damage than a regular attack. Okay. Okay. All right. Fine. How's this? You blocked. Okay. Confuse gas. Oh no, this is where things go awry. You seen the Pokemon video series called Pokemon Stats Make No Sense? It's pretty funny sometimes. 
Oh no, the music changes when you're confused. Confess. I must confess. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Did we just get lucky there? Oh, come on. Oh yeah, yeah, we're done, we're done. That last pixel of health stayed a little longer than I expected. This is how we do it. Battle one. I must confess. 129? Decent. Decent. Please be decent. Wait, is it always confess, or was confess just funny, and then that just randomly turned out to be the right thing to do? Next auction, now available. Do we do it for 11k? I'm in. I'm in. Oh, well. Uh, what's your name? Junior. <laughs> okay, that's a cool name. Uh, I'll give you this. Yeah, I got the Suzaku badge. Next, I need to get the Biako badge. Well, so the west sector is across the ocean, so it's pretty hard to get to. There's only one way to get there. You have to call Submarimon. Was Submarimon also in Digimon World 1? So you need the Digi Egg of Sincerity to call Submarimon. Why? <laughs> Ask around in this sector for information about it. That's the only clue I can give you. Well, good luck. That was Waymon, you're right. We rode a whale to get to the island. Hey, where do I get this digi egg? You're pretty good. This is our friend from the real world. Hey, Junior, good timing. We've been here a while. Oh, why don't we go back? To the real world? Are you kidding me? All right, so I beat Seryu leader and Suzaku leader. So, you know, it's, it's good enough for now for me. What about Teddy? We have to find Teddy. Teddy's fine, all right? He's in Asuka City's administration center. When I saw him last, that's where he said he was going, so. Oh, all right. Well, let's hurry back to Asuka City then. Oh, no, no, no. This game has narrative fast travel. <laughs> hey, what's up? I've been waiting for a while now. <laughs> when can we go back? Sorry, there are still no details. Huh. What? What's going on? Game Master? It must be an announcement. She's a woman? <laughs> oh, I didn't know that. She's cool. I want to be just like her. To all players, we apologize for the inconvenience. The maintenance to the Matrix Chamber will take a little more time. Please be patient until the system is fixed. Okay, bye. Wait. <laughs> What? That's it? Well, there's nothing we can do about it. Yay, then I can play a little longer. Uh, this sucks. They're not done yet. We can't go back to the real world. Hmm. <laughs> I wonder if this is Lucky Mouse's fault. <laughs> Lucky Mouse? 
Hey, what do you mean by Lucky Mouse? I don't know the details, but Teddy said that Lucky Mouse appeared. Is Teddy looking for something at the administration center? Yeah, that's what you told me, Kale. Hey, Junior, let's go look for Teddy. I have something I want to ask him. Okay, then let's go to the center right now. <laughs> if you die in the game, you die for real. That is all. <laughs> I wish, chat. Sorry, only authorized personnel are allowed behind this point. Okay, bye-bye. <laughs> yeah, I think one minute of time in the digital world is equal to one minute of time in the real world because they are monetizing our time as well. Oh, it's so annoying. We can't go in. There has to be some way back there. Oh, oh. Well, no use pouting about it here. Let's split up and check things out. Talk to people in the city. Okay. I will. I'm starting to get worried about Teddy. This kid's parents are about to be bankrupt. Well, that's the thing is while the while we're down for server maintenance, all of this time has been free. I do imagine it is very expensive to be in the digital world in the first place, but the impression I got was that they saved up for a while. Would the Digimon world have ads in the middle of battles? I don't think so because you pay so much to be here. All right, so Digimon are allowed back there. If I can disguise myself as a Digimon, we'll be fine. We should go to the auction. Let's raise some money. Yeah, man, I want that Digimon. You know what I mean? I want that Sombrero Ghost Cactus Digimon. I want that. I don't want Cover Boys. Crazy, you really do have to come back here a lot to get all these items. Sniper Guard. This Mon Mon exclusive shield. Mon Mon? Oh, the monkey one. I'm definitely selling this shit. Okay, 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 okay. Uh-oh, it's definitely... It has become more expensive. Okay, okay. I'll do it. I'll do it, I'll do it, I'll do it. I'll do it. Sniper guard. The satellite. That's what the um, navvies are called. Just called satellites, which I like a lot, actually. Okay, time to leave. No, I think about VR now, where, like, you know, there's, like, places at the mall where, like, you and some friends can, like, be in a space together. Uh... There would definitely never be ads that pop up during those. Come on, chat. There could be, like, more monetization in the digital world. Like, I am surprised they don't say, like, would you like to spend some of your real-life money for bits? That you would definitely see. So that makes this world a little less believable.
there could be that and we just don't engage with it because we're just a child. You know what I mean? We're already pretty strapped here. No, we're going back here. We're going to sell our sniper unit. This is this I like doing this shit big time. Uh, probably armor, sniper guard. Yeah, so they're getting more expensive, but they're not selling for more, unfortunately. Bummer. Okay. Oops, I did want to buy. I did want to buy. I did want to buy. Poncho Mon has a move called Tequila Knuckle. That's so cool. Tequila Knuckle! There you go, Kumamon. You are officially massively jacked, dude. Defense is gonna hurt. I took your shield away, but you are officially massively jacked. Speaking of being massively jacked, should we not just give Giamon two swords? Wouldn't that be more damage than the Zweihander? What would be the likeliness of it paying for exclusive Digivolutions? Oh my god. Yeah, if this was a real MMO, it would be high. Definitely, um, or two Serb fangs. I know. I know. I, I think the Zweihander is a mistake, chat. We could, we could really jack up both hands. Let's consider it. Let's look at our options here. Limited time swimsuit Greymon. Hmm. Definitely. Two eighty three plus two eighty three equals more than four seventy five. I've made a huge mistake. That includes your base attack, though. Okay, 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 okay. So let's just let's just do some experimental math here, chat. In Shining Force, their secret swimsuit outfits, really? That would be, I feel like that would maybe be the first time in video game history that there are secret swimsuit outfits. Then no, Metroid. But still very cool. Yeah, let's unequip and see what our base is. Chat has their calculators ready. Glad to hear it, chat. Uh, status. Yeah. See equipment. This is fine. So we're at 183 with nothing. Okay. So, Zweihander gets us from 183 to 475, meaning the Zweihander does 292 damage. Okay. Now, the Serbi Fang is 100. 
meaning even if you equip two Serby Fangs, you're only taking yourself up to 383, significantly less than the 475 of the Savai Hander. The advantage here is that, yes, you, you, might, you might drain some HP from the wound. But is that really worth it? Nay. Nay, for we are Dragon Smackers. And our cause is the Dragon Smack. We stand by this Vihander. Okay. Alright. So it shall be. So the crazy thing is I'd like to play like a Dragon Ishin, but I don't think it's going to happen. Man, I thought we stayed at that inn. Giamon, you look terrible. Let's go to the inn. Okay. We're belly smackers. No, we're not belly smackers. Watch this. I'm, I'm doing it. I'm doing it. Back to the Zweihander. No belly smack. There we go. It is optimal damage. We are optimized for attack. Sad Patamon noises. Oh, TK. All right. We're good. Oh, I forgot how pathetic Patamon is. He really whines constantly about how he can't digivolve. And is, like, apologetic about it. And it's like, shut up, Patamon. Obviously, you'll digivolve, you'll digivolve eventually. No time for this shit right now. I'm sorry, TK. It's like, shut up. Shut up. It's fine. You're clearly Angemon. <laughs> It'll happen when we need you most. What mythical beast would be the least impressive smack? Like f fairies, like fae. I guess they'd be hard to hit, but I think if you're like a fae smacker, you're a bad person. A pixie, yeah, if you're a pixie smacker, I'm, I'm questioning your character. How many NPCs have we talked to early in the game that wanted to become Digimon, if you can remember? Oh, okay, 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 okay. I do remember them. And I pretty much remember where they are, actually. Excellent hint, Hughes. Oh, and that Agumon told us that the only way behind the counter is to be a Digimon. Here they are. Just now they were yelling. Becoming a Digimon is my dream. Wonder if anyone can grant it. You tell me. You tell me. All right, Hughes. That was my only idea. <laughs> that was it. Now I don't know what to do. Anyway, where's Guillemot? No. I have no idea how to get into the center. Where's Jack? Over here. Over here. We're in another one of those moments, chat. The game did it again.
talk to your IRL friend again in town? She told me to split up. What do you mean talk to her again? She said let's split up. If the solution is to just go talk to her, I'm disappointed. I guess maybe we learned something from Agumon, so we gotta be like, hey, I talked to an Agumon who told me you have to be a Digimon to get behind the counter. Kale? 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 Central Sector, Asuka City. Kale? There she is. I couldn't either. Let's gather more information. Okay. So now I go talk to that couple? My god. This is messed up. I feel like, um... Nintendo Switch update 16.0.0 should be bigger than a, a stability update. Okay, so that, that is not it, chat. There's one more step we're missing somewhere along the way. We're missing something. It will be though, sure. What are we missing? Good theory. Hey boy, you having fun? Because I feel lousy. Only staff can go inside the center. Also, lost Digimon without a partner can enter too. There we go. That's some info, that's some info, that's some info. That's some info. Yeah, if you're lost Digimon, you can go inside the center. Yep, there was an old couple who were looking for Digimon, for looking a way to become Digimon. Yep. There we go, chat. Questing, questing, questing. Questing, baby, questing. <laughs> this is gonna sound crazy. This makes me think of how much I like Tiny Ken. Oh! They did it. They did it. Digimon. My dream has come true. This Agumon suit is great. Do you like it? Edamon gave it to us. Okay. We're questing, baby. We're questing. We're questing. We're questing. Edamon, uh-uh, I don't know. There was no one here when I came. Uh -huh. Well, go away and don't bother me. Oh my god. We're questing, we're questing, we're questing. <laughs> the nerve of this game. We get lied to so much. Yeah, Edamon's pretty evil in this. Mischief, mischievous, at least. Where's Edamon? <laughs> Damn it. 
Now Kale is in the lobby. Okay. All right. All righty. All right. Requesting. <laughs> DM, I, I suspect this guy is lying to me. Go ahead and roll our perception check. Okay. I got a 17. No, he seems like a normal guy who just does not know where Edamon is. To you. <sighs> okay. Um, I go back to the old couple. Roll a... Persuasion check? Persuasion! I just want to talk to them. Roll a persuasion check. Okay, I got a 20. They say nothing new to you. <laughs> uh, players, you should have gone back to the lobby, obviously. That's where Kale is waiting for you. <laughs> what, there's a man instead of Edamon? What are you doing? He's Edamon. DM, I knew that already? You did not. No, 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 no. You didn't know because you rolled a 16. Fine. Wow, that guy was Edamon? Don't you get it? He used an Edamon suit. If you ask him, I'm sure he'll give you, he'll tell you about Digimon suits. Well, good luck. I'll wait at the underground path. Okay. So DM, I go back to the underground path. Okay. That's going to take five turns. Let me just write that down. What do you mean that takes five turns? It we're not in combat. Well, I'm just... I'm moving some things. <laughs> okay. Junior's just doing his best out here. He tried talking to that Edamon three times, you know? Oh, it's you again. I told you, the Edamon you're looking for isn't here. Uh, of course not, because you are the Edamon. What? I know your game. You were wearing the Edamon suit back there. Uh, you found out. That sucks. Hey, just don't tell anyone, okay? I'll give you this in return. I see. So Matt was never an Edamon. This is actually a wild twist to me. I thought it was an Edamon wearing a human suit. But it was this man named Matt who walks around in an Edamon suit. <laughs> right on! It's the Agamon suits! This is a secret between you and me, all right? Don't tell anyone I wander around as Edamon all day. <laughs> Thanks, team player gamer. Hey, Junior! Matt! Yeah, Matt is one of the Digi-Destined. Matt! Come help me, please! <laughs> Shut up, Gabumon. You're weak. <laughs> I need you to be stronger. Matt, I'm trying. Yeah. And now he's just wandering around in a Digimon suit. So gross. Maybe some baseball tonight if we end at like a natural moment, you know? Keep your mouth shut. We don't want them to know that we're not Digimon, okay? Oh, okay. Yeah, that's true. I understand. Good point. All right. So I got something I want to look into. So I'll go on ahead. Junior, you keep looking for Teddy. 
as soon as I'm done, I'll catch up with you. Oh, okay. But be careful, okay? Yeah, don't worry. I'm not like you. What's up with Kale? She's been weird since we got here. Oh, well. I have to find Teddy. Bro, so cool. I guess it should be that surprising there there is an Agumon sprite that runs right behind you already in the game. But I like it. Oh yeah, I forgot we're gonna watch the PlayStation meeting tonight. Yeah, there's no baseball. There's no baseball. What Digimon again? Uh yeah. I'm a uh I'm a lost Digimon. Okay. First, uh, that pink Agumon, and now you. You can pass, but don't be getting in everyone's way. Okay. Thank you, sir. How serious are you about that? Because it's two hours long? All right, we're not watching the whole two hours. There's no way it's two hours long. That's crazy. Come on up. Come on up. Come on up. Don't be a nuisance. Come on up. Come on up. Come on. Don't just claw me. Come up. There you go. Oh, my God. Yeah, we can do some heavy skimming. The attitude of this one. <laughs> You've got such an attitude, brother. Oh, you're going down on there. Okay. All right. What? You think you deserve a nuzzle? I'm not nuzzling you, no. Power charge, hell yeah. No, I'm not gonna go nuzzle you. Mm -mm. It's like a Velociraptor. Just like a little Velociraptor in here. Threatening the nuzzle. What are you doing? Hey, Junior, you're late. Hey, Kel, are you done? Uh, uh, yeah. So did you find Teddy? Obviously not. No, I couldn't find him anywhere. Okay, me too. I looked everywhere. He did say he was going to the admin center, and I didn't check there yet. <laughs> I wonder how far inside Teddy is. Hmm. Don't you have a feeling that he's inside here? Yeah. Well, we won't know till we look. Gee, thanks. All right, let's go in then. Hey, bro. Let's hide. Hey, bro. No. Uh-uh. For heaven's sake, what are you guys doing? We can't proceed with our plans. Oh, I'm, so I'm sorry. We were... Oh, no. We were in intensifying our search. We will find him. It's just a matter of time. I <gasps> wonder who they're talking about. Hey, what are these Digimon doing here? You can't get away. He looks suspicious. Look at that blue one. Oh, 
Oops, they found us! Hey, no! What are you two doing in here? Okay, um... Uh... We're looking for our friend, Teddy. Oh. I see. I'm sorry, hey! For surprising you. <laughs> no. No, brother. He keeps trying to bite this cord. Waddled Unicorn, thanks for being a 20 mother. I am worried about your friend, too. A lucky mouse must have had him hostage. Lucky mouse? He is an awful man. He is trying to destroy Digimon Online. He's the reason why we are having problems with the system. But everyone is having so much fun in Digimon Online. I can't believe Lucky Mouse. Uh... So everyone in our staff is looking for Lucky Mouse right now. Oh, I know. Can you help us? Okay, of course. Yeah, leave it to us. Hey, bro. Thank you. I'm counting on you. We heard he went towards West Sector. Hey, bro. Alright, you gotta go. You're being nasty. Mm -mm. You've had your fun. You gotta go now. Causing a little havoc on the way out. New auction, now available. I'm gonna get that lucky mouse. Sorry, uh, I just remembered I, I gotta go. <laughs> okay. Huh? What's up with Kale? Oh well. I've got that Digimon I can count on. Okay, guys, we're going to West Sector. <laughs> we don't talk to our Digimon anymore. Okay, guys. Yeah, that was bad mucho, dude. Oscillating. Between very sweet and very nasty. <laughs> uh, so West Sector is... Uh, the beach, right? We're going back to the beach? little bad mm -hmm. that's mucho what a save dude holy moly come on bud it's <laughs> a long save um yeah we're we going to the beach i'll go anywhere just tell me where's west sector Suzaku City, which is okay. It's where we came from. Oh, the auction, 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 the auction. Of course. This is how we make our money, dude. There he goes. He couldn't stay away for that long. What a hot shot, dude. He acts like he's over it. Trying to knock shit off my desk. He came back. Level 5 just announced a product announcement stream on March 9th. Can we get a quick temperature check? Um. Low. 
they need to get the shit out that they've already announced. Low. If it's just to show off the games that they've already announced, then I'm into it. But if you c tell me it's a project product announcement stream, I'm disappointed. It's not announcing anything. Oh, then why are you, why are you calling this a product announcement stream? Main item, Draymond Shield. Coveted by all members. Vmon exclusive shield. Mm, okay. We might be adding Vmon to our team. Level 5 says it will be sharing information about its upcoming slate of games, including Inazuma 11 Victory Road, Deca Police, Hell Yeah, Fantasy Life, The Girl Who Steals Time, Megaton Musashi, ooh, and Professor Layton and the New World of Steam, Hell Yeah. They always act like it's a big deal, but I'm only betting 200 bits more than the last bid. Amateurs out here. No, so what we can do is uh, deposit uh, Giamon, and then we're well under 30 to get that Vmon. Let's talk about it, chat. I feel like, I feel like actually the third party member should be the weird one. Um, and look at that, we're just under. Um, I feel like it should be that weird one that um, was one of our starter options. Kotamon. Yeah, I feel like Kotamon should be our third party member. Chat says that would come last, huh? Okay. Kodamon is level 60. Uh, the problem with uh, Wormmon is like, I know it's Digivolutions, you know? I don't like the idea of flex spots because this game really does reward you for investing in Digimon. What do I think his evolutions are? It's like, it's got four legs, it's black and green. And it's just like, a monster. If I could get Wormmon into like, um, Devimon with a gun. I forget what his name is. Motorcycle Devimon, then I would be stoked. But I don't think we're going to be able to do that. Tomorrow is the Platinum Games Revengeance event. Yeah, what time is that? The easiest one for that is getting Gallantmon. Yeah, I hate Gallantmon. No interest. Oh, but you're saying Gallantmon will give you Devimon, motor motorcycle Devimon. Yeah, Biezelmon. Yep, 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 yep. That's our guy. So if we get Gallantmon, we get Biezelmon. Okay. All right, chat. That's our goal then. I actually really like Biazelmon. Let's do it. Yeah, so like for that case, right? It doesn't make sense for us to stop working on Giamon. It doesn't make sense to try to add a third party member. It's illogical.
Do I know about Beale Starmon? No. Show me Beale Starmon. Who I presume is not even in this game. Starmon comes later. You do? So I got a card of Beale Starmon is what you're saying? You opened her card before. She had the abs. Got it, got it, got it, got it, got it. Yeah, once we finish this game, I'm buying that box. I'm buying a box of Digimon cards that's based off of this particular game. Can't wait to see that stuff. Do I know it about Nunyamon? No. You had a chance to play the Pokemon, sorry, Digimon TCG. Or are you focused on collecting? Just collecting. Honestly, no strong interest in playing it. But if you are, this is the week. This is Digimon Club Beginner's Week on the Discord. All right, so we're gonna keep working on that speed, baby. Speed up. Speed up now, Tammy. Oh, sorry, did you answer when the uh, Revengeance event is? Did I miss that? No, we don't have a time. Two out of three, not too great. Um, I bet, it, I bet a, like a re-release, it, it feels right. I think that's fair to assume. Yeah, I think there's like a stream. I think they're doing I think they're doing like a stream or something. Oh boy. Oh my gosh. You pathetic bear. The easiest Evo to Bezelmon might actually be Grismon. Hell yeah. Going to West Sector. Kyle, the whole cycle is very long. Yeah, I might actually have no patience to like get the best Digimon in this game. It's really sad. <laughs> they make it they make it really hard, right? They give you plenty of opportunities to grind. But, uh... I don't know if it's worth it. Where does he pull that rope from? It's from the gym. I don't, Chad, I don't even think that's illogical. At the gym that Leo Mon works at, they have a jump rope. We have not seen Flymon before, and I don't even know if I have seen Flymon before. So cool. A very natural digivolution of Kunamon. I love it. Battle one. There you go, buddy. 36 more. <laughs> There's a guy next door mowing their lawn and they just threw a toy over my fence. It's the turtle from over the hedge. Stop that, Big Frog. It has to be a different turtle. That story is too illogical. I beg of you. Tell me it's the turtle. Photo coming in Discord. Oh my god. 
So it seems that as you progress through the story, that higher level Digimon might appear in low level areas, which actually I don't mind in this case. Normally I hate that shit, but in a game like this with so much uh, back treading, I don't mind it. turtle the turtle from over the hedge i'm in disbelief you know what i am gonna go to the inn and we are gonna save we're seeing new digimon out here look at kakatorimon metal attack <laughs> all right <laughs> cool that's a kill Yeah, we'll take it. Uh, yeah, so I guess the idea is you want to cover weaknesses, right? And so if you're up against this Digimon, it's like, oh, okay, I should actually Digivolve you this way. So that I can be ultra strong against data types. Oh my God. It's unmistakable. That's the turtle from over the hedge. Holy shit. This is so bizarre. <laughs> That's yours now. That's yours now. Congrats. Yeah. <laughs> Hey man, congrats. I don't want it. Big Frog, that's your, you, you cannot discard that, please. Please. If anything, yeah, throw it over the, ne the next neighbor's hedge. Spread it, pass it on. It's a precious thing. Where would you even buy that? If if you wanted to buy that thing. Hey, I'm looking to buy a plush of the turtle from over the hedge. You could not. eBay, try. Try. Good luck. Wrong way. Right way. Right way. Ooh. Seedramon or Airdramon? Seedramon. Airdramon would have wings. So this, this is just another case of aquatic creatures floating for no damn reason. Yeah. Afraid so. Got you, buddy. Found it on eBay for $89? Here it's just $6.99. Make sure I'm not logged in. It is a different one though. You'll notice there's a difference here. Let me see if you have another, a different link. Oh my God. <laughs> this website is too big. Stand by chat, stand by. This page is unavailable. Okay, so we, this one that's $13, we gotta, we gotta ignore. Gender, unisex. <laughs> hey, I'm I'm sorry. What gender is it? <laughs> What's the toy's gender? 
I'm just checking. Oh, wow. So there's a lot of different types of turtle from over the hedge. This is just crazy to me. Okay, so we have this one, which is not a match. Uh, look at the eyebrows. Okay. Look at the shell. Not a match. This one, obviously not a match. Look at those eyes. Again, this is the one that was thrown over the actual hedge. Look at the turtle shell. Not a match. Turtle shell looks great, actually. But those eyes, bro. Part of me was considering that maybe there used to be fabric covering the underside of these eyes. That maybe the eyes continue beneath that fabric, but I don't believe that is the case. I don't know, dude. Look at these feet. Look at these feet. Look at these feet. It's possible they just got ripped off. But this one does appear to be a match. No, this is the same thing, dude. Huh. So what we're presuming here is that there used to be fabric right here on the underside of his eyes that has been torn off. Huh. Okay. Anyway, it won't be cheap. But it is doable. I said you could not even find it, and I was incorrect. Nice block. Metal mommy mon. All right, Ariana. I'm dead serious about this. You said mommy. Hey, can we just take a break? I just need to use the bathroom. I'm, I'll be right back. <laughs> All right, to get Bezelmon, you need to get the following: Malomiotismon plus Gallantmon to level 40. To chain to get Malomiotismon, you need Malomiotismon to Malomiotismon 99, Devimon 50, Grapleomon level 20, Dark one 60. It's crazy, not to mention the Gallantmon level requirement. <laughs> I give up. I give up. I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. I mean, if we're close, yeah. But, uh... Look, I've done some crazy things to get Digimon before. We've all seen it. That might be above my level of dedication and commitment. Is there an equivalent to Mew or Mewtwo in Digimon? Iconic legendary Digimon? No, because in Digimon, they're all like... The Mews and Mewtwo's are like... Just some dumb skinny knights with big swords. Kalomon, I agree, is kind of the Mew. Yeah. Break time? All right, so let's get in the subway. Let's get to the West Nation, the West Sector, and then we'll take our break. Yeah, bro, can you imagine getting anybody leveled up to 99 in this? Yeah, right. Yeah, right. Here's the thing, if you told me it's like a Digimon I've never seen before... If it's like... Golden Rage Garbage Mon, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, 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 I'm in there. I'll do it. I'll level everybody up to level 99. Jones would do it. Oh my god. 
Jones with this power. I did last time I played, but I was on emulator and I sped up that shit. Yeah, 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 yeah. Do I want the exact directions to the next story point? Honestly, yes, because the West Nation is confusing. I would appreciate it, Hughes. I'm liking Metal Mame Mon, by the way. He's showing up for this stuff. Don't get up. Don't get up. Hell yeah. Good shit. A perfect Digi Weirdo. A perfect Digi Weirdo. I feel like that was our first ultimate in our Digimon World 1 playthrough, right? Can I get Oyaz as all 22 out of 23 games I recently work on PS3? I got recently work on PS3. Corrupted install for one alone game. Gotta figure that out. Yeah, oh yeah, for 22 out of 23 is pretty good. That's an oh yeah. Oh yeah. When I replay this game, I play with a single cheat. It's raised Digivolution level by one after each battle. That allows me to really play with all the options in the game. Yeah, exactly. I get why they constrict it like they do, but it's like, well, you could never see it all. All right. Now, unfortunately, this is the South Sector. This is not the West Sector at all. Have I gone to the wrong place? Go to the entrance of Suzuka City, but don't enter. Go to the opposite of the entrance towards center of Phoenix Bay. Okay. I, th I do think we were supposed to ride the subway. Anyway, we'll have to do that after the break. We'll find out where to go after this break. Digimon has always loved not expecting to see everything. Even the modern games feel that way to an extent. That's true. That's true. That's true. That's true. That's true. That's true. Yeah, man. Uh, getting, like, little Angel Boy Digimon in Cyber Sleuth, I remember, was crazy hard. That just sucked. But I was into it. Lusamon, yeah. Now, that was, um... That was right after getting fired. So, it was just like this, like... Unemployment week was, like... The, it was the perfect time to have Digimon Cyber Sleuth. That was nice. Good timing. Then I was absolutely willing to go through the lengths to get a little Angel Boy Digimon. <laughs> Playing like this also adds more value to everything that's happening. And that's true. Yeah, 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 yeah. There's still Digimon out there who can kill me. So it's not too bad. All right, chat. Let's take our quick break. And when we get back, we're going to... Find Lucky Mouse, who has kidnapped our friend Teddy. <laughs> At least that's what our character thinks he's doing right now. I remember Ben made a joke about seeing you online playing that and being like, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a good time. Very good time. All right, chat. See you soon.
We're back, baby. We're back, baby. Hey, look, that was Mickey Mouse. All I see is the reactions to stuff from the, um... The slideshow, mid-break. I see some cursed things. I see that there was some undie rumble art. It's tough. Tough to keep track of. We're back, baby. We're back. Good block, little uh, metal mommy mon. Okay, I got a lot of questions while I was just chewing one granola bar. Um, firstly, how is Mucho? He's great. He's sassy, but he's good. Digimon intro guide. Skip the reboot anime and start with the original. Honestly, Ty. The reboot's not too good. The reboot tries to be exciting for modern audiences in ways that it doesn't need to be, in my opinion. Chat might have other opinions. And chat will tell you how to, what the uh, Digimon intro guide is, actually. Um, thought on, thoughts on the perspective of this game? I do wish it wasn't this, but... You know, I, I normally don't like isometric stuff. I think the pixel art makes up for it. All right, so we don't go into the town, but we are going the right way. I was eating um, Hidden Valley salted caramel nut protein chewy bar. We have a level one Patamon in our party because I don't think it's actually worth investing in every single Digimon you have in your party. I think it's a waste of time and experience points. And Patamon has no future in this team. Digimon 02 is the heart of the franchise? Come on, chat. Come on now. Come on now. Armor Digivolutions is the heart of the franchise? Come on now. That's your read. Do you like time you'd like to switch, look at the Sony thing? Um, I think just like baseball, I think it'll depend on where we're at with this game. I wouldn't want to stop Digimon prematurely, but if we find a really nice natural ending point tonight in Digimon, hell yeah. Wow. 
Super Afro Boy, thanks for being a 30 month -er. Uh, Okay, I think we're going the right way still. Chat told me not to go into the town, and that's the way into the town. Shit. After talking to an NPC near Suzuku City allows to find the Digi Egg, which is southeast of Bolt Bridge. Phoenix Bay, I think, is where we want to be. It is, it is, it is. We're not in the city yet. All right, so let's start talking to NPCs again. Chat likes Ghost Story. Chat talks about Digimon Ghost Story all the time. I was looking for the a cat in the bio swamp. Behind the shrine, I saw the crest of reliability. I wonder why it was there. Okay. Now we know where the crest of reliability is. Ghost game, pardon me, chat. Ghost Stories is a different anime. Okay. Now go to Bulk Bridge. Which is behind me? Bulk Bridge. Boop -a -doo -doo -doo. Bulk Bridge. Boop -a -doo -doo -doo. Ew. Ape Mon. It's chat's favorite Digimon right there. Bing bong. If you skip her, you can't find the Digi Egg. And I totally would have skipped her too. Jacob, thanks for being a two monther. I love a two monther. Uh, generally, if the characters have to be this small, if you got to do pre-rendered backgrounds, I prefer, you know, that they're each custom. The grid-based shit I don't love, generally. You know, like Digimon World 1, I actually think looks better than this game on the overworld. However, the battle screen for this game is nice error. Oh no, I've gone to a bad spot of this map. Do I enjoy the wolf among us? I don't enjoy a lot of um telltale stuff. Batman? Yes. Um... Borderlands? Yes. Jungle Grave? Where's the bulk bridge? What is Patamon supposed to be? A bat-eared chicken nugget? No, chat. Sometimes Digimon are just allowed to be cool monsters. They don't, they're not supposed to be anything sometimes. It's not like this is inspired by this myth. This is inspired by this book character from this book. Sometimes a Digimon can just be a Digimon. A no, it's a no. Yes. Keep going through Jungle Grave, then at Bulk Bridge, go south and go east to Bio Swamp. Okay. Crazy, right? Because every every little one of those things is even worth fighting as Metal Mamimon to try to get it to level up to level 40.
chat, you've been raised by Did You Know Gaming Culture. Oh, hey, we got to Bulk Bridge. We got there. Now we go south, east. To find Bio Swamp. Hell yeah. Tough, man. Are there shiny Digimon? Unfortunately, no. They don't do shit like that. Yes! There are X antibody Digimon? Are they rare? Is it rare to happen upon them? Examine back at the shrine, okay. X antibodies its own particular story. Yeah. Yeah, Digimon, even if it's like own little like offshoots like this, is much more story oriented oriented. Nice block, buddy. You're so fast. You're so fast. Story oriented. Keep leveling up, buddy. We need more of those. Bio Swamp. Oh, she said we're on the back, didn't she? She said it was behind the shrine. There it is. Hey, then the junior says there it is. Then is the Digi Egg of Sincerity in there? But how am I supposed to break down that wall? Hmm, maybe Sepikmon can help me. No, let's just figure it out now, buddy. Let's just stay here and figure it out on our own. Oh my gosh. <laughs> okay. Going back north. Yeah, it feels nice to one-shot those bad boys who could, at, at a time, one-shot me. Excellent revenge. Bolt bridge. Okay, so we're going north. Continue north. No, it's going to be like... Oh! A little to the right here. And it's funny, right? Like, so there's, uh, like, two colors of Woodmon, two colors of Yanmamon. They have the same name in this game. And so like, yeah, that's just a green Yanmamon. Okay. So now we go up here. to talk to our confident in his mask ghost lead Digimon. Digitamamon and War Growlmon can DNA Digivolve. That's exciting. But it's bad because Digitamamon is Giamon. Right? Or is it Kumamon that can become Digitamamon? Ask my friend Baron Mon about bombs. 
Baron Mon is good at making bombs. And Baron Mon... It was Kumamon. Okay, cool. Yeah, we can do it then. Baron Mon is not nearby. We gotta take the subway again? Actually, we're good. In the same place at Protocol Ruins. I have never. I have never. I do have a TNT bomb. No, I got a TNT ball. I got a TNT ball. I remember because Ernie Johnson was excited about it. But I don't have a TNT bomb. If they're two different things, then yeah, I, I need to, I guess, kill some Triceramon. Bro, this game is wild. TNT ball is it. Okay, okay, okay. We're good then. We have one. It would be so cool if I could just go use it now. <laughs> That'd be fine. But no, we gotta go talk to another person who's gonna be like, Hey, by the way, I'm not actually here. I'm in another town. Okay. <laughs> Meet me there. Hmm. Okay. So I'm actually thinking we should get back to uh, grinding Growlmon. I don't know what we get for Metal Mamemon being level 40, but it's probably not going to be worth it, right? That will probably be a dead end. So I'm not feeling like uh, investing in Metal Mamemon is worth it, unfortunately. Not for you, but it does have another Evo after that. And you, when you say not for me, it's just, you can just tell. Not my kind of guy. I say not for you because it's a popular one. Okay, it's a poster boy. Okay. All right, we're going to give up on Metal Mommy Mon. It's been, nice, it's been nice raising it, but now I'm thinking we need to dedicate all in on a Growl Mon so we can at least get that DNA Digivolve. Uh... And then also, it seems like, generally talking, the best way to get best Digimon is to go hard cannon. Which obviously is not what I love to do. But we're optimizers. Growlmon doesn't get more Digivolutions. Oh! Okay. Uh... Well, shit, who should we work on right now? I guess Grismon? We should work on Grismon some more? You unlock main evos at 5, 20, 40. For total level. Oh, okay, so Giamon at level 20 is going to get another evolution. Okay, all right, all right, all right. let's keep working on Giamon then. General thoughts on Metal Greymon's chest rockets? Love them to death. Absolutely freaky. They have faces. Grismon can share Hammer Rush at 75. We're not getting into level 75. I promise you this. Grismon will not get to level 75. Unless there is a spike in XP. Dragon Ball Super Manga is trying something different. Are you reading it? Um, so the last issue I read was Trunks and Goten were students, but also trying to be superheroes. And they went to the factory of the villain of Dragon Ball Super Superhero. And he was like making Frankensteins at night. 
Um, which is crazy. It seems like the manga is officially saying we are a different universe. I'm not I'm not even trying to be canon anymore. Just read they are removing Arrested Development from Netflix even though they still own it and I cannot make sense of it. Oh no. Holy shit. HBO Max really kicked this shit off. The Netflix vault is crazy, dude. They still own it, but I think they gotta pay residuals still. I think that's their hang up. What could residuals cost, Michael? <laughs> God, that just sucks. That just sucks. We've been we've been hanging out with our streaming future for a bit too long. And now we pay. Is there a toilet? Chad, is that a toilet? Oh. Now we pay up. I always wondered if it was silly for keeping the DVDs, but it paid off. It has paid off. Did you see the new JoJo manga started? Uh, I didn't see that it started. Chat showed me the main character last week. Um, is that on the app? I would think JoJo is a little too exclusive to be on the app. But if it is, I'd be willing to check that out. I'd probably have to read a couple of more series, though. Uh, not this one. Similar idea, but up a little bit. Got it. We're going back through the hedge mage. Oh my god. Yeah, 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 yeah. You still get DVDs when you can. Damn. Netflix is killing themselves with their antics. I mean, they always have been. <laughs> Unfortunately, they're in like, okay... Money time, you know what I mean? The investors are like, money time. Okay, you've been spending for 20 years. Where's the money time? The new part is exclusively standalone so far. Oh, okay, all right. Because, yeah, there's a big reset after Jolene, right? After Jolene, it's basically like, okay, now we're in a different world, different universe, different timeline. Don't worry about any of that shit. Remember Honey Time? No. <laughs> honey Time! <laughs> no, I don't remember that. God, that was almost an emote. You gotta watch what you emote, because then it's just immortalized. So parts seven through nine are AU, but have a timeline, just no carryover characters. Got it. No JoJo bloodline. This stuff is why people resort to piracy. Well, the reason we resorted to streaming is because of how nice and convenient it is. Chad, it's so much easier to load up Netflix and play Arrested Development than it is to find a legitimate feed. I guess I don't mean legitimate. A high quality feed of Arrested Development on a Dirty Deeds site and put that up on your TV. I 
I'd still be pirating if my old cat didn't pee inside my PC. I mean, that'll do it to you, too. You gotta look out for that. I don't know. I think they did outright buy Arrested Development. I'd be here curious to hear the other thing, but I feel like even when they were showing the old seasons, it would say a Netflix original. If it is still owned by Fox and then now Disney, I guess I could understand that going on. The Good Place was called a Netflix original in the UK. Okay, that's good evidence of it not necessarily meaning complete ownership. Oh my god, no, we gotta go up more. There we go, there we go, there we go. Okay. Jar Jar Bear and thanks for being a 17 monther. Do I think Netflix will- Oh! Shit! That's not the Baron Mon. Kill him. Oh, okay. Alright. Picking clock! <laughs> just that big body just flop over. And? No item. Nice block, Guillemot. I'm Growlmon. All right, Growlmon. Oh, he's got HP. We have speed, though. That's speed, bro. So nice. <laughs> and I like that he just lies on the floor instead of breaks apart. Two more levels to get another form of Guillemon, which is exciting. That makes the grind worth it. That new bad boys are showing up here in these spots we've been in already. It makes it all worth it, baby. Our Ghibli movies anime, yep. Do I think it would have been cool if even the battles were pixel art? Honestly, I'd be less interested. I love the way these battles look. If the battles were pixel art, the overworld would have to be 3D. Slippery slope of grinding, I know it, Chad. Feeling the gains. Here's what's crazy about this, is I was so sure today we'd fill up Guillemon's glitter bar. We haven't come close! There's still time. Kyle hated the Saturn. I did not desire a Saturn. What a bomb? Oh, a TNT chip. Sorry, I don't have all the ingredients. If I had a TNT ball, I could make it in a jiffy. Yeah, I got one of those. Oh, you got a TNT ball. Oh, wait one sec. Okay, snip, snip, cut, cut, ta-da-da. It's now a perfect Baronmon TNT chip. Okay. Actually, I don't hate it because it wasn't just him telling us to use a TNT ball. He engineered an item before our very eyes. Yeah, I remember um, nights at uh, Toys R Us. I remember the demo station set up, just giving it a shot and being like, this sucks. 
God, this just sucks. Meanwhile, the PlayStation demo setup had uh, twisted metal. I mean, come on. What's crazy, though, is reading magazines. Hey, we got an item. Um, I definitely have always wanted to play uh, Panzer Dragoon Saga. They'd always hype it up. That's my most wanted uh, Saturn game. If I could play any Saturn game, it would be Panzer Dragoon Saga. Kyle ever played Breath of Fire 4? Is that a false memory I have? I played it, but not on stream. Not a false memory. Entirely. <laughs> That's got some nice uh, 2D character art. In the overworld. Panzer Dragon Remake is 250 on PSN. Saga only. I don't want to play a dragon shooting game. I want to play a dragon turn-based RPG. <laughs> I worked at Toys R Us when I was a teenager. It was when the Wii was constantly out of stock. I remember getting one off the truck and buying it and treating it like the nuclear football as I got to my car. Nice. Yeah, we finished the Ghosts and Goblins game. Uh, Gargoyles Quest, we finished that on Saturday. Short game. Short game because it's so hard. If you got rewind, very short game. What's funny about that game is we didn't need a guide for it like this. It was generally very clear where you had to go next, and I really loved it for that. When I was a kid, I really wanted to work at Toys R Us. Really wanted that gig. Couldn't imagine working there. Can I get an oh no? I just now pulled out my Majora's Mask 3DS and it wanted an update and now I can't get it off of a black screen. Yeah, that's an oh no. You just bricked it? It's just straight up bricked? It might be worth letting the battery drain and then seeing what happens. Panzer Dragoon Saga was fun, but not worth the hype. Still wish I could have gotten my hands on Shining Force 3 when it was new. Oh, that's a Saturn game? Chat, does Shining Force 3 pop? Do you have a screenshot of Shining Force 3? I, that'd be, I would love to see that as a Saturn game. I don't even know what to imagine. Okay, one more screen. Then we get on the subway. <laughs> then we get back to uh, the BIOS bog. Kyle forgot to give the Ono. Oh, no. I haven't seen a Kiwi Mon all day. Bop. Oh, chat. It doesn't pop. The Genesis games look better than this. You're competing with Final Fantasy Tactics, bro. Come on. Come on. That's not it. Burns with fire. <laughs> and it burns, burns, burns. Oh, yucky. Yucky, 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 yucky. And it burns, burns, burns. <laughs> yeah, bro. That's a nasty looking game. That looks ugly.
What was my favorite One Piece arc? Uh, Skypea. Man, I'm behind on One Piece, too. I haven't booted up the old manga app in, in a few weeks. Very disappointed by the newly added Legend of Dragoon trophies. We've been talking about these all day. Here we go. There are only six trophies that aren't just unlocked by simply playing the game and not even one for completing additions. Oh, no, 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 no. I love that stuff. You're disappointed in that? I love that stuff. You mean as opposed to, like, transform into a dragon 500 times or collect every weapon in the game? Uh-uh. Happy. Happy. Happy for easy trophies. You love free trophies that are just get a trophy for killing the first boss and get another for killing the second boss? Yeah, baby. Make it so. What's funny is, um... Uh, the jumping flash ones that I like are like kill a boss without jumping or kill a boss without ever using your guns. That's cool shit. I understand. Both things are nice. I guess for an RPG, I like having the optional stuff stay optional. I like having the special stuff stay special, and it feels less special. It, feel, it feels more like an obligation when it's just like the trophies are like, yeah, obviously you're going to get every move for every character. Check out Albert Odyssey, a great looking RPG on the Saturn. Let me, I'll see. I'll see about that. Does it pop.com. No. Ew. Chat. Ew! <laughs> Your pet peeve is an achievement for the- getting an achievement for the first time you die? I hear you there. Deflated. <laughs> I don't know. I don't see it. I don't see it. Well, hold on. This looks sick as hell. I feel like this is not a fair screenshot. That's not right. Obviously, no game looks like that. That looks like the coolest video game I've ever seen. That was a bull shot. <laughs> All right, is this big bridge? Yep. Okay. So now we go the southeast of this screen, but I don't think we can shortcut there. That's from a cutscene. Here's the actual game. Okay, okay, okay. Oh my gosh, so nasty, so nasty. Now this is, I think like people see the game I'm playing right now and say so nasty, you know what I mean? And so it's crazy for somebody to say this looks beautiful and then to see this and say nasty. I realize there's almost no discernible difference. But that looked nasty to me. Um, so Neon White gave you trophies for dying particular ways. And I actually kind of liked it because most of those ways are, like, annoying. Like, okay, game, you're proud of yourself? And so it's kind of just like a little consolation prize. They're like, hey, I know I killed you in a dirtbag way. Here's a trophy. Hey, nice. And it kind of made up for it. PS1 N64 is awkward teens of video games. I feel like Saturn doesn't get enough credit in there. 
what's crazy is seeing these Saturn games and then Dreamcast games that hold up to this very day. Dreamcast fixed, solved it. Graphics were solved after the Dreamcast. No need to improve upon this. Dreamcast games held up, Saturn did not. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Huge leap between Saturn and Dreamcast. Is the Neon White story intentionally immature, or are we supposed to take it seriously? You're supposed to take it seriously. By the end? By the end, it's so obvious to me that they're like, oh, they're serious about this. Oh. Ew. Ooh, that was a nice little skip ahead. We like that. Okay, so I placed the TNT chip over there. You experience ill bleed on the Dreamcast? I think I watched a video. I watched like some YouTuber talk about ill bleed. There's a hole in the wall. Now we can go in. Show me the hole. <laughs> Come on, man. Don't just blow a hole open off screen. Okay, game. Ooh. This is cool. A digi egg. Awesome, I got the digi egg of sincerity. Can I get an Oya for beating Fire Emblem Engage without losing any allies? How many rewinds? Now I can call Sub Marymon and cross the ocean. Okay, and I guess our ocean access is to the north of Asuka Town, right? Would that be correct? Um, I'm gonna have to see this Digimon. I'm gonna have to see it. A few resets. Okay, you know what? Oh, yeah. But also, like, I feel like there's no point in having every single party member in that game. There's no point. You get more party members than you could ever have or need. They actually become expendable. <laughs> it's messed up. Either at the beach near Garuda Gym or the beach you said. Oh, well, let's just do the one near Garuda Gym. Okay, cool. Um, Which is to the north. Across the bridge into the north, I think? This junior and the baseball one use explosives coincidence um yes chat i feel like any video game character is bound to use explosives at some point it's gonna happen am i doing this right tranquil swamp no this is not the way to the beach All right, I am going to, oh no, 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 there's like, yeah, I'm going to save here because to get to the beach, we have to go to that spot where there could be that guy who one hit kills my entire team. None of the sensibles use explosives. Okay. All right. 
It's true. Yeah, I'm nervous about a trip to the beach. Dragon Quest VIII on PS Classics, I'm going to say, chat, is unlikely. I don't see it happening. What's crazy is, um... Sorry, chat. I'm, like, thinking about, like, the idea of, like, these massive libraries that you'll always have access to and then just, like, taking that away. <laughs> it's like, ah, we're just, just for a few years, we're going to take Arrested Development away. You'll appreciate it more when it comes back. I'm caught up on that. You know, as we talk about things getting added to Nintendo Switch Online and getting added to PlayStation Plus Extra, sours it a bit. Any experience with D2? That game is also absolutely batshit crazy in both design and story. Gosh, I feel like there was a remaster recently, right? With like some fly swatting? I don't know where that memory is from, but that's that's the extent. Some some guy swatting a fly. So no, I, I would say I have limited experience with D2. We cannot replace Patamon yet. Even at this point, I have not found a new party member. Please don't be sword guy. Please don't be sword guy. Rogue Galaxy uses basically the same engine as DQ8 and it got released. I'm not saying it's the engine is the reason why DQ8 won't get listed. Um, Square Enix cares deeply about Dragon Quest games. They won't let you cheapen them. They won't let you. None of the Dragon Quest games are on any of like the uh, Super Nintendo Mini or Nintendo Switch Online or even like eShop, right? I feel like none of the Dragon Quest games even got on the Wii eShop. They're super ultra protective of those. What if Vimon has weirdos as evolutions? Yeah, it might be time to add Vimon. Uh, we haven't been, I think once we cross the ocean, we can have access to Vimon. N64 games that hold up visually. Super Mario 64, true. Wave Race 64, true. Star Fox 64, false. Mario Kart 64, double false. That game's ugly as shit. Diddy Kong Racing, kinda. F-Zero X, false. Banjo-Kazooie, true. Banjo-Tooie, true. Ocarina of Time, true. Majora's Mask, true. Paper Mario, true. Star Wars Episode One Racer, true. Pokemon Snap, true. Pokemon... Stadium 1 and 2? Not impressive, but true. Rayman 2? True. Goemon games? True. Various racing games. Turbo Chicken Man? I'm actually surprised. I thought that list would be mostly bullshit, but most of those games actually do hold up visually. Aren't you overleveled for Viamon? We can put one of our Digimon in the bank uh, while we go on the trip to go meet Viamon. Counter alert. <laughs> cool. 19 we're close one away baby one away one away dragon quest 3 is 12 dollars and 50 cents on the eShop. cool i did not know that that might be it though i don't think that i don't think the extensive dragon quest library showed up on the eShop. those are in the vault dude Square Enix thinks old Dragon Quest games are good. And desired. There we go. Wario 64 has Platinum Games announcement. And it is. Celebratory art and a statement from the game director and composer. Okay. Okay. <laughs> 
It was foolish to expect anything. It was foolish. Yeah, that's on us. That's on us. Yeah, I mean, the PC version is still there. It's still a thing. Project GG thing? Yep. Um, that's Platinum Games' next thing. Yes. I was looking for something else, but stumbled on the moment you showed the picture with your long hair. Was it for, like, a charity stream or something? Why would I do such a thing? Uh, it might make sense to go into town and save before we venture off into the sea. RPGs typically like to disrupt your boat rides. If you're in an RPG and you're on a boat going to a new continent, you're about to get ransacked. You're about to wake up in the middle of the night and there's a ghost on the boat. It's just about to happen. It was just for fun during Legend of Dragoon. Oh, okay. Krakened and ghost chipped. Yep. Just be ready. for it. The thing is, we're ready for it. We're ready for it. That's the thing. We're actually ready for it. Etherjungle dot com <laughs> I don't know, chat. I don't know why I think the dot com jokes are funny. They shouldn't be. They're 25 years too late. But I love them. But gosh darn it, I love him. Ooh. Oh, and then he sucks you. Yeah, this Woodmon sucks. Watch this. Ooh, we evaded though. <laughs> Good evasion, Growlmon. Yep. And then you're too tired, I get to attack again. So nice. That was our sparkle opportunity. Nothing filled up. Uh-oh. I accidentally went the right way. Ah, oh, well. <laughs> I thought I was going the way to the town to make us save, but in fact, I went the correct way. Um, which some might say is bad for us, but it's okay. I was looking for the moment you said you would maybe do a second playthrough with Hashel and Meru 10 years from now. That would be May 30th, 2030. Cool. And Hashel... Yeah, it's crazy Hashel didn't end up in the final party, actually. That was a fun character. Rough. I need better from you, buddy. Never played Billy Hatcher. It's an obvious choice? I don't know, chat. Oh my god, dude. You're having a bad training? You're having a bad training day! Get it together, Guillemon! 
Oh my god. Horrible. Just horrible. Wasn't he pervy? Mm, I think he was probably pervy. Now I remember Submarimon. Yeah, this thing sucks. This is an army armor digivolution. Chat says this is the height of the heart of the series. Is this stupid shit? Um, how would one descend? Oh, uh oh. Hold triangle. Okay, okay, okay. All right, so this is scary. We are, uh, we're going deep. And it's been a long time since we saved. Dolphmon. Bring it on, you creep. Okay. Let's look at the damage here. Divine Rain! That's gonna hurt a lot. I think we're fire type. Nope, we're not. We're not. How about a counter alert, dude? Alright, so Giamon is so fast that the counter alert turn was wasted. That's on me. We're alright though, we're alright. Hang in there, big guy. I want you leveling up. One more, buddy. One more, buddy. I like the music down here. It's an undersea adventure. <laughs> Another Dolphmon. Easy, dude. So easy. Yeah, a lot of the animations just aren't there, you know? A lot of the getting hit animations is just kind of like knocking a toy off your shelf. And we should get another turn here. There we go. Would be cool if we had those fangs that fill your health, but we are dragon smackers. We don't do that. I like when you can't tell if you're, if you don't know if you're getting back up or not. I know. Enemies too. It is some fun suspense. Can I use the drill? No need. Got it. This is wild, brother. I kind of like it. It's more fun than a Waymon cutscene. But you know, this is after Final Fantasy VII. In terms of timelines. People have played Final Fantasy VII. They've been through it. 
they've been in a submarine. What percentage likelihood is it we get Elden Ring DLC this year? Is it 90? I like 90. I think 90% chance. Close, dude. Close. I don't know what to add, though, dude. Do you know, like, they're gonna have to, like, show some shit. If it's just, like, more monsters, it's not gonna be it. it like, the it has to feel like an event. You made such a wonderful game. Just adding more to it won't quite do it. Oh, adding underwater sections? <laughs> A lot of Dolphmon down here. Adding a lava windmill. <laughs> I like it. Nice block, nice block. Floating islands. <laughs> Ooh, was that a crit? D has this game secretly had crits this whole time? He did a lot of damage on that second hit. This game has secretly had crits this entire time. Wow. That was Submarine Mon. Or maybe Submary Mon. Which I'll tell you. There's that 21-year-old kid. Actually, different colors. Okay. Does that say no pants? Does that read as no pants to you? No, there's no no sign. Okay, you're right, you're right. There's not a no sign. Ogremon! Julia was looking for you, Ogremon. Ogremon's about to wipe this team. Watch this. No, no, no. We got this. Don't get up. Oh, we got up. Okay, okay. All right, Ogremon. Bone barrage. <laughs> I'm too fast for your shit. How about one more? Yes, so fast. This is why investing in speed was worth it. Uh-oh. Chad, have we ever talked about how Ogremon looks like the weird, uh... bad guys in Spawn? Have we had this conversation? They got the same damn mouth. John Leguizamo is a violator. Yeah, they're called violators. Yep. John Leguizamo is a clown who is allied with the violators? Yeah. I'm saying they look exactly the same. Talking about adaptations, right? Talking about adaptations. How masterful was the adaptation of this guy into the film Spawn? Portrayed by John Leguizamo. Yeah, actually this though. That's, that's what an Ogremon's mouth looks like to me. McFarland, dude. 
nobody was stopping him. Nobody was grabbing him by the arm and saying, wait, 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 wait. He was just off on his own, doing his own shit. You gotta hand it to Todd. <laughs> He was just going for it, man. You can't tell me shit, Marvel. I'm on my own now. This West Sector is suspicious. It's you again. Please, don't get in my way. All right, Nick. Okay, 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 okay. So the con the clown is confirmed a violator. All the things you did when you were with the governor, remember? And I could have had a million laughs together. You and I. I missed the you. I said, and I could have had a million laughs together. What's hilarious is the sparkles, dude. <laughs> Todd loves to get a little twisted. He does. But he's got to keep it grounded with the sparkles. You got to keep it grounded. So many teeth. I know. Uh, Chat, this is the creator of Venom. This is this comes from the twisted mind who created Venom. Of course that thing has lots of teeth. Yeah. Yeah, I don't actually know like what the relationships were, right? Todd McFarlane was doing Spidey stuff for a while. He didn't create Venom, just the modern version of him? Really? I truly thought Todd McFarlane designed Venom. But then, yeah, so once he's done with making Spider-Man cool, Todd McFarlane's like, all right, I'm going to go make my own character and my own fucking toy company. And I'm going to become a little Boston multimillionaire. What are you going to do about it? Chat. I've read about Black Suit. Venom was a complete accident. Marvel wanted me to draw Spider-Man in a black costume, but I didn't want to do that because I grew up with him in red and blue costume. So we decided to put the black costume on another character. I did some designs, created this big monster, and we went there. I wish I had more happy billion dollar accidents like that. So you're telling me he did create Venom? Chat? Mucho and I demand some facts here. Did Todd Farland, McFarlane design Venom or not? He did. He did. And then I got to use the emote KBS I'm right in my own damn chat. <laughs> the modern version of him. Shut up, Chad. That doesn't mean shit. He designed Venom. <laughs> so, yeah, Black Suit Spidey is crazy because that was like the winner of a fan contest. And no, they did not have a whole symbiote arc planned when he got that black suit in Secret Wars. Hey, bro. This 
symbiote's not equal to Venom. I guess that's what Chad is thinking. They're like, hey, well, Todd McFarlane didn't think of the black suit, so you can't say he created Venom. Chat? Venom with his big nasty teeth. The character was designed by Todd McFarlane and you need to accept it. Oh my gosh, you're being so bad. He tried to walk away with my headphones. I bet he didn't like my tone. I think the tone had something to do with it. That's a hit. The clap too. No, he likes clapping. I do that to him all the time. I just walk up and clap in his face. He seems to enjoy it a lot. Um. Yeah, Todd McFarlane's Spider-Man shit is like iconic is what sucks. If this is the video, I think it is JG Minto. This It's the entire... Oh, it's not. Oh, yeah, man. This is good shit. He barely uses his Boston accent in this video. We can do eight seconds. Well, get to, get to it. To live again. Have your answer? There's no time to think about it. Your heartbeat away from flatlining. Quick, what's the answer? So for the HBO series spawn, he used to do an intro for every episode. Boston accent? Yeah. You gotta watch Todd McFarlane uh, criticize the design of the movie Venom. It's the silliest accent you've ever heard. Oh, I'm disappointed that these are just regular. Chat said he made some Princess and the Bride figures, right? And normally it's like, this is my twisted vision. But nah, he just made these. Is there a baseball tonight or can I go to sleep? If you're staying up for baseball, go to bed. If the only reason you're hanging on to the stream is for the chance of some baseball, go to bed. <laughs> We're going to watch uh, the um, Sony reveal, the PS4 reveal. Baseball's not happening. <laughs> Gambling habits are real. I know. It's better not to encourage them. Almost 11.30. Sure enough. All right, Guillemon. Uh, you can do one fight. No crit. What do you think about counter alert, brother? All right. Okay, so that did not work like how I thought that would work. <laughs> okay, 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 okay. The Chrono Cross team just announced a patch is coming to fix the remaster. Wow, wild already. And hinted that the original creator added a new secret to the remaster. That's fun. I wouldn't get too excited about that secret. Oh my god, bro. This Ogremon's about to wipe our team. Should I run? Yeah, you know he's fast. You should run. Shit. I wouldn't expect something like that to get fixed. Kumamon couldn't run. Okay. 
I guess we stand and fight. Here's our tech. Here's our hammer rush. Yeah, you can't block all this shit, bro. Good stuff, Kumamon. Yes! Close. Close. Please remember we have not saved in quite some time. Please remember. Please do not let popcorn fall on the ground. Thank you. That <laughs> poor level one pat him on. Okay, so, uh, we died there because I was not healing between rounds. You're playing with fire. Yeah, well, I mean, I, I can't save. <laughs> I couldn't save if I wanted to. No, hopefully Quantum Mania I'll watch this week. Uh, I have a feeling that there's a closer save this way. And my gut is never wrong. Ew, you're going to the cinema for that? Ew. You should watch Spielberg's latest flick. That's worth going to the cinema for. Ew. <laughs> hey, we got another crit! More Marvel Drek? How dare you? <laughs> oh, we're close. I think what I think six thousand is the amount of XP we're going for. As you can see, my gut is never wrong about these things. <laughs> All right. Well, we know where we know where that ladder is. Next time we have to go find some Digimon who's hiding a mask from us. Does everyone hate Marvel now? More than ever, dead. All right. All right. This looks bad. 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 What can you do here, Guillemot? Oh, that's good damage. That's good damage. Did I watch Legion? No. Yeah, right, Edamon. Too slow, bro. Too slow. So I do wish that uh, Digimon's evolutionary level mattered. I honestly wish this Edamon fucked me up, you know? It sucks that an Ogremon and an Edamon are at comparable levels, strength-wise. Those are sunglasses, yes. Oh, dude, we're so close. We're so close. You might want to consider War Growlmon or Metal Mommymon. Show me War Growlmon. We're almost there to level 20. <laughs> Show me the Digimon I don't have. Okay. Northeast of this place. Yes. No. Dude, this is crazy. What a desert. What a desert. Are we ever getting that Furiosa spin-off series? Yeah. I think that's happening. Air Dramon. Looking nice, Air Dramon. What a set of teeth.
Okay, damage. It's okay. Mega Tornado! He got up. Oh, yeah, we can do this. Easy, bro. Making it, making it easy. Hey, hey, easy. Oh, what a block. Yeah, man. He's good. He's good. Battle one. You win. Here we go. It's going to be 6,000 XP. We're going to hit level, or will we hit level 20 when we get 6,000 XP? My guess is yes, but who knows? We did not, in fact, get to level 20. Okay. Okay. Seemed like it would be a milestone to me. It seemed like that would have been a pretty big, pretty big milestone kind of thing you would want to level up on. But no, that's okay. Uh-oh. Are you going to Biako City? Yeah. That's the plan. You better not. What? Why not? Just go back from here, okay? Hey, wait. Numamon, wait. Wait. He's gone. But what's up with the Biaka City thing? I'm I'm going there regardless. Sorry, save was at the end of path from the ramp. So not on this path. Chat, please confirm or deny if I should continue on this path. <laughs> and then admit that the Spider-Man franchise owes everything to Todd McFarlane. Save to the east of where you are standing. Okay. Hell yeah. You gotta save at the Oasis. At the Oasis! Hey, 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 baby! You never liked Venom very much? I feel like he also, like, added a lot to the portrayal of Spider-Man, though. If you see Spidey in a freaky pose, I feel like that's Todd McFarlane figuring out, oh yeah, Spider-Man's a spider spidery freak. He's got webbing all over his body. Why don't we just why don't we just make him freaky? He really stretched out those games. Yep. Everything. Okay, not everything. Not everything. Stanley, we like Stanley is everything. But like I feel like I truly feel like maybe 20% of Spider-Man's current success is owed to Todd McFarlane. And Chad is unwilling to accept that. I don't care what you liked. I don't care if you liked Venom or not. Yeah, right, Venom is not the most iconic Spider-Man villain. Garfield gets 0.5%. Yeah, I'm cool with that. There's definitely some people who like Spider-Man because of Andrew Garfield. How much goes to Toby? Too much too much for me to admit. Mega Tornado. I'm not even ready to admit how much Toby Maguire added to Spider-Man. Ooh, why'd you take so much damage from that one? You got blasted? What the fuck? Oh, a good kind of blasted. 
We filled up our glitter. Yeah, that's uh that's our mega form. A skinny knight with a big sword. <laughs> it's a lance still. Jack. Final purification. <laughs> Do it. Wait, did I miss the final purification? What happened there? Don't get up. I think I missed final purification or something. We gotta try again. Yeah, right, dude. Beam counterattack from shield. Got it, we were too fast. Still too fast. <laughs> and level 12. Oh. <laughs> it's a so yeah, it's a counter move, and because we were so fast, it was giving us a second turn before the counter connected. Uh and then I did it again, and it gave me the second turn, and then I guess the meter just ran out. He couldn't sustain the energy la that long. Hi, Junior. Why am I here? That's a sacred. Women always have sacreds. Okay. Women always say that women always say they have secrets. That's how women talk. Women are always talking about how they are women. Hmm, I wonder how you would get that little lunchbox down there. <laughs> Alright, chat. Is it worth it to try to get to level 20 before we end the stream tonight? I feel like it is. Oh, no. We just saved. I'm not even scared anymore, bro. Tuskmon, bring it on. You can't touch me. You're too slow. I can tell you're too slow. Not a lot of damage. Bink. Yeah, right. In your dreams. Tuskmon designed by Todd McFarlane. The horns are very similar to Violator horns. Very similar. Steel? Uh, we have so much money. If there were like one once... Uh, like, you can only get this item from this Digimon, I'd be more inclined to steal. But generally, there hasn't been fun shit to pick up from anybody in this game. The best weapons you could buy are easy to get. The best armor seems kind of irrelevant. We'll get there. Level 20. We'll get there. We'll get there. I don't think there's anything that says when you'll level up to level 20, you know? Power charge. Hell yeah. That's a potion. Energy disc. One hundred bits. Okay, game. It's way too late to get excited about a hundred bits. <laughs> Come on, man. Condescending. How much of the stream have I missed? Gee, no. We're almost at the end. Mammoth Mon is so cool looking. Love that design, dude. What a mask. Yeah. Big damage, big damage. And big damage. This is where our speed wins again, man. If we had to go toe to toe, equal hits with this mammoth, blow to blow, we would not succeed. 
trapped ya. And level 20, please. Nope, okay. All right. All right. My Dixie, thanks for 100 bits there. Um. Well, it doesn't make much sense to come this way. Yep, yeah, it does not. This thing's too slow. You can't touch Guillemot, bro. Ooh! Good clobbering. Good clobbering. Good clobbering. Good clobbering. Good clobbering. Good clobbering. I admire your clobbering. Supercharge. Tuskmon is a very weird design, dude. It's an uncomfortable dinosaur creature with very big back tusks. It doesn't look happy to me. Tough fight, by the way. Block this, Guillemot. Block this. Ooh! Ooh! dead. I don't know why that killed, dude. That seemed obscene. That seemed uncalled for to me. <laughs> you stupid dinosaur. You thought... Yeah, poor Kumamon's like, whoa, dude, 100 XP? I would love 100 XP. Sorry, bro. This game is not about spreading the XP. It's simply not. Your time will come. Your time will come. Your time will come. Your time will come. Time will come. It's not now. Red Ogremon. Excuse me, Gaborimon. He's just a regular Gaborimon. Look at those teeth. We can fight him. We can beat him. Yeah, I do think it's kind of cool. Like, Digimon and Pokemon kind of like were conceptualized independently. I think there's just a time where, like, bro, wouldn't it be cool to just have, like, monsters? <laughs> was, like, just, like, it was just on the tip of everyone's mind. If you're making a video game, you're just like, wouldn't it be, like, wouldn't it be cool, like, hear me out, just, like, mon like just, there's just, like, a bunch of monsters? Plasma Blade. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Did you all learn War Growlmon? There you go, chat. Now I can become War War Growlmon. <laughs> Did you all slot full? No! 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 Mm hmm. Mm. You stupid chat. War Growlmon is hard to say. It is close to rule Jerumon. Back to the lab, bro.
Oh, it sucks. You can't unfill it? No, you have to go back to the lab. You could not go to status. Giamon. C Digivolve. You could not. You could not. Oh, mama. We can show Plasma Blade. Yeah. But now you can understand my frustration at chat being like, hey, you should be leveling up War Growlmon. Yeah, I should be. <laughs> I agree with you. <laughs> Good tip. Dragon Quest V predates Pokemon in a monster collecting mechanic? Ew, kinda. In your dreams. Dragon Quest V doesn't get what it means to be a monster. I forgot about uh this Digimon. At first I was like, is this a banned Pokemon? No. That's an actual Digimon. Um, all right, I think we should actually go back and save. I think we're good for the stream. We're good for the stream. We should go back and save. Hagurumon. Yeah, I wonder, um... Where the closest Piximon is. Piximon would help us. If we find a Piximon, we'll be able to swap our Digimon. No, you can swap Digimon, but not their evolutions. Oh, you're so right. Oh, there's like no way other than going all the way back to the science lab to access our new Digivolution. Oh my god. Oh, that just hurts. That makes no sense. Why did they design that? No, nah, we got to do our business here first. I'm not doing the whole submarine trip. <laughs> No fast travel, no. Though, there is, I guess we could take the submarine to the spot that's closer to Asuka City. So unnecessary. <laughs> but good job. You believe there is one in the south town? A Digimon lab? Really? Will I be playing that Monster Hunter clone? It sounds like a pretty good game. I was actually watching some streams of it. And the answer is no. I'm talking about Wild Hearts. Um, Wild Hearts to me looks a lot of like why I got so checked out of like doing more Monster Hunter. Uh, Rise. Monster Hunter Rise, my favorite game of the year it came out. What is that, 2021? Goaty 2021. Uh, DLC comes out. I can't even finish it. I'm just bored of that shit. And I think a lot of it is like, um, the Piximon will let you change too. Okay, cool. Cool, 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 cool. All right. All right, all right, all right. I feel like we can make it, chat. I feel like we can make it to a Piximon. It'll be the EZA group stream tomorrow. I hope they're doing multiplayer. It seems so mechanics heavy, man. It's not fun for me to watch. It seems so overly involved with all the little boxes on your screen. And it reminds me of why I probably stopped playing Final Fantasy XIV. It just seems like, it seems like so many extra things that don't actually matter, but you're just meant to keep track of, you know? Oh my 
my god. The differing origins of Digimon and Pokemon may explain why I think Digimon is bland or hollow. Digimon is an extension of super simple toys, while Pokemon is a ground-up idea inspired by bug collecting? These takes. You're... It's blow after blow with chat's takes tonight. It's blow after blow. I'm going to have a black eye tomorrow. <laughs> Chat creates a Pokedex. Is this something? Mm, close. <laughs> it's close to something. I need evolutions, baby. That's why I'm saying like, oh, Dragon Quest V did it first. It's like, that's boring, bro. Just like catching a monster is nothing without evolutions. It's nothing. I don't care. <laughs> Uh, do you know Rockstar was working on an Austin Powers kart racing game? I did. This is chat's did you know gaming culture. Yeah, I think I, I, somebody showed it to me like the second that appeared, I think. The Austin Powers kart thing. Is it like the mystery of what you'll get? Yeah, it's just such a fun like progression. It's way more fun than like this monster is leveling up and occasionally learning a new move. There's there's a mystery for sure, but there's also like the growth to me is what makes it so appealing. It's becoming a cooler thing or a weirder thing, a bigger thing, a scarier thing or more lovely things sometimes. Yeah. Chances of Austin Powers 4 in 2023? It'd have to be an announcement, right? Okay, sorry, sorry, sorry. Currently, our quest is to get to a Piximon. Our quest is to get our Digivolution that we've earned through getting Giamon to level 20. What is the quickest way there? Yes, it's a bad take to say Breath of the Wild is one of the worst Zelda games. Absolutely. You will need to backtrack. The next town has story stuff. So I need to backtrack all the way through the aquatic adventure? I think no dice. I think no dice. You know what this reminds me of? This reminds me of the time in Parasite Eve 2. Where it's like, okay, now go back to the hotel and you can go to the store and there will be lots of good guns to buy. And we couldn't afford them and it wasn't even worth buying the best gun. This reminds me of that in that we ended up going back to that hotel anyway. Like an hour into progressing through this story normally. So I feel like it's not worth going all the way back just to see the one evolution of Giamon currently. Maybe we put Kumamon back up front and focus a little more on our bear friend. I think that's what it is. So we're not going back to save Giamon. Instead, we will get Kumamon up in the spotlight, work on our big bear boy, who is dramatically underleveled now that I focus so hard on Giamon. And then that'll be where we go next. Yeah, going forward sometimes is shorter. It is, 100%. So that's what we'll be doing. Want to dead anytime soon? It's going to be like our backup game. It's going to be like a... Uh, like, um... Lost, last Sword was, you know what I mean? Final Sword, excuse me. Just where it's like, yeah, let's just play some more Want to Dead tonight. I will not commit an entire stream to want the dead again. Full playthrough of Tears of the Kingdom? I think so. I think that might be a full playthrough. I think I might need chat for that.
here's the thing. I'm going to start rolling my eyes at Tears of the Kingdom. Be prepared. I'm going to be rolling my eyes so much. And so, like, I'm going to need chat to unroll them. To be like, easy, bro. Unroll, unroll, unroll. Okay, all right. Sorry, my bad. I gotta appreciate this. Are you genuinely skeptical? Yeah, genuinely skeptical. Why set yourself up for negativity? It's just... I don't believe. I don't believe. I simply don't believe they're about to do it again. I don't, I don't, I don't believe this game is going to be as groundbreaking as Breath of the Wild. I don't think it's going to feel as fresh. I don't think it's going to feel as interesting. And so, once a lot of that uh, specialness wears off, and we're like down to the game's base mechanics, we're just seeing the game as it is. It, uh, it might suffer. But no, I've been not been checking out the leaks. That'd be crazy. Are you open to upcoming indie 3D platformer recommendations? Yeah. I mean, I'm playing a, on Friday. I'm playing an indie 3D platformer. Indie's debatable, but we're playing Clive and Wrench on Friday. What if Zelda finally sucks completely? I mean, Link to the Past sucks. They've already done it. <laughs> Which, by the way, I'm playing Saturday. Clive and Wrench Friday. Saturday is the Brainstorm Tournament for the concept album. And then, after that, A Link to the Past. My hot Zelda take is that Darksiders 2 is better than Breath of the Wild. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not even... I hate that take. It's not even... I don't even like to engage with it. It mean, To me, it means that you have, like, World of Warcraft characters on posters in your room. You know? There's the big catch on PS1 styled 3D platformer. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We've definitely seen big catch because that's from the makers of Yonoid 2. And then Cavern of Dreams, definitely we've seen trailers for too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're up on both those games. We'll probably play both of those when they come out. Um, I feel like both of those have both of those have showed up on the Discord and then maybe also when we're doing docket streams. Yeah, Batboy's on the docket. If there was a mod with better sprites, would I like Link to the Past more? All right, Link to... Okay, the sprites are... We'll talk about it a lot on Saturday. The sprites are... Definitely, they leave a bad taste in my mouth. But they wouldn't fix that game's design. Does better sprite include dungeon walls? If the mod is Link sprite, but also... All character sprites. A lot of the enemy sprites are really bad, too. Okay, so we completely like redo all the sprites. But also, if it includes dungeon walls, we might have something. No, we have to. We gotta do pink hair link. No, no, no. We have to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We will not be changing the main character. We're doing like the weird ones where it's like I'm also Samus, I'm also Mega Man. Does dungeon walls mean design? No, I'll point it out to you on Saturday. I hate how the dungeon walls look in A Link to the Past. I hate it so much. All right, so it kind of works on NES. <laughs> we're done. By the way, we're done with Digimon World for the day. We're all done. Um. The illusion kind of works. Representation kind of works for Zelda NES and the, and the dungeons. I kind of like it. 
uh, Link to the Past pushes the dungeon walls too far. When um when they get like too curvy, when there's like too much shit going on, the dungeon walls don't make sense anymore. That's kind of that kind of is what I'm talking about. I'll be pointing it out constantly on Saturday. Um, okay, so forgive my Bing image search. <laughs> this is nice. This is nice. I get it. We're peering down into a dungeon. This dragon is on its side. So is Link. Both of them are just rolling around on their sides. They're on the floor. Neither of them are standing. But it's an NES. We get it. We get it. But yeah, the walls I'm cool with. You know what I mean? I kind of I kind of like it even. I almost kind of like it. But a Link to the Past uses that same shit, but then in just the weirdest ways possible. So now we're not just like looking down in, it's also like we're just kind of constantly moving across, but the things never change their perspective as we move across them. And also Link doesn't change size as he scales up or down. He stays the same exact size. Um, I just hate how ugly the walls look. And then, yeah, I guess if like, if you're doing a bunch, you've, you've really lost the illusion here. <laughs> If you do, if you do it like if you go, if you dip this far in, you've lost the illusion, and now basically those are those walls have to be angled for that to make any sense. I hate those walls. So sorry, no chat, 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 chat. This is not my fault. This is not my fault. Somebody just asked, somebody just asked, like, would, would good sprites, would a good sprite mod work? And I'm like, does good sprite mod fix the walls as well? It does. Okay. Then, yeah, yeah, yeah. I would definitely take a mod that fixes the way that the walls look. It's still representational to you. Oh, my God. Look at look at this. Oh my god, it makes me so mad. It makes me so mad. The way this indents into this way and this way. You've lost the illusion. You've lost it entirely. It makes no sense. Less incline and, and no incline. Ch God, this, it just, it shouldn't be. It shouldn't be, but they made their tile set <laughs> and they said, let it ride. It's like a pyramid. It is like a pyramid, exactly. But it's meant to represent a straight up wall that we're looking at from above. It might be smaller on top. <laughs> yeah, it'd have to be, exactly. For this to be correct perspective, it would have to be a little pyramid that goes all the way up diagonally. Oh boy. Oh, it just cranks me up, brother. This is just the start of it. <laughs> Meanwhile, this is a lovely illusion. Oh, this is so lovely. I get it. Oh my gosh. I feel like I'm looking down into a temple. What a lovely illusion. Tarnished. They said, let's stick with that illusion, but let's not understand it entirely. Okay. I gotta throw up my hands. Okay, Zelda 3, let's do it. <laughs> I mean, yeah, chat, like, uh, it's tricky. Basically, to make the illusion work, the closer you get to the middle, the more flat the walls would be. So if you truly want a straight up flat wall here in the middle of the screen, if we are looking straight down onto this map, it would have to be a flat wall. You would have to see no bricks.
and definitely not this stuff on both sides of these. Basically, you have to pick which angle you're looking at it from. Top down doesn't do it. Maybe the illusion would be more convincing if you use Google Images instead of Bing. That could be possible. That could be true. What is the wildest wish that you would want to come true in Tears of the Kingdom? Um, I would like I would like to allow Link to do some truly bad things. Bad things with consequences. I would like to truly harm an NPC's life irreparably. I would like to like knock over a tree that destroys their house. So I get a cute little item, but then their house is gone. <laughs> Inverse Terrytown. Yeah, I want Terrytown to be a metropolis, right? That'd be so fun. So in Breath of the Wild, you build up Terrytown, and then in Tears of the Kingdom, you tear it down. <laughs> Little by little, you convince people to leave Terrytown. Yeah, that'd be really fun, actually. Yeah, I love that. Dragon Room makes sense, chat. If you look down into a tube, if you look into a box... Chat, if you put up a box up to you, if you would face up to your box... The lines will do this if you're looking straight into it. That perspective works for me, except for the characters, obviously. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Put your face up to a box. Like a diorama. Yeah. Orig origami zombie. Thanks for being an eight-monther. The blocks won't make sense. They won't. They won't because there'd have to be gosh for it to work. You'd have to make a unique block sprite for each position in the room. But the blocks have nice depth to them. I kind of like them. Three colors. It's easy. Perspective only works in that shot because the camera is locked. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's locked for every room in Zelda. I'm saying it works. Yeah, I know. Link's Awakening can get pretty hairy, too. Ew. Yeah, ew. It doesn't bother me as much in Link's Awakening where it doesn't get as exaggerated, I guess. But it's been a while since I played through it. And I'm, I'm guessing it gets really bad in uh, the sequels. Oh boy. I'm ready. I'm pre I'm mentally prepared. <laughs> it's so weird, chat. It works for me the entire outer rim, but the second you start jutting in, it's like that makes no sense, bro. Come on, brother. Yeah. The slopes. We have to think of them like slopes. We have to think of pyramid walls. If we're going to survive, if you're ever going to survive, we have to think that every single one of these temples has pyramid walls. It's the only way we're getting through this. Can a guy get an oh no for my cat just puking up his bedtime scoop? Yeah. Not the time for Vom. <laughs> You've never seen them as straight? That is just crazy. It's not because these are straight walls. Shut up about you never seen them as straight walls. Come on. That, these are obviously designed to be straight walls that you're looking down into. Come on, bro. <laughs> All right, P9, look into a box. Look into a box. <laughs> Pick up a box and look into it. <laughs> I feel crazy right now. I feel crazy. I feel crazy. Pick up a box. 
<laughs> Actually, I should pull up I should pull up the PlayStation meeting on the big big uh big PC so we can watch that full screen. Oh, <sighs> no, we'll get the volume. We'll get it all looking good. No, 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 no. I said go to sleep. You're good. All right, chat. So it's been 10 years since Sony announced the PlayStation 4. A pivotal moment in my online career, but also like a big moment for Sony themselves. They finally got their shit together. The internet was so proud of them. What does that event look like today, 10 years later? What's changed? What hasn't changed? What was I right about? What was I wrong about? Do you remember this part? You know, shit like that. Okay, let's see if they still have it on their own YouTube channel. If I could get the official Sony feed, that would be ideal. Um, what was it called? PlayStation Meeting. PlayStation 4 Announcement Live Stream. Wow, this shit really is two hours long. My God. Okay, we're not going to watch all two hours. No way. 720p, baby. It's not happening. We're not like that. This is not that kind of channel. Uh, let me change the Twitch name. I'm kind of excited, chat. I'm excited. This, like, this, is, this was born out of me being curious. Um, late night PS4 announcement revisit <laughs> just chatting all right this is a revisit which means we're not watching the whole thing we wouldn't do that we're not like that it's already late why would we do something like that you know But, you know, if something catches our eye, it couldn't hurt to take a peek. You know what I'm saying? Little peek never hurt nobody. There we go. I feel like this is already a thing. Everybody with their laptops open trying to live vlog this. Do we still do this? When Apple has an event, are people still live vlogging on their laptops? They are, okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god all right keep in mind 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 this is regarded as like sony coming back this is regarded as sony knocking it out of the park they came from the depths of the playstation 3 and then they turned it all around with this shit all right i actually can't i can't i can't i can't i cannot i can't we're gonna we gotta skip ahead already i simply cannot but also i think that music is gonna get me dmca'd ladies and gentlemen please welcome andrew house andrew house
with the PS1 Good afternoon, boot up music. and to those of you joining us uh, from around the world, good morning, good evening, and welcome. I wonder what his job uh, title is at this point. It's a thrill to be with you here today. The stakes are high for what we're going to show you. Today marks a moment of truth and a bold step forward for PlayStation as a company, a moment as of creators truth. and innovators, and as industry leaders. At Sony, we've always talked about our entire portfolio of technology and content, blockbuster titles, and successful entertainment franchises. Today, we'll show you how we're strengthening the PlayStation ecosystem through hardware, software, and network capabilities that, when unified, create truly magical experiences that can only be found in our world. Magical experience. We'll show you how we're making access to our content and experiences, social experiences. interactions and titles vastly more simplified and streamlined. <laughs> and we'll show you the many ways in which the living room is no longer the center of the PlayStation ecosystem, the gamer is. With the gamer as the focal point for our efforts. The living room is no longer gamer is. Wait, how did that work? And streamlined. And we'll show you the many ways in which the living room is no longer the center of the PlayStation ecosystem. The living room is no longer the center. The gamer is. The gamer is. Okay. With the gamer as the focal point for our efforts, we've created a platform attuned to consumers' changing behaviors and an evolving sense of play. Ease of access, regardless of location or device, has been an absolute priority. With mobility and the ability to share content and experiences becoming experiences. an increasingly important part of the gaming experience, experience, connectivity between devices and the ease with which they connect has been essential to meeting the demands of today's casual or core gamer. Our vision for the future is consumer-centric, developer-inspired, and characterized by an unwavering commitment to phenomenal play experiences. <laughs> Look at that expression, bro. God, this just sucks. This is crazy. This just sucks. These experiences can happen on a console or a handheld device. And we're meeting the demand for mobility with the most powerful handheld gaming system ever created, PlayStation Vita. In fact, the operating system and chipset inside PlayStation Vita is so powerful, we think it could bring significant value to gamers' living room experiences. <laughs> we know the potential for expanding PlayStation Vita to the living room is real and promises to deliver amazing gameplay and multimedia. We'll be talking more about this exciting initiative later this year, but it's safe to say that we'll continue to unlock PlayStation Vita's potential. We're also focused no, they streamed, on expanding you can stream the world your PS4 of PlayStation to Vita. That was cool. to smartphones and tablets via PlayStation Mobile. We've strengthened the PlayStation Network to offer more groundbreaking indie titles such as Unfinished Swan and the critically acclaimed Journey. And okay. we're bringing more convenience and I value to Unfinished our gamers Swan. through programs such as Instant Game Collection and Day One Digital. Every facet of PlayStation will continue to become more powerful and as you'll see today, remains at the heart of every new innovation we create. While our Sony heritage has long been defined by superb engineering and technology unleashed via powerful hardware, we also knew success would rely not only on a package of next generation technologies, but on reconceptualizing how the next generation gamer would want to play. While we once had changed the gaming landscape, now the consumer was changing us. From mobility to multi-format play to greater community engagement, as well as platforms de designed to enable access to entertainment, social media, and more. This is just crazy. The new platform were clear. What prompted watching this has been 10 years. Conversations with ten the years ago, wildly talented today. and ambitious minds found within the developer community helped us understand what would define the new and the next for them. We painted a picture of the future These images are that would insane. revolutionize not just the console, but would have implications across our entire portfolio of products. Our immersion into the gaming experience at every touch point resulted in a renewed. Oh my God.
the like his speech is driving me crazy. <laughs> his speech is actually driving me nuts. Our immersion into the gameplay experiences of the cultural touch point. Sorry, what I was curious about is like who Sony chooses to represent them in this collage. Like it's nice to see Joel front and center. They know they did right there. You got Ratchet in the upper left. Ibn Ab got on here. A bunch of goo. Infamous guy. I don't know who this guy holding the cyber soldier holding a gun is. I don't know who this is. Are oh, you saying that's Nathan Drake? This is Nathan Drake. That's Joel. Kill zone? That's not kill zone, man. He's too jacked. This, I don't, rightfully, this might just be like a guy. <laughs> that might just be a guy and like poor little sack boy is like I'm just little sack boy down here that's a chimera from resistance is it yelling is it yelling that would make more sense those things have abs like that I guess okay I'll buy it I'll buy it I'll buy it, I'll buy it. it makes more sense than a guy I'll take it. We got, we got Sly Cooper up here. The bad guy from uh, Ratchet and Clank there. It's crazy uh, how much Sony built its IP over that generation is what I'm saying. Sony was IP soft 10 years ago. Like Sly Cooper just wasn't it, chat. Sly Cooper can come back, but he, like, needs to evolve. Sure. Like, Sly Cooper was, to me, like, never a big deal. Never had the magic. <laughs> Passion for play and keen insight into the demands. Yeah, we're talking 10 mil seller, you know what I mean? To be What's it going to take for Sly Cooper to be in that 10 million dollars uh, 10 million sold league? We will give you a league. glimpse into the future of play. A reimagination of the gaming experience that has experience. been developer-led, <laughs> consumer-inspired, and powerfully and thoughtfully engineered by Sony Computer Entertainment. It's designed to make accessing the content gamers love easier than ever. It's conceived as the most personalized gaming experience, experience available today. It is consistent with our heritage in gaming, delivering the most powerful platform ever. It is simple and adaptive with socially enriched content. Expect worlds to come alive with greater fidelity and in Socially enriched content, dude, Tensity I hate the speech. Before. Expect the best franchises to be even better. And no Kratos, you're right. It had been to too long and play and stay informed even when away from the primary console. No Kratos is actually crazy. God of War 3 is one of the best selling PS3 games. They were so done with Kratos at this point. That is that is pretty crazy. This is the foundation of our next generation platform, PlayStation 4. I railroaded him. <laughs> He was about to finally say it. I did not perceive the buildup. <laughs> this is the fucking buildup as they show this weird shit. He's talking about socially enriched software and then suddenly just drops. Oh, this, this is the PlayStation 4. Before, expect the best franchises to be even better and expect powerful opportunities to connect and play and stay informed even when away from the primary console. This is the foundation of our next generation platform. PlayStation 4. Yeah, I don't feel the buildup. That buildup, he whiffed on the buildup. He just plopped that out there. We believe that PlayStation... Thinking about it now, 
I'm like liking the PS5 reveal more, which was just the video. It was just a trailer, right? That was just like showing the, the like the hardware up close. PlayStation 4 represents a significant shift from thinking of PlayStation as merely a box or a console to thinking of PlayStation as a leading authority on play. Chat brings up a good point. Why make a big deal out of calling it the PlayStation 4 when you already knew it would be the PlayStation 4? I get it. So like, you don't have to do a huge build up. I get it. For gamers around the world, PlayStation is the best place to play. PlayStation 4 will unleash imaginations to create next generation experiences that surpass experience. gamers' wildest expectations, while also allowing developers to explore new business models that offer more flexibility, including episodic and free to play. <laughs> He's so right about free to play and so wrong about episodic. That's so funny. Today, we are revealing the genesis. So right. And so of an wrong. expanding idea about the future of play. An idea with enough vision to lead the ever-changing landscape. And an idea founded on the conviction that we must give gamers the kinds of multi-dimensional experiences they not experience. only expect, but quite frankly, deserve. Over the next couple of hours, we're going to show you what the new PS4 is capable of, what innovations it is bringing to gamers, and what central ideas and principles drove its development. You'll meet the minds who form the creative soul of the gaming community, who are pushing the boundaries of play. One of those great minds is the gentleman I'm about to introduce. At the age of 17, he joined Atari, and by age 20 had his first major design success Here we go. with the arcade game Marvel Madness. Here we go. Future successes This is many. an intro. He worked with Sega on Sonic the Hedgehog. Yes. He served as president of Universal Interactive Studios and was part of the creative team on such blockbusters as Crash Bandicoot, Jack uh -huh. and Daxter, and Ratchet and Clank. There we go. Now, as our lead system architect on the PlayStation 4, he has been able to harness the engineering prowess Great of intro. Sony Computer Entertainment with deep developer insight to create a next generation platform that sets a new industry standard. It is my great pleasure to introduce lead system architect, Mark Cerny. This fucking director. <laughs> I, love, I love the sound pick so far. Uh, that's Crash Bandicoot 1 theme. Behind you. There you go. That's Thank you, Andy. That's Thank you for the warm welcome. Genuinely upset. Okay, so in rehearsal, Cerny comes from stage right. But tonight... Oh, he's like, he's like where is he? Oh, there he is. Thank you, Andy. Thank you for the warm welcome, and thank you all. <laughs> Cerny has no time to accommodate your bit, Andrew House. That's thank you, Andy. Just plows through, Thank you for bro. the warm welcome, and thank you all for being here today. As um, Andy mentioned, my role on the development of the Next Generation platform started about five years ago. At that time, we began to look at how the, the console architecture could free developers from painful technological limitations and enable them to create the game experiences that they'd always been dreaming of making. We also looked at how the- Chad, if you're wondering why I'm so upset, that sentence works if he just says games. Most of the time you can just say games. To help the developers make the games that they want, you know? <laughs> The whole PlayStation ecosystem could be evolved as well to allow the player to take a dynamic, preference-driven path through the world of content. So when we started this process, it was the early days of the PlayStation 3, which is to say, at a time of great transition in technology and how we use it. Every major console, all the way from the Atari 2600, which this kind was of thing is interesting because at the time, I started um, in games some 30 something years ago. Like the PS3 the was hard up to develop, for, right? And it hurt it the entire had pretty much lifetime. been a single purpose device. Insert the cartridge, so it's interesting to hear him kind of talk about that. Power it on, play your game. That's all they did, and, and that was fine. That was the world we lived in then. But 
at the time of the launch of the PlayStation 3, all of that was in flux. The, the world was becoming a connected place, and a single device was now expected to provide a, a range of services and applications. Now, PS3 has done pretty well in these respects. It's the top platform for Netflix. But as a console designed before this revolution hit, there are limits to the functionality that it can provide in this new world. In addition, since the launch of PlayStation 3, um, we've seen a proliferation in shit. the number and variety of devices that people own and interact with. With so many platforms to support, much less value is found today in exotic technologies such as blast processing or a supercomputer on a chip. I'm proud of what we accomplished with Cell on PlayStation 3. But it's at good the shit, same sorry. time, the need to radically customize technology can interfere with the design innovation that's so central to game creation. So for PlayStation 4, while we knew that the core performance of the console would be vital to its success, the cross-disciplinary team that we assembled had several additional goals. For one, we wanted to make you miss sure that nothing I think he's still would come on the team. between the player, excuse you me, just mean you miss him going off like and this? the joy of play. When I think back to the launch of the PS1, there was a, a real fun factor that was an intrinsic part of the PlayStation DNA. The whole world was our audience, and, and we had a remarkable time evangelizing the message that gaming was fun. You missed this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get we you. We also wanted to be sure that the system architecture could fluidly connect the player to a, a larger world of experiences and provide easy access to everything PlayStation has to offer across the console and mobile spaces and the PlayStation network. And finally, we wanted to hear from developers. We spoke to dozens of the best teams in the world. We wanted to know what was important to them. We wanted to make them happy. Because if they were happy, we knew we could unleash the uh, creativity and innovation that would result in a true next generation experience. You saw it coming. Our goal was to experience. create an architecture that would facilitate the expression of their ideas. Now, we couldn't come right out and say in 2008 or so, what would you like to see in a next-gen console? We had to talk our way around the topic. But they knew what we meant, and their comments were invaluable in crafting the system specs. And we were able to create this stuff was in PlayStation 4 a platform by game creators for game creators. Yeah, it was really exciting it that they were listening to developers, and accessible actually. System. And it has a deep feature set to support the ongoing Sun versus the moon, thanks for being a 10 month. You're enjoying the experience? Good. Itself. Great. Now, the architecture that we chose is, is like a PC in many ways, but supercharged to bring out its full potential as a gaming platform. Like a PC, but for supercharged. For the uh, CPU, we chose the most familiar architecture on the planet, the x86, uh, allowing us to tap into over three decades of programming expertise. For the graphics processor, we decided to use a highly enhanced PC GPU. Some the, the way we go from like fairly convincing motherboard to a representation of a CPU to a paintbrush. <laughs> It's not easy to make these. So what I'm kind of wild, uh, what I think is kind of wild is um, this presentation is mostly for the people in the room. Still. We're not quite at the point yet where it's like, oh, online chat is our primary audience. Like they're, they're making this stuff for the reporters there in the live audience. It, just, it does feel like a very old-fashioned presentation. Something that would be easy to develop for the, humans for in the, in the early room, days yeah. of the platform life cycle, but at the same time, a, a GPU with remarkable long-term potential. And for system memory, I'm proud to announce that we are equipping the system with... Still? No, I mean, like, compare this to how the PS5 was introduced. Compare and contrast, chat. It's like, they wouldn't even do this except for very particular, we're doing this for this very kind of like low key kind of like, hey, if you want the facts, they're in this video over here. If you want to see the splashy console reveal, it's in this video over here, which we expect a lot more people to watch. And no public stage show.
James, but okay. Thanks for being a brand new sub. A brain for the RAM is also very funny. Eight gigabytes of high-speed unified memory, both satisfying the number one developer request for ease of game creation and also increasing the richness of content achievable on the platform. And this system memory is backed by the massive local storage that only a hard drive can provide. <laughs> Like, I, to me, the hard drive is more of the brain. That's just one-to-one. -one. There's no artistic correlation there. It's just like, this is what, this is what the hard drive looks like. <laughs> Overall, this architecture is designed to ensure that the very best games and the most immersive Funny. experiences will reach the experiences. player. Now, the next few demos are live, so I get the pleasure of sharing with you... Oh, my God. For the first time, the new controller. look at him. And here it is, the DualShock 4. I get it. I get the cut to wide. Look at this cut here, though. He finally picks it up for the first time ever, and the director's like, cut to wide? Wide technically has a better shot of it. There we go, director. Good shit. Good shit. There you go. There you go. There you go. Thank you. And take wide? So. During the development of the DualShock 4, we worked with key partners in the development community to enhance the feel of the joystick and the trigger buttons. The uh, result is a much tighter sense of control over in-game actions. We also um, took this as an opportunity to enhance the rumble capabilities and reduce the controller latency. I don't feel like PS4 rumbles better than PS3, is it? It's weird to say I'm And finally, say we added a few new features. Um, a touchpad as a new yes. form of input. Oh my God, a yeah. A share button and a headphone jack to enhance social interactions. Mm -hmm. And a light pad as a, uh, excuse me, a light bar as a simpler, more friendly way to identify players. And this new controller was... That's a lie, right? He's just not revealing the full purpose of that bar, which I think is to be used with the PlayStation Eye. I feel like that bar and its particular shape is designed to be tracked with the PlayStation Eye. And he doesn't want to say that yet. It's designed in tandem with a second oh, peripheral. Okay, never mind. <laughs> a stereo camera that can sense the depth of the environment in front of it and okay. track the 3D position yep, of the yep, controller yep. All right. via its light bar. All right, there it is. I railroaded them. Now, You're right. I got to let them play. Demo. Let them cook. Let them cook. It uh, shows the payoff from the augmented PC architecture. This is Unreal Engine 4 from Epic, running in real time on prototype hardware. There's some very sophisticated technology here, GPU accelerated particle systems and realistic transmissive materials with substantial subsurface scattering. No, and Avengers this is all changes the light depending time. on which character you pick. Look a lot of games still the animation light plays bar. using the touchpad input. Not only do we have the power to drive this level of application, but we also have in PlayStation 4 an extraordinarily easy conversion path from the PC world. Now, as to how we accomplish this. So this is wild. I feel like the stuff that came true is that very particular particle swirl. In PlayStation 4, an extraordinarily easy conversion path from the PC world. Video games still look like this. Now, as to how we accomplish this, <clears throat> PlayStation 4 is centered around a powerful APU that combines eight CPU cores with a state-of-the-art GPU with almost two Why did he act like he's playing? Oh my God, Canis. I didn't even like... He's like, to show you... We're going to do a bit of playing. To show you these, I got to pick up this controller. And then you're right. We just saw this... Maybe he initiated the it? Augmented PC architecture. This to is prove that it's running on Engine hardware? From Epic, running in real time on prototype hardware. Wickedly talented. There's some very Epic. sophisticated <laughs> technology here. GPU accelerated particle systems and realistic transmissive materials with substantial subsurface scattering. And this is all running in real time. I can look around as the animation plays. You okay, so he actually is. He actually is. When he says I can look around, he is wiggling the camera a little bit. Got to give him credit there using the touchpad input. Not only do we have the power to drive this level of application, but we also have in PlayStation 4 an extraordinarily easy conversion path from the PC world. Now, 
As to how we accomplish this, <clears throat> PlayStation 4 is centered around a powerful APU that combines eight CPU cores with a state-of-the-art GPU with almost two teraflops of computational performance. Putting CPU and GPU on the same die gives them streamlined access to a common pool of memory. And with PlayStation 4, we're taking an unprecedented step. For system memory, we're using GDDR5, the type of memory typically reserved for uh, top-of-the-line, high-end graphics I was so cards. confused by this. This gives us 176 gigabytes per second of bandwidth. The GDDR versus whatever uh, the Xbox One was using, which I think was just a different kind. Of, it's like DDR something else. It was so... DDR3 is what Xbox was using. Yeah, this is where they lose me. Xbox was DDR3 versus GDR5, yeah. And this provides a further boost to the GPU performance. Now, earlier I said we were using a highly enhanced PC GPU. Principally, we've modified oh, like the drops GPU a bunch of fruits on this thing, right? Easier, which is to say, there we go. we've made it practical to use the GPU as a general purpose computational device. Hell yeah, look at that. This next live demo is a million object physics simulation from Havoc. This is primarily running on the GPU, not the CPU. Tasks that can fully occupy the CPU cores will be achievable using just a fraction of the PlayStation 4 GPU. Nobody uses this. <laughs> I guess he's, he's, he's demonstrating tasks, but most any game would be like, no, that's such a waste of resources. Why would you do that? Yeah. You're right, Overall, Mac uses it. Mac our uses goal it. has been to architect the system so as to support You're right a breadth of experiences. I'm really looking forward to seeing how the development community will choose to use this tool that we've provided for them. Truth is, um, I'm making a game too. In my case, I'm focusing on that joy of play I remember so well from the early PlayStation days. This is such so, a sweet presentation. Here's a quick look at the title I'm directing. That was honestly so sincere. War has come to our peace. What kind of land. asshole would make fun of this game? We must send our best to neutralize this threat. Chat, what's he say? What's he say right before we cut to this? What's he say right before we cut to this? Has been to architect the system so as to support a breadth of experiences. I'm really looking forward to seeing how the development community will choose to use this tool that we've provided for them. Truth is, um, I'm making a game too. In my case, I'm focusing on that joy of play I remember so well from the early PlayStation days. So here's a quick look at the title I'm directing. So you expect something so sweet. You expect a like, sweet little cute little like Marble Madness, a sweet little Crash Bandicoot, Sonic the Hedgehog, just a cute little thing. And then this is the tone we come in with. War has come to our peaceful land. <laughs> we must send our best to neutralize this threat. <laughs> A veteran explorer, military might. This um, is wild, yes, bro. Come on. Up. I would like to make a small addition to the team. Holy shit, that's such a funny juxtaposition. Behold my greatest creation. Mac. Just go slow, little buddy. You'll be fine. He looks a little delicate to me. Knack is capable of explosive growth. He will be invaluable in the fight against the goblins. There you go. There you go. Show him. Show him the particles. Knack, you're no human. Why do you work for them? There you go. Next gen, Victor's baby. Victor's up to something. The next step of human evolution begins now. The world is about to change, and he'll be the one who changed it. Knack really does feel special. But we gotta stream a Knack playthrough. That's a special game. 
It's insane how cinematic focused that trailer was. Thank you. I think he's going to show some gameplay right now. Pick that controller I up, I can't buddy. tell you how nice it is to finally be able to show that in public. So with the major system components, CPU, GPU, hard drive, um, memory, controller, in place, the next design Mackie, task for our team was to create the larger user experience that would surround the game. We chose five key principles as the basis for this experience. experience. Simple, immediate, social, integrated, and personalized. Now, these are just words, but concepts such as simplicity were extremely helpful in crafting the overall system architecture. Games continue to evolve, some becoming very complex indeed, and the processing power of the system is an exponential leap over its predecessors. But at the same time, we wanted the, the platform itself to be consumer-oriented, with a premium placed on functionality and ease of use. For us, simplicity meant that powerful functionality needed to be just a button press away. Speed of response is also vital. What are you talking Immediacy about? Immediacy is no longer an ambition when what creating are you system about? UI. It's an expectation with players. So on PlayStation 4, we've put together a feature set assisted in many ways by custom hardware that radically reduces the lag time between consumers and their content. For one, the hardware supports uh, suspending and resuming on play sessions. Just Ooh. hit the power button, and the system enters a low power state with the play session sure, that preserved was in RAM. The minutes that it takes today to boot a console and load a saved game will be a thing of the past. On PS4, you'll just hit that power button again and promptly be back playing the game at the exact spot you left off. Yeah, that was cool. PlayStation 4 also has a secondary custom chip that manages uploads and downloads. As a result, it's possible to download or update games in the background or even with the main power off. It's funny to hear and him say things this like this. One step further. On PlayStation 4, digital titles are playable even as they are being downloaded. When you purchase a title, you download just a fraction of the data and begin yeah, playing. Yeah, it's so regular The now. rest of the data is downloaded in the background as you continue to play the game. Our next key principle is social. There's no doubt that play is no longer an isolated pastime. There you go. Social play is so important to PlayStation 4 that we've added in hardware to support it in the form of dedicated, always-on video compression and decompression systems. Now, to illustrate the next few points, I'm going to show you various aspects of the PS4 user interface, which is a complete redesign over what we have today on PlayStation 3. Part of what this dedicated video compression and decompression... Crazy uh, how little of this changed, actually. Yeah, this is wild. It's wild. Um, they know at this point in the presentation, Knack is the only thing they're showing. So they have to use fake games for all the other boxes. I know Knack is first at this point. We cannot bet on baseball, Max. It is unfortunately not a real game. Hardware does is it enables seamless uploadings of recordings of gameplay. Just hit the share button on the controller, scan through the last few minutes of gameplay, pick a portion, Whoa. tag it, and return to your game. And this is the, the first uh, the video actual will that gameplay rough, as you dude, continue rough. Play. Our goal is to make the sharing of video as popular in the PlayStation 4 generation as the sharing of screenshots is today. And this same hardware enhances visibility of gameplay. You can browse a live game video of what your friends are doing at that exact moment or spectate the gameplay of a famous person within your gaming universe. Can you do more lives? Check your friend request, please. That's like my chat. Done my first playthrough. It's fun. You'll be getting pumped up every time you succeed. Oh, my God. My chat says that, too. Your play looks amazing. Oh, I wish I, I wish my chat said that. Can you do more lives? Chat is always begging me to do more lives. Actually, I need to see you play in the next stage. Yeah, chat definitely says, actually, I need you to see you play in the next stage. <laughs> Could
could you join in our party once? <laughs> Chat knows better. Chat never asked me that. You can even see that your friend is in trouble and reach out through the network to take over the controller and assist More you lives, in the <laughs> portion of the game. And on PlayStation 4, we are transitioning to a friends network based on real world Henry friends. Henry Bale. <laughs> we'll keep around the, the alias and the icon used in today's multiplayer matches. These are great to have when anonymity is important. But most of the new social dimension to PlayStation 4 will be interacting with friends using real names and profile pictures, most likely seeded from your existing social network. And this social network isn't visible only from within the console UI. PlayStation 4 is designed to be a highly integrated platform. Henry Bale, Seamlessly same guy in the character wallpaper the earlier? To the That'd be some PlayStation fun ecosystem, as well as to key model devices and services. Applications on smartphones and tablets, as well as uh, net uh, web He's platforms Robert William and there. Vita, will allow PlayStation 4 conversations to be carried far beyond the living room. You can use your smartphone to browse game video of possible opponents in your favorite fighting game and challenge them to matches. Companion applications on PlayStation Vita or your tablet will add another dimension to the experience and allow you okay, to keep in touch right. with the evolving right. world of your game regardless of your location. And our final ambition with PlayStation 4 is personalization. The concept that the system can get to know you and bring you closer to the games and other experiences that you're seeking. Experiences. Personalization is a key design principle of the PlayStation 4 interface. You're just a button press away from the latest news about your game titles or uh, interactions with your friends. But I don't feel like they succeeded here. Learns your, your likes and dislikes. We can take this a step further. You'll discover content preloaded and ready to go on your console by your favorite uh, creator or in your favorite genre. Our long-term vision is to reduce download. I feel like that did happen a few times, right? Like, hey, I downloaded this game. If you want to pay for it, it's already downloaded. I feel like that happened, at least for like some demos. It's weird. That is absolutely unappealing to a customer, but extremely appealing to publishers. Times of digital titles to zero. If we know enough about you to predict the next game you'll purchase, then that game can be loaded and ready to go before you even click the buy button. And so, the algorithm didn't care. In conclusion, it's like, oh, you played a first person shooter once? Here's Destiny. Fundamental to the creation of PlayStation 4. It is and always has been our too, goal yeah. to deliver play that You're is right. deeply Nintendo satisfying. Nintendo did it too. And in order to do that, we knew we would need to design to the dreams and ambitions of the developers who create the content that game players crave. And we knew that these game players would expect uh, ease of access, simplicity, and control over the content and their experiences, and that a successful new platform would need to not only meet their content but also and their experiences, their expectations. We've therefore taken a deeply consumer-focused and developer-centric approach to the design of the PlayStation 4, resulting in gaming experiences that evolve experiences. and ensuring that PlayStation continues to offer the best place to play. As a developer and creator, and certainly as a gamer, I'm thrilled about the vast potential of the PS4 to empower new and even more compelling game experiences. <laughs> and experiences. that's the end of my section of today's presentation. Thank you very much for your time. He ended so soft. He, I, I honestly think he could have walked off after, um, after Knack. So first he's talking about hardware, but then it's basically like software side stuff for the rest of his speech. Like we're going to try to make socializing easier on our platform. We're going to expand your experiences and we're going to download games we think you want. <laughs> That's just wild. That's just wild. So, I'd like to introduce the next speaker, Dave Perry. We're at one uh, experience per minute right now. As okay. the uh, CEO, uh, co founder and CEO of Gaikai, a pioneering company in uh, cloud gaming that Sony Oh, we're going to have to skip through this part. Uh, purchased last year. Sorry, we're going to miss though, some experiences, it's, it's a bit Jeff. different. Um, Dave's one of my personal heroes, a charismatic game designer with a string of hits, including Aladdin and Earthworm Jim that I've spent far too much of my time playing over the years. 
Please join me. So okay, imagine buddy. you're in the store. You're checking out the latest titles, and, and you see something that catches your eye. No problem. You can simply press the X button to hop in and start playing the game. Now, in the past, not all games were available, and the ones that were had to be kind of the light version, where they'd been edited down so that they could be downloaded reasonably quickly. With Gaikai in the PlayStation Store, you'll be able to instantly experience anything that you want. At least we caught one there. I've always liked that concept of try it for oh, free. Oh, yeah, a bit of Wittgenstein. You can Share it if going. you like it. You too, Claudine. Pay only for the games that you fall in love with. So now we're changing Buy the rules when it comes love. to social gaming. By putting social at the core of PlayStation 4 experiences, experiences, we can layer in new features meaningful to gamers. We've partnered with some of the biggest and most influential social networks in the world, including Facebook and Ustream. <laughs> Uh, maybe Ustream was big at the time. That's just wild, dude. That's just wild. To bring gamers' friends into games like never before. Social networks such as Facebook are obviously critical to how we stay in touch with our friends and current events around the world. Man. But they don't know your PlayStation gaming history and, pre and all your preferences, nor those of your friends. Yeah. They don't know if you're a journey expert or the, if you've collected yeah. up every platinum in, in the Uncharted series. No, that's so okay. So by combining the PlayStation 4, the PlayStation Network, and these social platforms, our vision is to create the first social gaming network with meaning. It's, and this network will be dedicated, just to be clear, to games. So <laughs> as you know, spectating has become very popular in our industry yeah this stuff's kind of cool it honestly lets gamers learn tricks and tips from the best players in the world i did it like twice when players find something they love streaming personally like hey PlayStation to watch me play better. this or you could watch so your friends play a game personally you know it's kind of cool improve the spectating experience experience first what we're using is that share button on the playstation 4 controller with that one button you can broadcast from your game live 100 percent real time um, to, to your friends. It's an incredible innovation and something that has never been possible. Finally, on, we're helping fuel the imagination of our developers by giving them new spectating tools. Immediate. We've accomplished this by integrating some of the Gaikai technology into the PS4 system architecture that essentially turns it into a game server and the PS Vita becomes a client with remarkably fast connection speeds. God, he was of really up here talking for a while. And the PS4 will provide this two hours to a vast long. array of other forms of entertainment beyond gaming. PlayStation gamers love all forms of entertainment, including watching movies, watching TV shows, listening to. Yeah, it's like how much is it? It's crazy, actually, how much of this is still relevant. Um, I have no idea what this is. Nor this. You can't. You simply can't read it in 720p. Like, Voodoo still exists. Netflix still does. Laugh Factory app, I'm going to say probably died at some point. Crackle's gone. Epic's still around. Crunchyroll's still around. And th Crunchyroll thriving. Chat says this is music unlimited. And that's videos unlimited, they say. Okay. What's this neon horse thing? What is that? Amazon obviously still around. Hulu Plus. Still around. MLB, yeah. Crunchyroll is now Sony owned. Yeah, true. Laugh Factory? More like twitch.tv slash Kyle Bossman. Thanks, chat. That's the kind of chat I'm looking for. Horse Unlimited. <laughs> yeah, I think this app might be Horse Unlimited. <laughs> Neon Alley was an American digital anime service run by Viz Media. Oh my gosh, it's called Neon Alley. I can read it now. That's funny. Mr. Kex, thanks for being a 28 monther. The music. So PlayStation Network will have services horse including unlimited. Sony's own it's just for horse girls. Unlimited and music unlimited. Just the whole streaming service. For, oh, there we go. You can read it way like better Netflix, now. Netflix, Amazon Instant Video, and other media services to have them on the platform. We'll be announcing more specifics on this later in the year. Now, I've already mentioned a couple of ways that Gaikai's cloud technology and PlayStation Network will enhance the player's experiences. experiences. The PlayStation Network in the cloud can present additional value to PlayStation gamers. For example, over the past six years, PlayStation 3 has built an incredible catalog of titles that is unmatched in the industry. 
Although PS3 titles aren't natively this supported, this is Bloodworth in the Game Trailers library. We're exploring some very unique opportunities enabled by cloud technology with the long term vision of making PS3 games ubiquitous on any device. The technology is so advanced. So crazy. That's a 10 year dream that like Xbox is still chasing, right? You get X Cloud on everything. Like, hey, we want you to be able to play Halo on your phone. And I th feel like we're still finding that, like, hey, people don't want to play Halo on their phone. Like, mobile games are mobile games, and, like, console games are console games. I definitely think there's some crossover. But, like, this whole pitch feels so soft to me then and, like, softer today. That someday we could easily put PS1, PS2, PS3, and the PS Mobile games on any device, including the PlayStation 4. This would fundamentally change the concept of game longevity. Imagine having access to all the old games you love and the ability to get them up and running in seconds wherever you are on whatever device you have near you. Everything everywhere is the challenge that PlayStation has put before our teams. That's the vision of the PlayStation Cloud service, and it's going to require us to build the fastest global network ever made. Now, Gaikai won a Guinness World Record for our prototype network, but now I'm happy to announce that the project has been fully greenlit by Sony. So they want a Guinness. This is not an investment into advanced technology and infrastructure. This is an investment into the millions of loyal PlayStation gamers across the world who would love to have all the past, That's so funny, present, bro. and future games at their fingertips. We'll be rolling out PlayStation's cloud services in phases, so we can't reveal all the possibilities here today. But you can be certain that you revealed too much. You're still catching up, bro. The way that we play. Now I've described the vision and the strategy behind PlayStation 4 and the PlayStation Network. Let's hear how some of the world's most accomplished developers are using it as their virtual platform to turn their creative dreams into reality. Thank you. My God, we are 40 minutes into this presentation. Whereas it was basically where they cap off today. Sometimes they'll go one hour, but I cannot believe how boring this presentation you know, industry, is. The past 10 years has been, seen so many trends come and go. You know, that was people, way too people, long. At times people are, you have to do social. He was, uh, he had a good 10. Code. They gave him 10 minutes. To do that. But as much as it's been changing, all of those different trends have been supporting each other. What I love about this console is that I think it's the first time that these trends are going to really be brought together. This is where the promise of what we can do is bigger than just one genre. Like, here's the thing. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. I feel like you're not meant to think about this kind of visual. The motion blur is insane. The more you, like, think about the words that just scroll by, the less sense it makes. Friends are going to really be brought together. This is where the promise of what we can do is bigger than just one genre. <laughs> I can't, I can't follow it, dude. <laughs> it makes me feel crazy. This time, uh, Sony came around to us and they came to our office and they said, here's what we're thinking. What do you guys? Look at this young man. Look at that young man. Today we saw him talk, warning his employees about mentioning slippery slopes. <laughs> this man would never. I was thinking, what have you been held back by, and what parachutes or linked to the past walls? Ooh, approach. I would take the linked past walls over those parachutes. Ability to provide feedback and, and to adapt based on the feedback they receive from developers. Can you hear? I can't hear anymore. By the way, all these developers. This got really quiet. This is maxed out. Helping form what the PlayStation Four would eventually turn out to be. We took was all that, that Rody? into consideration to create the system that just works. When we think about the word simple, we've chosen to interpret that with a comparable word, elegance. And to us, that means this balance between how complex the simulation or the options or the interfaces are with how deep the experience you can get from it. The more elegant a design is, then the more simple and easy it is to get incredible depth. This is Pitchford talking about elegance? This is fucking wild, dude. Where you can have a deeper experience that's still not really complicated, experience. but it's much richer and much more immersive. 
everyone has to some degree some instinct of craft. They want to make something their own. They want to make it a representation of themselves to other people. It's kind of crazy. Harmonics used to have huge clout, right? There can be a relationship between the kind of content that I'm interested in and how the options are presented to me. So this system actually is very much aware of the player and what's going on in the room at any given point. So for example, when I go to the PlayStation Store, right now I see advertisements and commercials for a lot of games that I'm frankly not interested in. Having a good way to present you the games that you're interested in is very important for us. If we want. But the thing is, like, they'll just... They still gotta sell ads. You know what I mean? They still like ads still got to sell. It's like whether you're interested or not. It's like, ooh, we uh, we still got to push these. To everyone to be engaged in gaming and, and love it and understand it. We just got to make it easy for everyone to get into that. And it's fun to see Ninja Theory is one of the ones they're highlighting. It doesn't involve three minutes of boot up and disc shuffling and sort of all of these things that are just like a nuisance between the impulse to play a game. So immediacy becomes an important goal. I want to make the decision to experience something or to access something, and I experience. want it right now. There isn't any Was more that me? waiting time. There isn't any more startup. I literally walk in, pick up the controller, hit the start button, it just goes. It's a huge win for gamers. You're able to download the first bit of a game and start playing it before the next 20 gigs download. Download control anymore. It's the just, the, yep, game. there I am. I made so it in. Immediacy becomes an important goal. I want to make the decision <laughs> to experience something or to access something, and I want huge it right win. Now. There isn't huge win for gamers. Waiting time. There isn't any more startup. I literally walk in, pick up the controller, hit the start button. It just goes. It's a huge win for gamers. You're able to download for the first bit of a game and start playing it before the next 20 gigs download. One button press away, and you get what you want. Historically, console games have, have been very much like lived in a tower. You go to your living room, you have that experience there, and that's where it happens. And then like you leave your living room and then you have the rest of your life. Looking ahead, integrated gaming experiences will follow you everywhere that you go. Oh my God, what a nightmare. What a nightmare. They really wanted this shit so bad. You can't get away from our games. Yeah, they'll follow you. The entire world has changed and the way you can interact with many. Yeah, this is me. I do hold my phone with no thumb. <laughs> I mean, I guess, hey, I guess people do have those stoppers. I guess this is actually possible. But yeah, for me, it's my sticky palms. Devices wherever you are at any time of day. So there'll be some window into that entertainment experience that's accessible through your phone or your PC or a portable gaming device. The many different devices that- No, you're right. Everybody wanted this. Uh, Nintendo so wanted this. Xbox to wanted this. To create your PS4 experience. This was all of their dreams. There was a time when the shared experience meant that your friend sat next to you on the couch. Now that we can basically project that. So this is crazy. Stig's actually at this point working on, I think, the game that got canceled. The game that turned out to be too much like uh destiny and sony santa monica canceled it yeah now he's on star wars that's pretty wild across the globe offering them opportunities to interact with each other you know while they're playing the game but also outside of the game the new big feature that we've we have on this controller is the appearance of the share button the share button allows you to record any gameplay uh, and create a video or a screenshot and share it instantly. Whenever they want to share an uh, epic moment, they can just press that button. Before you had to make a video, edit the video, upload the video, and now we're going to make this so easy for people to just like press the share button and off it goes. I think, that, I think that's actually kind of neat. Editing videos does suck for most people in the world. I think it's kind of neat. I don't know how widely used it became. I feel like still, you know, the most memed out clips came from channels and personalities that already had big audiences, you know? But yeah, I like even clips, clips and screenshots I don't share on stream. I still take for my own self. It is kind of just fun to uh, do that, to take little screenshots to remember, remember things by.
I do not remember the tendrils bit on delayed input, sadly. I talk about tendrils a lot. It's going to bring opportunities to engage players with the game and with each other um, like we've never done before. One of the neat things about next generation hardware is there's always kind of this this mystery. What is the, the actual ceiling of this thing? What is the potential? How far are we going to be able to push it? The possibilities have just blown open in, in a way that... In I think we watched it together at the GT office. Had. I think it happened during the day. This is what PlayStation is about. It's about innovation and it's about new ideas. So I think we're all like on those couches in the back area watching these on the big monitors. And this is crazy because GT6 comes out on PS3 after this presentation, right? There's a GT5 I'm thinking of. Because at the end of the day, everybody does like that. Everybody does want to see new, amazing things. It was 6. It was GT6 after this presentation is coming out on PS3, yeah. That's wild. Ultimate play. The game entertainment machine. It's coming soon. It's a connected world. It's a PlayStation. Ladies and gentlemen, I kind of liked that bit. From Worldwide Studios, please welcome Michael Denny. But I didn't I didn't detect a lot of genuine enthusiasm from those developers as much as it was Thank scripted, you. but it was still nice. So as you've heard from Mark and Dave, and as you've just seen <laughs> in the video, look at there the are lots smugness of, very happy of this game man developers out there right now, which is fantastic. He's ready to the lay it on PlayStation you. is about great games inspiring new experiences from the imaginations experiences. of the world's best creators. If this was past, like a timeshare presentation, this is the guy who comes out last. Of technology. He's ready to seal the deal. PlayStation 4 will bring a new synergy <laughs> between the smug hardware, chat replays that software, with that face. and the fastest, most that was a very smug network face. in the world, unlocking a new canvas <laughs> for creativity. The from closer. The outset, this man is the closer, dude. The opportunity to collaborate with our hardware and system software engineers to help shape PlayStation 4's unique feature set. Okay. So what do you powerful synergy, what do you talk to us about? Deeper, more connected experience. Oh, so you're about to introduce Herman Holst. This is a story about the loss of home, the search for a new home and the lengths to Current which people president go of PlayStation, right? It. This is Killzone Shadowfall. He's got the controller, bro. President of Worldwide Studios, excuse me. Yeah, you're right, Jim Ryan, President of PlayStation. Sure, sure, sure. Oh my god. Here it is, bro. We're 48 minutes in. Next gen started. Look at this shit. This is so sick. Don't look at that reflection too close. Don't think about it. Oh my god, yes. Ooh! The way you can see inside of this building! My god. Oh my god. Now, I bought Killzone Shadowfall and actually bailed on it before I even got to this part. I wonder if it looks like this. Nothing looks this good. That looks sick as hell. But yeah, I would do a Shadowfall playthrough. That'd be fun. Chat says it does look like this. Stable FPS now on PS5. Cool. DF seemed to imply when they rewatched this that it ended up basically like this. That's crazy. A lot of traffic passing through here today. More than usual. They're drafting in units from all over. It's the waiting around that messes with your head. Guess now you're here. Things so start cool moving, looking, huh? man. And so different from what you associate Killzone to look like, too. I think that's important. Sorry, sir. Just a formality. Gamer, you are this man. Okay, clear. Please proceed. Lucas Kellen. You are Lucas Kellen. Yeah, this is really nice looking, dude. This 
<laughs> you were a John kill zone. Horizon really changed everything for Gorilla. This studio has... It doesn't have the respect. Right now. <laughs> Easy kill, bro. Shouldn't have stared at me like that. Should have kept your disguise up. No, that's not a QTE. That's telling you how to melee. Get too loud now. It was just super quiet during that one. USA. It's funny how quickly this presentation lost my attention the second they stuck wit to its gameplay. You're into it? I feel like Killzone here should be much more Doom-like than tactical uh, guard uh, uh, cover finding. You know what I mean? Oh, I gotta get behind this cover. Shit. They're mowing me down. Killzone should be like. We didn't have Doom yet. That's true. This is pre Doom, chat. The last Doom everybody played was a weird one that was like. You had a flashlight and some tunnels. At this point in time, Doom sucks. Everyone wanted to copy COD. They still do, right? They just copy COD in different ways. Everybody wants COD's monetization. Did my launch PS4 games have to be Lego Marvel and then Watch Dogs? Lego Marvel is so good. I won't hear you complain about Lego Marvel. That's a really funny transition, huh? That's how we know it's a real game. Dude, 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 dude. Oh my god. Next gen. Holy shit. Holy shit, how are you even doing this? This is so fake? This has to be from the cloud. There's no way this is real. So cool. <laughs> yeah, chat, this is Gaikai. This is the power of Gaikai. Get those guns 
This demo's longer than I remember it, too. Why? <laughs> Why? So I'm hanging from a helicopter, right? I'm hanging from like a jet, a helicopter jet f from a rope. And the guy on my headset says, sir, you got to get out of there now. <laughs> like, oh, okay. All right. <laughs> Will do. Thanks, Private. I guess we could watch the Xbox One presentation when it happens. This happened 10 years ago today. Still being told what to do 10 years ago. Yeah. I'm the boss and they're still telling Like, you got to get out of there. I know. I know. Oh, so fancy. Fake, but fancy. Oh, I don't want to watch the Wii U demonstrate presentation. That actually bugs me out. Oh, Drive Club. Drive Club. Game number three is Drive Club. Huh. The Race. <laughs> the Race is the good title. I won't hear it. Good evening, everyone. I'm Matt Southern from Evolution Studios. Matt Southern, I'm gonna skip ahead high a little bit, bud. Get to it, Matt. Get to it. In real oh no. It's about plant top shooters. Oh, Matt, just show it. You can watch the challenge. We're oh, talking Matt. tournament with supporting you and your friends. It's so crazy to see how much of the focus is on social. Using first -person perspective Probably the right to thing to do, sure the right buzzwords that mattered the most to publishers exactly and investors, right? When you own a car like this, we're recreating them. They're so focused on social in this presentation. Whereas we're, I feel like the, the strength Hennessy of the PlayStation 4 in hindsight is not the social, but just how much they refocused the on games. Of detail and accuracy. With totally yeah, this is all, this is the marketing half. Parameters painstakingly measured from the real thing using our custom built photometric apparatus. Real work. Each end of the lighting actors was rainbow Eden Carp when they've been brought into this looked really good at the time chat. Racing. The exquisite feeling of opening the door, breathing in the experience, experience, strapping yourself in, and firing up a 1200 brake horsepower <laughs> engine. I believe this guy truly loves cars, though. Ladies and gentlemen, it's I'm such believing a him right now. for a studio to be asked to help define new PlayStation. I believe he has so opened a car door and breathed in the experience in real life. Based racing to life. I believe he means it when he says it. That's just a brief glimpse of Drive Club. So compressed. wild shit man because i think there was like there was a lot of this even in the la the end of the ps3 360 generation where it's like compete with your friends scores your friends will become drivers and your fourths the game friends 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 make sure your friends know you beat their high score then you want to beat their high score then their friends will and then your friends 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 pressure 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 feels like a lot of that Oh my God, this still goes? Political rally. And oh my guy, this is my guy. In 1999, I took part in a political rally and got tear gassed by the cops. Now, up until then, I'd always thought the police were there to protect me, to protect the people that I cared about. But on that day, they didn't. We all want to feel safe, right? But it is hard to put your finger on what that sense of security is worth. However, it is easy to say what it costs. Right now, there are 4.2 million security cameras distributed all around Great Britain. That is one camera for every 14 citizens. 
In 2011, the U.S. government seized the personal cell phone records of 1.3 million of its citizens. There are 1,200 of us in here today. Four of us have been monitored. And two years ago, American travelers spent a combined 75,000 years waiting in airport security. You had that? That's the thing. Faulty step. You're not wrong. I kind of... It's not the right speech for the right game. <laughs> like this is these are this is the messaging you put in your video game, no doubt. But it's like, and now a game where you have superpowers and bonk guys around. You know what I mean? Like it's, it's absolutely like this kind of thing that should be like the underlying message of your video game. So weird for this to be the intro to it. That all up. That is a thousand lifetimes lost in line in just one year. <laughs> Our security. Because, chat, some of this is good. Some of this is good. But he just complained that a thousand lifetimes are lost when people wait in line at the airport. <laughs> and then you just watch these gravestones bleed through ink. You know what I mean? It's a little over the top. One year. That's a little dramatic. Our security comes at a high price. Our freedom. Now, picture how things would change, how the world would react if a handful of people suddenly developed superhuman abilities. <laughs> <laughs> that's why, that's why, chat, that's why, that's why, that's why, that's why, that's why, that's why. You can't, you can, nobody can straddle that transition. No cowboy's gate is wide enough to make that straddle chat. Worth the buildup. Oh my God. Capable of unleashing incredible carnage without ever pulling a trigger or lighting a fuse, these people would be living, breathing weapons. Ooh, and the lighting change. They could pass through any the director metal detector loves this. or x-ray scanner or even a strip search, completely undetectable. We already live in a culture of fear. Picture how things would change. How much control would any of us have over our own lives? And which of us would have the courage to fight to get our freedoms back? I'm Nate Fox, here to introduce to you Sucker Punch's latest game, exclusive for the PlayStation 4. Crazy thing is I really love this game. This is good shit, man. Oh my god, look at look at what a PlayStation 4 is capable of. Yeah, like you, your message is conveyed, Nate. You've conveyed the message. You don't have to spell it out like that. G6 status. G6 clear. G7 status. H1 status. What the hell? What was that? I, I, I don't know. B2 status. What should we do? B2 repeat status. It's funny, I never played Infamous 2. Nor one. All I played is Bordello of Blood. And this. So this was my first Infamous game. I freaking love it. It's cheesy, but the particle stuff, like, shows what's different with this generation. They're emphasizing the lighting shit. It's kind of a good demo, too. Oh, you're right. I played First Light, too. Look at all those particles, chat. In hindsight, it is very weird to use mostly Troy Baker's face, but make him 
a little more Native American. Just saying in hindsight here. <laughs> it looks like him. Because, I mean, you, you know what he looks like a lot more now. At that time, I just see a guy's face, right? But, like, now that you, like, they 100% use Troy Baker as their initial face model. Thanks, Nate. And I'm pretty sure he's just won the backstage sweep for the coolest game introduction of the night there. <laughs> he's making fun of him. This guy knows that wasn't cool. <laughs> he's being sarcastic, chat. No, no, no. He's being very mean. <laughs> and thanks to all the guys for introducing three already amazing looking games that not only look fantastic, but allow a depth of gameplay that will take our players <laughs> to a new level of immersion. That's how I like to read PlayStation it. PlayStation has always been proud to offer That's the my best read. Game, gameplay experiences. Now, often that means deeper and more intense versions of experiences that we know experiences. we already love. But sometimes best can mean things that are surprising, things that don't always fit, things that can help us pioneer new ways Ooh, is to this play dreams? and dreams up next? the unexpected. PlayStation will always be a leader in encouraging creators to push the boundaries. Okay. From supporting smaller indies with their highly innovative and sometimes left field ideas. His collar is weird. To supporting oh, more you know established what? teams in their quest. It just to means take it was like I, either heavily ironed or simply won't he's play. wearing it. In the next just few purchased. minutes, we would like I've to had this look before too. It's because when you buy your shirts, they're flat. You know what I mean? Amazing creators. That's a good theory, Chad. I think he did, I think he just unraveled this shirt and put the it on. The first comes from one of the world's most first acclaimed wearing. independent developers. PlayStation remains steadfast in our support for the indie development community. I've been there though. I bet I know exactly what that's Network like. Will continue to provide the most open console to enable smaller developers. All right, buddy. Okay, buddy. Well okay, buddy. All right. What? Hey. I really don't know what I'm gonna do to. F yeah, I don't know either, bro. Solution clear. Little and it opens in open possible theme every. Shut up. That's but every part. Of this <laughs> Shut up. So the so this is that early. That's crazy. That record player is like in the challenge room in the final level, secret final level of the game. That's Jonathan Blow. This is uh, the puzzle game. I cannot remember its name, but he made Braid. Witness. It's so crazy. Witness. This is going to get me DMCA'd. So crazy. Witness is at the launch show of the PlayStation 4. I don't think it comes out for like another four years after this, right? Thanks, Jonathan. Wonderful so stuff. three years later. And how about that? What other, what other event would show you a game like the visceral and action-packed kill zone followed by the mesmerizing and thought-provoking witness? And speaking of kill what zone, other show would? At the end of the playthrough you saw earlier, Stephen hit the new share button. Oh, we saw that. Go check it out. And take the closer, bro. This so guy's here to sell. Demonstrate what is <laughs> <laughs> David Cage, I think he shows some faces. Want them to leave oh, I have no capture. patience for this, David. Technology. David, I have some no patience. In their Act. And really be and they develop audience could try. Now, so I think he is talking about facial capture and how the like Omicron. the new technology is nice Indigo because 30, actors can act. Quantic Dream is our first volumetric lights. Today. Yeah, look, look at that PS4 face. Yes, simply trade on what is you have never been to want by our Wow, David, please come Here's dreams, here's dreams. Here we go. Wow, David, please can I have a copy of that skin shader? But I mean, seriously, it's just amazing to be able to get that emotion in the eyes. It's really hard. So, hello, I'm Alex Evans from Media That's true. Uh, Braid was a big Xbox Live hit. That's, a, that's an interesting angle on that too. So there's a little bit of like, we got that guy. For sure. They gave him a lot of time to speak, though. 
molecule, and um, Michael asked us to just give a little insight into our creative process over the last few years at our studio. The last few years, and, good God. You know, they worked on dreams for so long. The PlayStation 4, we began thinking, what can we do to turn creative gaming and take it to the next level? Because that's what Media Molecule was founded to do. It was to use this amazing device to bring the creativity he works in NVIDIA of now. every that's PlayStation funny. user to the fore. And creativity takes many forms these days, whether it's taking a picture, cosplaying as Kratos, or 3D printing a customized character. It's easy to show there off he is. your skills. And with the internet, you can reach millions of people. So creation is everywhere, but it can feel kind of fractured. Yeah, it's like searing 3D print. And so we thought, how can we <laughs> cut through all the crap? And we realized Ooh. there's a simple way of thinking about all of this. What we wanted to do was let you record your dreams. Think about that for a second. Record Think about your that dreams. For a second. You see, the PlayStation 4 for us at Media Molecule should be the creative console. It's the place you go to be inspired. It's the place you go to experience other people's dreams or to make your own. It's the place you go to create. And the only question for us was how. When we looked at how people create digitally, especially in 3D, things just haven't changed in the last five or 10 years. As a graphics programmer, you're right. Dreams came out way textures, later than Witness UV did. UV mapping—they've been the bane of my life and the artists I work with for many years. I call it the tyranny of the polygon. And so we asked ourselves, this is how so could cool. PlayStation 4 change this? This is how so cool. How could the insane power pedola that only a next-gen console deliver? How can we sweep away the techie mess? How can we redefine digital Love this presentation. and overcome the tyranny of the polygon? So we've done two years of research into this, from motion this illustrator's great to too. stereo cameras, to advanced user interfaces, touch interfaces. My God. Basically, we tried everything. And it got more and more complicated, more and more space age. It just did not feel like recording dreams at all. <sighs> and then we discovered that the single most powerful, accurate, and precise tool for 3D creation was right under our noses. It was the move controller. Ah, now, ah. finally, at last, after I did not see him going that way. We've completely fallen in love with this thing. Dear Move Controller, I'm sorry. It's taken us so long to realize this, but we're going to marry you with the power of the PlayStation 4. We are going to revolutionize making. You're great. So one of the first things we built with this was a sculpting tool. And we've been using but it for a while But they demonstrated now. immediately. Once we started Here's the results. In terms of memory you budgets, doubted? Check this out. Pixels. We forgot about the technology, and we just started doodling, just sketching. Put that at the heart of our creative process. A really lovely thing happened. We started having real fun making, collaborating, sketching, remaking. It doesn't matter where you start out, because you can take a left turn at any time that inspiration strikes and go somewhere even cooler. It's a free-form creative journey that I think of a little bit like cloud watching except that you can reach in at any time and change and shape it to whatever's in your head. Behind me, this shit is you can see wild. a time-lapse cool. of one of our sculpts playing back literally as it was made because we record every single move that you make. And because it's such a quick and freeform thing, before we knew it at Media Molecule, we had made hundreds of these things. Imagine this multiplied from our tiny staff to the thousands and millions of brilliant PlayStation users online. This every is single one of these was made entirely with the Move Controller. And it's a kind of performance. You're able to put down your ideas as fast as you can think of them. It's this combination of the PlayStation 4's power with the Move's unique accuracy, which allows us to ditch all of the 2D fiddly camera controls and nasty user interface. It makes 3D sculpting easy for beginners and deep for advanced creators. And if you're like me and haven't quite mastered sculpture yet, Not that easy, then though. we're going to allow you to use the creativity of all of these people to collage and create. Honestly, not that easy to sets, sculpt with. Game levels, stories, with the really the simplest possible interface. You just hold your controller and click to assemble your dream. Of course, this isn't just about sculpture and collage. With, with PlayStation 4, with the creative console. This is what's fucking wild, though, is like. You actually believe now that, that that entire like building structure that they just plopped down was built in dreams. Change making in every way, whether it's music, gaming, or storytelling. The shit really and looks the like that. The point is, it's fast to create. What you're about to see was recorded live in one take. It's someone's dream brought to life with PlayStation 4. Yeah, this was honestly like the best 
game demonstration so far, I think. So weird, though. This is cute. They're disgusting. The creatures are disgusting. They're unselling me. They're actually unselling me with this. This was not the way. <laughs> that was not the way. During your final boss when this was your highlight. That's so funny. Surely the sculpting and not the concert, right? It's funny they did all that with real paint. How do you follow that? <laughs> Thanks very much, Alex. Although the we've only shown was a glimpses That's of so these crazy. new exclusive titles and some creative explorations being developed for PlayStation 4, I think you'll agree that our Worldwide Studios team and the indie community is pushing the boundaries into okay, how Mr. worldwide House. we have by uh -huh. Japan and Asia. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah they go full screen on this. 4. This is all you need. That's all you need right there. Has No Man's Sky been revealed yet? I don't think so. So at this time, Hello Games has put out Joe Danger and Joe Danger 2. And they're like, put them up there. <laughs> Joe Danger was a household name? Okay. All right. CD Projekt. I feel like um, I feel like they knew they were working on No Man's Sky at the time. I feel like they knew. What was LucasArts? Star Wars 1313. This is sad. LucasArts is working on Star Wars 1313 right now, 10 years ago. You were working at Gung Ho when this presentation was made. That's cool. Uh, you're missing Activision, Tri-Ace, Ukes, and Keen up here in my corner. I have no idea who Keen is. No Man's Sky was December 2013. Yeah, so like at this point, Sony knows they're working on it, and that's why they're on this thing. Pretty crazy. Yeah, how many of these studios have been purchased or closed their doors in the last 10 years? Like, I really don't know most of these. I have no idea what Grand Zella is, you know? Konami is lurking. <laughs> it's such a weird mix of publishers and kind of small-time developers. Looks like Keen made GeForce. No fucking way. That's so cool. What did they make on PS4? Keen made Portal Knights. Oh, okay, cool. Sure. What is Crafts and Meister? 
Today, we'll be sharing with you some amazing new titles, but we're just scratching the surface. Grisella the replaced Eero, we'll and they do year. R type and disaster report. To help That's demonstrate wild. this point, please join me in welcoming our first guest, Yoshinori Ono from Capcom. <laughs> it's like God of War music. Do you want to stretch? All right. <laughs> so I'm not uh, talking about Street Fighter today. <laughs> so good morning. I go, no, good, good, good evening, everyone. So and good morning, those in, in Japan. I have really been looking forward to tonight the presentation. You have no idea how badly I Sorry, I had to, to blow my nose. about to eat. But I preserved. <laughs> this is crazy to watch. You're looking at someone who was over promoted. What was his job title? I missed it. Yoshinori Ono, like a uh, series producer of Street Fighter, four blew up and then he got over promoted. That's Kratos. Okay, chat. Everyone, do you want to stretch? They didn't right. say. They didn't give his job. They didn't give his title there. So, I'm not uh, talking about Street Fighter today. <laughs> so, good morning. I go no. Good, good evening, everyone. So, and good morning, those in, in Japan. I have really been looking forward to tonight the presentation. You have no he idea. He got promoted to global I business to development or something. Yeah. But I preserved. <laughs> That's like a fear for me. It feels good to <laughs> finally be able to talk about this stuff. It's like being good at one I creative thing, but then getting promoted and promoted, well. and then you're like leading people. It's like, well, actually, I have no skill is, at that. It's being streamed to Japan as we speak. So we were uh, conducting this uh, presentation in both Japanese and English. Don't worry, boss. We aren't promoting you. Thank goodness. Thanks, chat. Capcom was... Yeah, working for yourself, it's not something you really have to worry about. <laughs> so yeah, he's about to show off Panta Ray, right? And the games themselves have changed a great deal over the years, keeping pace with PlayStation's evolving technology and business style. What is Wadi Wadi Wadi? The technology of the original PlayStation allowed us to move beyond the 2D sprites to which we've grown accustomed and break new ground with IPs such as Resident Evil. It means we? It's just, a, it's just like a formal way of saying we? Because I do feel, I feel like I hear that word every once in a while. That's interesting. Actually, Kyle, I've been meaning to talk to you about meeting your targets. We should absolutely do a performance review, chat. I guess we do when we have we had a survey last year. We'll do another one next year. Yeah, yeah. We we that's your time for performance reviews. It's used for companies or groups. Got it. The emotion engine that's interesting. Us by the PlayStation Two allowed us to create visually business stunning week. titles shit, to take advantage of newly developed graphical engines. Titles such as the Onimusha series and Devil May Cry would not have been possible without the technology that the PS2 brought to the table. Okay, I don't know why you're telling this audience this stuff. Stop this. Progression and effects. I can't believe this. PlayStation 4, we are proud to help usher in a new era of entertainment. There we go. Just skip to this. There it is. We. We've been hard at work developing a new engine suited to the PlayStation 4 and its power, the next evolutionary step from our MT Framework engine. PlayStation 4, this new business style, and the new engine's design is now being developed. We continue to refine this engine to ensure that it takes advantage of the incredible technology. I, I chat. I like Street Fighter Five, sure, but I think this is another reason he was demoted. This new engine, codenamed Panto Ray, by taking advantage of the current technology and providing the tools necessary to harness it, will allow us to take game design in entirely new directions. 
He doesn't work at Capcom anymore. Oh, okay. I didn't know that. PlayStation 4 I'd like to show you a little something. It represents a new IP running on the PlayStation 4 using the Pantaray engine. Yeah, chat, I don't think any game ever used Pantaray. Though somebody in chat did say that this became RE Engine. I think it's different. You don't remember this at all. You're gonna you're about to watch an original Capcom IP. Here it comes. You're like, uh, Dragon's Dogma? No. Deep down. My useless magic can have me porking lines in the old market for one tenth the hassle of your empty venture. I forgot there was dialogue. Are following him anyway? There's way more. It's so Dark Soulsy. Did you see the UI in the lower left there? Oh, it comes back. It's 100% fake UI, isn't it? Chat, is this all fake shit? Chat's saying this is all fake shit. Look at this dragon's dumb horn nose, dude. That shot. We used that shot a lot throughout game trailers and GTTV. Look at your stupid horn nose. You look ridiculous, you stupid dragon. Wow, there's so much more here than I remembered. Look at his baby wings, too. God, that's funny. Conquer your fear. Or die a coward. <laughs> cool tagline. They should keep that. Social. God. Everybody, everybody wanted their own little social game. Just crazy. Friends. But yeah, so it suggested that there was some weird, like, Assassin's Creed sci-fi element too deep down right there at the very end. Back me up and I'll share the spoils, bro. Punka just wants more lives. So yeah, I'm sorry, chat. Did we get to the bottom of whether Panta Ray became RE Engine? From my understanding, they were like in simultaneous production. And so like with the success of RE Engine, they just totally said, stop with Panta Ray. Just stop. That was that was my take on it. How about they did show gameplay at some point of uh, Deep Down chess. So as we speak, Deep Down is being developed concurrently with the Panta Ray engine. That's such a bad idea. Oh my god. That's just such a bad idea. So we're hoping that the power and technology behind the PlayStation 4 will bring us all sorts of brand new experiences. experiences. Thank you very much for listening to our presentation. Thank you. You know what? And I think you're, I think Street Fighter V started off on Panta Ray, maybe? The one they just completely much, binned? Footage looks remarkable and brand new IP. We're really Footage looks remarkable and brand new IP. <laughs> and we'll be more later this year. Square Enix. As of 2019, no new updates of the engine were made, with Capcom still using MT Framework for eight generation consoles. And RE Engine for Resident Evil 7. Yeah, it didn't become RE7. RE Engine, excuse me. It They just completely had to bin it. They wasted all that time in R&D on that dumb engine and that dumb game that will never come out. X is another major partner developing for PlayStation 4. 
As you know, our relationship with Square Enix dates back 16 years to when Final Fantasy VII appeared this is on the fun. original PlayStation. This one finally Since pays then, off. Our partnership has fostered some of the most innovative gameplay, this is rich wild. cinematics and storylines that gamers fell in love with. Please join me in welcoming to the stage Yoshihisa Hashimoto from and Square, Square Enix. At least some games came out on Luminous Engine. For PlayStation 4. Technology of the announced game engine is a the Enix state of the art game engine. Here you go. I believe nope. it will give you the capability. Please. Nope. Here we go. This is cooler than for spoken, isn't it? Shit. Once more, the wicked stand before us. Threatening the sacred communion between your realm and mine. <laughs> Rise, and from the time torn rift shall our power rage forth and bring down destruction. Never leave the shield. That breath of truth going deep. Oh, my God. It's funny, you can see moments of like what games look like today, right? With a really gross motion blur and stuff. Yeah, this looks super cool at the time. I love this. Alright, so some of it is kind of dumb. No doubt. The hyena was just pressed against the side, ready to get injected. This is so obviously Bahamut, but they're like, no, no. I mean, actually, I guess it had way more teeth than like a Bahamut dragon. Hey, Raiders. It's 10 years since the PlayStation 4 was announced. We're watching the presentation, the announcement again. So chat, my understanding was that this did become Forspoken, and Forspoken does run on Luminous Engine, does it not? Thank you, thank you. Forspoken is Luminous Engine, yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's like, that's like basically like prototype Forspoken. You did miss Deep Down, you wanna see it real quick? There's actually some pretty cool shit in Deep Down, but it's mostly extreme, blatant bullshit. This is the thing. I was like, check out the HUD. And then Chad's like, Kyle, it's fake. It's a fake HUD. <laughs> Woojack, thanks for gifting that gift sub. Yeah, the dragon, we got to reappreciate that drag, that... 
hooked dragon beak. There it is. <laughs> I hate it, man. That's the dorkiest looking dragon with its tiny wings and horn nose. It's insane how fake it is, chat says. Man, I was buying it. I was buying in twice. It has flappy dog ears, too. <laughs> they just messed with the dragon design in too many ways, man. Conquer your fear or die a coward. Then he just blocks this fire for like five seconds. And that's how the trailer ends. Fade to black. And then actually the message to Yoshi P. Sorry, Yoshi Ono. They wish Yoshi P. Yoshi P would not respond to Blanco. And that's deep down. So oh, crazy. Oh, hold up. So they show this, and then the Square Enix still goes on. Yeah, I thought that was really cool. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, this is the level of quality that Square Enix is targeting for our next generation titles. The PlayStation 4 is a multifunctional, incredibly powerful gaming platform. Its CPU it's crazy and Final GPU Fantasy VII Remake comes out before that high. project. And it has Keyword massive targeting, amount yep. of memory and even has wonderful social features. And the development environment is excellent. Social features. They're flexible, crazy about them. They're crazy about them. easy to use. In short, it's a game developer's dream. <laughs> Thanks to the PlayStation 4, the possibilities of gameplay experiences have been experiences. greatly expanded. And the players will be enthralled by the new generation of gameplay. Yeah, 7 Remake that announced 2015. On the PlayStation 4. Crazy. It's just two years so after this, actually. That is crazy ending. to think about. But we have one other piece of information to share with everyone. I'll give the floor to the other Hashimoto to tell you about it. Well, yeah, Mr. Integrate made it out the door Hashimoto, before it was spoken to. Yeah. Take it away. Oh my god, he knows. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is uh, Shinji Hashimoto. Uh huh. So you're here to I talk about Final Fantasy. I'm a director for Final Fantasy at Square Enix. Uh huh. I'm not brothers with your sister. Okay, today I. I'm sorry, chat. Subtitles are not funny. He said, I'm not a producer. He, d he did not say, I'm not brothers with your sister. <laughs> These are automated subtitles from YouTube. That's not what he said. He said, I'm not a producer. I just have one <laughs> thing to say. On the occasion of this presentation by Yoshisa <laughs> of the Luminous Engine, and the announcement of the PlayStation 4 from Sony Computer Entertainment. I oh, I'm not brother with the other Hashimoto is what you think he said? I'm not brothers with Yoshi-san is what he said. Oh, okay. Would I would also like to announce that we are preparing for development okay. of a Final Fantasy title. Oh. Please, please be excited for E3 this year. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. See you soon. Bye. And then E3 2013 is when it's revealed that Final Fantasy versus 13 is actually Final Fantasy 15. Same year, right? They just weren't ready to say it yet. 
It's so crazy that he walked out on the stage to just say that. Look forward to E3. It's to show support. They're bringing out the big boys now. What, this was Capcom, Square Enix. They got Ubisoft. Yeah, they're concerned with us showing off their big boys next. Thank you, Hashimoto-san. The Luminous Studio demo running on PS4 further demonstrates the system's graphics and computational power. I would now like to welcome Hero Harry. Thanks for uh, partner, continuing that gift, sir. So. Over the years, Ubisoft has become an extension of the PlayStation family, and their support for our platforms has produced hit after hit. The Ubisoft team is truly pioneering a lot of next generation okay, game. Andrew. Welcome. Okay, Andrew. Controls, our cities, our information, and our okay, buddy. All of the real development. So, teams. Watch Dogs was shown E3 2012. Watch Dogs was shown off, and they were like, we can't even tell you what this is for. Implication being, this game is going to come out on next generation consoles. Cerny's already, Cerny was first guy out. Well, second guy out. But uh, Cerny, already, Cerny was early. Cerny, Cerny had a good thing. He had, he had a tight 10. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. It wasn't a tight 10. It was a tight 10, and then Knack, and then he came out and talked more, and then this is actually like a super boring three minutes. No, it's a super boring nine minutes. Oh, my God. So we had a tight 10, then Knack, and then a very loose nine. <laughs> I've been hard at work with the PlayStation 4 to make gaming experiences that are more <laughs> connected, sloppy more nine. immersive, and more interactive. We are creating so games yeah, here they can finally say, yeah, Watch Dogs is for PS4. Anytime across many different devices. Games that will bring friends and gaming communities closer together and let you friends. collaborate to achieve amazing things. Friends. Games that are tailored to match your interests oh my God. and can quickly Stop and we are this. an AI to platform. Steve, tell oh you my more. gosh. Finally back on stage to talk about Watch Dogs. Computers <laughs> are on this belt. Okay, I gotta I gotta let this guy talk. Watch Dogs. I love his vibe. Thank you very much, Eve. Hello everyone. Finally back on stage to talk about Watch Dogs. <laughs> <laughs> Hyperconnectivity have changed us. This guy has been in meetings. We started with computers, mobile devices. This guy has owned and meetings. Then we all got one of these. <laughs> Everything about me. He's 80s, man. He holds his cell phone like somebody from the 80s would. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, is this is this your first time touching the device? And the ones I love are on this phone. <laughs> now, what's the next step? This is cool. Smart cities. A system that manages entire cities to solve complex problems. Traffic He's drawing jams, me in with the way he speaks. War against crime. Power management. Yeah. In Watch Dogs, you're going to control all of it. You're going to control all of it. You've shown this at last year. <laughs> each week. Everything is connected. But today, I want you all to discover that everyone is connected. Don't doubt it. This I is one of the best speeches of the whole show. What it's like to control Aiden Pierce and wander around in Chicago. Don't doubt it. To invade everyone's privacy without them knowing. You're all about to discover that once you can tap into anyone's lives, anything can happen dynamically in front of you. So you're now going to enjoy a full-blown new live demo that will show you that exploring... All right, chat, tell me if this is real or not. ...has never been so engaging. So thanks to Nick to perform... <laughs> was it Infamous just telling us enjoy. this was bad? Yeah, 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 but we control it. We control it, though. It's us controlling the cameras, chat. The heart of America feels like somewhere it must have skipped a beat. 
people haven't changed. But now, everybody's broadcasting. And once you've seen it, all of it, how do you look away? This looks so real to me. Uber fake? Downgraded, wow. Is it the, uh, basically the depth looks, looks really nice. It's nice they picked Chicago, right? Just like how deep you can look and all the details that lead that whole way while still having like this, uh, nice smoke and atmosphere the entire way through. Infamously downgraded from the initial presentation. But from this one even is what you're saying. Even on PC, it doesn't look like this. Okay. The character models already look pretty bad. Yoink. Pro-life lobbyist. Yoinked. Um. <laughs> Nobody said um. <laughs> Ubisoft games have no art style. What a rude thing to say, chat. But, like... I get it. Potential victim increasing? What's happening here? Is this a mechanic in the actual game? A meter that fills up over how much of a potential victim they are? Yeah, that's an actual game mechanic. Oh my god. A chat, I've never played Watch Dogs. That's so weird. <laughs> and the game was fire. Yeah, I don't feel like... <laughs> this makes any sense. Crime probability 60%. <laughs> Uh-oh. It's it's going up. There could be a crime soon. Is that the word the first fuck of this whole show? Oh, we're going into the pharmacy. High detail, dude. Hell yeah. The screen tearing is real, chat. Screen tearing makes me think this is real. It's real on PC, yeah. On a crazy Ubisoft only. Oh my gosh, look at all that screen tearing actually. Criminal neutralized. Yeah, I wonder what the infamous guys thought of this. That was fun because that moment was in the reveal trailer, so it was cool to see all like, oh, you can actually do that? The bullets missing you was satisfying. Nice looking Chicago. That would kill people. <laughs> Just stopping a, a train that fast?
What's my resting crime probability? Oh my god. Probably 12%. If you scanned me on the streets, I think I'd be like 12% crime probability. Thanks, Jonathan and Eve. Watch Dogs on PlayStation 4 will be an amazing experience, and we have much more to share with you later this year. There's another the partner I'd like it, to invite no on doubt. stage tonight to help illustrate the tremendous support we have for PlayStation 4. This iconic developer is known for making some of the most immersive and creative games anywhere. And this is not only the first time they've been on stage for PlayStation, but the first time they've been on stage for any console. It's my pleasure to introduce Senior Vice President of Story and Franchise Development from Blizzard Entertainment, Chris Metzen. Oh my god. I was so hyped. I was like, it's definitely Gabe Newell coming up. Though I guess Gabe Newell was around for like PS3, 360 good presentations. Good evening. How y'all doing? Good, good, good. Many <laughs> of you are probably wondering... <laughs> <laughs> all right. <laughs> the big Sony. Three. Oh, if it were Blizzard. Teeth. They can sold game. All oh my uh, gosh. They really wanted Blizzard, Blizzard to talk uh, here. Bounce. Oh my gosh. And then CG Diablo 3. Yeah. Actually, well, it looks uh, system, you know, uh, Diablo about this game. You know, oh the, my best God. Best no best way. Uh, come to the game. We're east. Oh, this they're so proud. Common, uh, have a great day. They're now, so proud to have that partnership. There's one more partner I'd like to invite on stage How are you, Kyle? Good, good, this good. Thanks, chat. This is known for Thanks, making chat. not just some of the biggest <laughs> video games on the planet, but some of the biggest entertainment franchises in any medium. Oh, the Destiny planet. they're ending on. You're they so right. They have to the end on Destiny. They are one of the forces behind turning video games into mainstream popular culture. It's my pleasure to welcome to the stage the CEO of Activision Publishing, Eric Hirschberg. Right, and Thanks, Activision Andy. publishes Destiny. Thank you for the kind words, but of course, uh, we couldn't do what we do without companies like Sony building incredible platforms oh like the PS4 that have brought interactive Eric entertainment. Eric Hirschberg used to talk a lot too. I feel like of people haven't seen this guy in a while. Activision has supported no idea where he is right now. Sony's platforms and has created some of the most iconic hits on each and every one of them. And our commitment to the PS4 will be no different. We plan on supporting the PS4. You're right. Con I'm missing chat. You're so right. I'm missing important context. The idea of having Blizzard on PlayStation was a big deal. The idea of having Bungie on PlayStation was an enormous deal. You're so right. I think the context is important. With multiple blockbuster titles from our best developers during the launch window. And we're looking forward to sharing more with you in the coming months. But what I can tell you, though, today is that our developers and our technology teams are uniformly really excited about how Sony is approaching the PS4. We're excited to be a part of bringing the next generation of great games to the next great gaming platform from Sony. Now, there is one developer in particular who we're working with who we think has been absent from the PlayStation Nation for too long now. Bro. And we thought, what better way for us to show our support for the unveiling of the PS4. It's Her Eric Hirschberg who says PlayStation Nation the entire first the time this entire show. In the world that you haven't been able to play on a PlayStation for over a decade. And Let's of talk course, about I'm talking about the one and only Bungie. Last week in Seattle, we gave the world its first glimpse into our ambitious 10-year project together called Destiny. And Jason Jones, the visionary... I'm sorry, I didn't remember that. Destiny has already been revealed ahead of this. His Twitter implies he's now doing standard rich person investment things. Nice. Ride it out, baby. The 10-year project. Yeah, I feel like... Chat, I feel like every time you mention the 10 years, it's like they never said that. You know what I mean? Here they are. Like Destiny is a week old, and they're already calling it a 10-year project. They said 10-year partnership? The words are right before you. Last week in Seattle, 
We, we got it on camera into our in 720p. Together, Sorry, I talked over him again. Well, it's first glimpse into our ambitious 10 year project together called Destiny. And Jason Jones, the visionary developer, I'm brother to your sister, Bungie, <laughs> and project director of Destiny, wanted to say a few words about why he's excited to bring Destiny to the PS4 and also to unveil a few more glimpses of in engine footage here tonight for the first time. Take a look. Hey everybody, it's great to be here. I want to tell you a little bit about what Bungie's been doing for the last few years. They don't have the presentational After style we down. We ask so one thing I'm noticing big time is like, there's no like universal Sony brand like titles, you know what I mean? Like his his name should be on the screen right now. the question, what next? What's worth doing? When you have a studio with this much talent, what do you point it at? How Bro. can we take a genre that we know and love so well- that That's a big studio. And turn it on its head again. And our answer is destiny. Oh my God. Bungie's next great FPS. In Destiny, <laughs> we've created a fantastic new universe for players to explore, full of mystery and adventure. We've so funny, I hated this presentation. Where players grow and customize their characters. And we focused from the beginning, not just on the great competitive experience that players demand from a shooter, but to make sure that playing Destiny cooperatively with your friends was gonna blow your mind. Destiny Almost. Gonna be amazing on they gave you two seconds of gameplay. Gear. And we can't wait to see what PlayStation fans do when they set foot in our world for the first time. I hated this so much. I was like, what is this game? What is this? It's crazy how much of Destiny is actually this. I feel like I fought that boss who is chained up. That's wild. So hold on, we had some Eric Hirschberg lore. That's, this guy. Thank you. His Twitter bio lists singer songwriter several items before previous Activision CEO. I kind of want to find his albums now. I would love to hear this man sing a song that he wrote. Pretty wild to watch this now with the hindsight of Schreier's reporting that it was super on fire at this point still. Yeah. Right? They're basically showing all they can show. It's not like they're holding back. They are. are you, that's so weird seeing that Bungie office. It used to be a movie theater and arcade in the late 90s. First time I ever saw Marvel vs. Capcom 2. Whoa. Are they still there? That's the office they got? Hear my debut album, Spare Room, here. <gasps> All right, chat, this man. Just eight seconds, just eight seconds. Oh no, I can't play on any of these services. I don't have Spotify or Apple Music or iTunes Store. Play. Okay, bummer. You can't just play it. If you find it on like YouTube, I would love to hear it. Look, I mean, we have. <laughs> um, his album art. Chat, this former CEO is, oh my God. That's too crazy to me. He says, I got a voice. All right, chat's got something. All right. So we only get eight seconds, right? I got to choose between can't find the ocean, drive, I just want to be here, and bend featuring Liz Fair, Eric. Times they aren't changing fast enough. <laughs> K 
keep Mar-a-Lago, but I want America back. Keep Mar-a-Lago, but I want America back. What you get. Wish I was here. Let me go over and over. Two lost souls. Misunderstood. <sighs> yeah, we got to hear Keep Mar-a-Lago, but I want America back. We have to. How do you pick any other song? So he's like making protest music. How am I, how am I going to make fun of him? I think we're all just scared it's going to be very bad. I think that's I think that's the fear here. I'm not quite ready to listen to this. Here we go. Eight seconds, chat. Okay, all right. All right. <laughs> That's it. You know what, though? <laughs> I'm not going to... He's singing, dude. He's actually singing. That's the thing. I was... Chat, earlier this stream, I was talking about if I was a billionaire, I would drink nonstop ICs. I would take the first six sips, and then I would pass it on and get a new icy. That was me earlier this stream. This man says, I'm making all the... Mu I'm making a music... I'm a music musician now. I'm going to try, I'm going to write songs, I'm going to perform songs, and I'm going to sing them, and they're going to have a message. I can't make fun of him. It was three sips. You're right. It was three sips. To be honest, it was three sips. I'm taking three sips and then passing it on. Thank you for keeping me honest, chat. So I, ref I refuse to mock him for this. This is a billionaire just out here, like, I mean, why not? Why not become a little rock star on YouTube? <laughs> this is an atonement for his Activision years. <laughs> Was that only four seconds? All right, chat, a little more. A little more, a little more. A little more. It's hard to believe. Like, I don't hate, I don't hate that. I don't hate that. I don't hate that. I don't hate that. From the YouTube description, my goal was just to create a sonic release valve for my unspeakable levels of frustration at the current state of things in America. Yeah. A sonic release valve. Because he's... Chat. He's not even bad. That's the thing. That's the thing. We we're all expecting bad, right? He's not bad. <laughs> Post sonic release euphoria. Okay. All right. All right. All right. All right. Let's wrap this up. <laughs> let's wrap it up chat we're getting loopy <laughs> that makes two jason jones sightings inside of a week so you'll hear from here from him again in 2025 um good shit uh destiny is an ambitious project uh it's what we're calling the first shared world shooter it's something we're put a lot of we're putting a lot of creativity shared world behind. shooter. I'm very excited to bring it to the PlayStation 4 and to tell you a little bit more about it. Uh, it's now my pleasure to introduce some of the key leaders at Bungie. What? Andreas Jenkins, more of John this? T. Barnes, Marty O'Donnell, and Bungie's president Harold Ryan.
Hello, PlayStation. How many people are still here from from on the team? Like, I think Marty is gone, gone, right? It's the shot. Oh my God, this is the shot. You're right. This is iconic. Marty is hard gone, yeah. None of them are still there? Harold started a new studio. This is an album cover. <laughs> PlayStation Nation. When Bungie became in <laughs> So in that moment, it is like, what do I do with my hands? He flies them back. Those hands fly back. Hello, PlayStation Nation. Zip. <laughs> when Bungie became independent, we were really excited about bringing our games to a bigger audience. There they go. Hands Our up partnership front. with Activision and now Sony just like your brothers. To be just that. Destiny is an ambitious and innovative game. It's a perfect fit for the PlayStation 4. Like the PlayStation 4, Destiny is an online connected experience. Like the PlayStation 4, Destiny lets you access the content you love from multiple devices. And like the PlayStation 4, Destiny is designed to entertain you for years to come. We're proud to announce today that at the launch of Destiny, both the PS4 and the PS3 versions will be available. And even better, we'll be creating exclusive playable content just for the PlayStation community. Oh, that's why they're last. That was it right there. That was the whole point of this whole damn thing. Exclusive playable content just for the PlayStation community. I hated this oh boy was i so upset about that you're like what's the content you can't just say exclusive playable content what does that even mean and now sony ends them before the end of the 10-year plan yeah that is crazy it was one strike that's funny It turned out to be one strike in the end, huh? All right. And two weapons, excuse me. I guess weapons are playable content as well. Starfield on stage, right? Yeah. That's a, it's very Starfieldy actually, especially with these nice curvy lines. <laughs> That's so crazy. I could not understand why they brought these four guys out after Eric Hirschberg, after this boring little thing. Why did why is this the last thing they show? You're not even showing off how powerful your console is. You're not showing the games. You had really cool game demos. All of it was just for these three words. That's so crazy. We look forward to sharing more details with you in the coming months. And from all of us at Bungie, thank you very much. The other guys didn't even talk. They were just show, there to show team support of this announcement. Thanks, guys. Needless to say, we're ecstatic to bring death. So chat's telling me having a one strike exclusive is actually a big deal. That game otherwise had three other strikes. So it's basically 25% of the strikes were exclusive. Destiny and exclusive content to the PlayStation 4. And we know the Bungie fans will love it. Yeah. To all of you, you who knew have joined you us today, it. whether in the room or via live stream, thank you so much for being here. The arrival of PlayStation 4 presents an enormous opportunity to dramatically evolve the gameplay experience. From <laughs> intensified power to enhanced social capabilities to bigger, better, and more immersive gameplay and a simple adaptive interface, we believe PlayStation 4 proves that we have more to offer than ever before. We look forward to continuing the conversation and demonstrating why PlayStation is the best place to play. Thank you very much for your time and good night. Ooh, and all they said is holiday 2013. And I remember this. They caught a lot of flack for this. They never showed what it looked like. They never showed what the console looked like. Coming later this year, imagine it. 
But I think, you know, E3 is when they announce what it looks like and the price, and it's less than Xbox One. Oh my god. Killers. What we're trying to create are things that people they showed up as killers at E3. This presentation sucked, I think. But this set the stage for an E3 where they just slaughtered. I remember MS tweeting something like a console reveal without the console is an interesting choice or something like that. You're so right. They did. With a, like a, some sort of emoji or something, right? Oh, Agni's philosophy was old. That's interesting. So here they're just like, it's running on our hardware, but that actual trailer was old. That's interesting. I would like to make a small addition to the team. Oh my God. Microsoft totally fucked up the Xbox announcement and Sony ate their lunch. Yeah. Yeah, this whole thing, man, not We're that impressive. Like, how, we, stuck, we got to a part that was super impressive. I cannot believe that was two hours long. They wanted it to be two hours long is the thing. I feel like they started with two hours and then filled it in. They said, we're going we're gonna to rent out a theater in New York City. We're going to invite the media. We're going to live stream this bad boy. And we're going to make a statement. And it is kind of interesting that, like, but, I mean, by the end of the PS3 generation, they were, like, winning. You know what I mean? They, they had already, like, recovered from the launch of the PS3. But, um... I feel like PlayStation brand still wasn't that strong. So like coming out here where they're like, "Hey, yeah, we did a we did some bad shit with the PS3." And then just kind of like crush it. And then the only move shit they talk about is uh Media Molecule. PlayStation Move was big for like the last two or three PlayStation 3 E3s. They're like, "We got to show you move shit. We got to show you like what's going on with the move. We we got to we got to be we like and it's really funny, like, this was like, hey, sorry for ignoring you, PlayStation Move. You're actually pretty cool, is the way that this guy presented it. That was really interesting. The controller reveal was nice. You're right. We didn't see the console, but we saw the controller reveal. And it looked nice. It did look like something you want to pick up. Did I check out this year's Impy nominations on Dreams? No, normally I wait until there's winners. When are the Impies? When is that happening? I actually love that. I love doing that. That's always a fun stream. Yeah, here's a little sloppy slop. I used to work across the Bay Area PlayStation office, and they had move controller statues outside the doors. That's so funny. <laughs> Dreams is still very active. Every time we check in, there's crazy good shit. Yeah, chat, let me know when the impies are. We'll do We'll do an impy stream. Nintendo and Microsoft officially sign agreement for 10 years of COD on Switch. Did that just break? Two o two a.m. Oh my gosh, Chad! I didn't realize it's two forty a.m. I didn't realize. I didn't realize. Holy shit! It was way longer than two hours. Oh my god! I'm so sorry to the mods. I'm so sorry. I did not realize. No, I lost track of time. We didn't even take a midnight break. I should have had to pee by now. <laughs> this is just weird, dude. Brad Smith, I don't get it. Is this real, chat? His username is Brad Smee. I, I know he's got a blue check, but anybody can get a blue check. I did get get caught up in the 2013 vibes. That was actually super fun to watch. Mr. Smee. All right. 
bringing more choice to more players and more competition to the gaming market. Do you think they chose that last phrase intentionally? Oh my god. Oh my god. That's funny. The chat, what is, what's crazy is that this has nothing to do with Nintendo and everything to do with uh, the antitrust business that Microsoft is currently in. Nintendo's just like some schlub who got pulled into this relationship and is like, well, I don't care. She still touches me. <laughs> I don't know. You know what I mean? It's like, well, I have someone to eat with now. <laughs> it's like, okay. All right. I don't care if she doesn't love me. <laughs> I, don't, I don't mind. I like her. Okay, chat. So that, that will do it. That will do it for tonight. Uh, there will be a new delayed input this week. Friday's stream will be Clive and Wrench. It's a 3D platformer that looks semi-promising in a couple of ways. It might be a disaster. It might actually be super good. It's hard to tell from the trailer, but it does look interesting in all regards. So I'm looking forward to that. Uh, Saturday's stream is a big one. It'll be our brainstorm tournament for the concept album meaning we'll look at all the concepts that chat has randomly draw eight concepts or ten we'll see and then have those compete against each other to determine which idea we like the most for the concept album we will create together and then that won't take the entire stream what's left of it will be the start of my playthrough for a link to the past randomizer which i've never done cool chat thank you so much for hanging out i appreciate it this was a, this was fun this was really fun too that, that was that was a really a blast to uh go back through that whole thing that was just wild <sighs> and uh i pre chat i appreciate it so much just being able to hang out like that that was very fun apologies to the mods who may have stayed up way way later than is responsible uh that's on me I let the stream slip. I let it slip. Okay. Uh, thanks, everybody, for watching. Hope to see you around, and I appreciate you. It's a robot party. It's a robot party. It's a robot party. It's a robot party. Tie your shoe. It's a robot party. Pet the dog. It's a robot